Ecclesia, Prologue, Master Zero, the Twelve Apostles have finally gathered, please, give us your orders. Twelve black shadows stood in front of a huge black throne on which Zero sat completely immersed in his own train of thoughts. As for the mysterious and shady-looking subordinates standing in front of him, it didn't make him much happy, or maybe his face was built in such a way, that being scary and unsatisfied was the only approach he could think for his own life. It has been more than two hundred years and the resentment he holds against the humans and especially for gods hasn't settled down a bit, but like an eternal black flame kept on growing. He did not seek revenge for his people who were wronged and betrayed during the war. He was not seeking a fight just to sate his anger that he lost his loved ones and clan members during the massacre. What he truly seeks is, change. The revolution WH Chick the Great War's end was supposed to bring never dawned on this world. The things that were promised to the devils were never fulfilled but they were trapped and forced to submission in this hell. Wars whether small or big, conflicts, murder, slavery, oppression, discrimination, betrayal, despair losses, pain, loneliness these feelings had corrupted hell, the realm of dead, the devils were subjected to infinite pain and culmination of these emotions in their miniature realm had only brought chaos, the very nature and meaning of it had been altered, master zero, is something bothering you, did the talk with the reincarnates of other world did not go as you desired, five, do you doubt my plans, six, master, I wouldn't dare to, you are the only supreme and the lord I serve. Those reincarnates turned out much worse than I thought. The Prince of Perilous Empire gave a correct report about the power level of these reincarnates, so I think he can be trusted a bit more. But at the same time they pose no threat, and are just a bunch of dream heroes. They are not even smart enough to realize their true enemy. The traitors hidden among them and to differentiate between right and wrong. They haven't been subjected to the fear and press of death, the brutality of this world and the reality of the gods. Times when you doubt about your own actions and morality, when your previous ideals are shattered. Zero, stopped as he attached his own painful nerve in a way. Then you just need to ask us master and we will get rid of anyone, who comes in our way. I want one of you to go on a reconnaissance mission for me, as Zero brought his hands covered by his dark robe till the very tip of his finger and down to his knees, to get hold of his magical scepter. One of the shadows flickered and then a much darker, yet a vivid colorful image of that person appeared. I want to volunteer for this mission. It has been so long since I went to the outside world. I can't hold it any longer. Master please let me satisfy myself. Allow me to spoil myself just a little. It was the tenth apostle. Vertigo, a gorgeous young woman with glowing purple eyes, pale skin, long flowing black hair, purple lips and a curvaceous hourglass figure stood bowing her head. She wore a violet armor covering her entire body, only leaving the shoulders exposed. She had a dignified and arrogant look in her eyes. Her only wish is to serve Master Zero and be the part of the new world ruled by him and him alone. 7. A cunning and sadistic individual who lived to kill and savored every opportunity she got to slaughter her prey. This had earned her the title, known throughout her realm as the Dark Countess Vertigo. I want you to visit the Great Tathar Labyrinth and confirm my doubts. Vertigo who was fired up till this very moment, for some reason hesitated. Even in hell, the Great Tathar Labyrinth was feared. The very name poured both bad memories of losing the war and the terror of facing monsters that defied the laws of nature and the power levels of this world. Just the very thought of it can induce panic fits, and the only source of information that exists are the rumors of the long dead people. But before I begin, may I know a bit more details of this mission? Is it related to the disappearance of the 10,000 knights and princess of the perilous empire? I couldn't care less about them. According to the reports they decided to go inside the labyrinth to mine Magitite tours after being pushed back by the beast tribe. Foolish reckless humans, died for no reason. Their greed is the only reason for their demise. I see those pathetic humans and their foolish materialistic indulgences. They are weak creatures after all. The foolish princess just didn't want to live a bit longer and ended up cutting the same branch of tree on which she was standing. But then what it is that is my master so concerned? Since yesterday, 
There was a great surge of divine power as well as dark matter traced down there, and that culmination of power still exists. Even now, this feeling unsettles me. Your mission is to find whatever this thing is, evaluate its danger scale and the way it could affect our plans, and if this thing is hostile, then I want you to destroy it. 8. I understand your liege, but still, we are talking about the great Tathile Labyrinth. This culmination of power could even pertain to a monster there, it would come as no surprise, no, this thing isn't a monster, that's for sure, it could be even a very high ranking god, or maybe something even beyond our expectation, that is why I cannot allow such an existence, as for your safety and for the success of this mission I have already made preparations. You, don't need to worry, I can carry out this mission without any problem, we people have endured long enough. Now the time has come to bear our fangs, which we have been sharpening for so long. Your power sure goes beyond any being in that world, but that labyrinth is a completely different place. Carelessness will be your death. As for these preparation s I am talking about are. Zero put forward his hand and two eccentric shaped objects suddenly appeared out of nowhere. This ring is an S class artifact which helps you to conceal your life form. By this the monsters won't be able to detect you, unless they are that of an intelligent species. This way you can freely move between floors. As for the next item, is TH's sword of size, a legendary class weapon with the ability to cut through anything. The two items flew in the air and started levitating in front of Vertigo. She placed forward her hands and gracefully accepted the sacred weapons, which she considered the symbol of trust the master had placed in her. I will soon set out for the mission. I will wait for the results. Do not disappoint me. Our plan's success is necessary for our survival in this world. 9. In other words he just meant that if need arises then throw away your life for the sake of the mission. The future can only be grabbed by stepping on sacrifices they make. The twelve shadows disappeared like a thick smoke dissipates in air and the torches burning in the background went off in unison. Zero went back to his slumber, but deep in thought he was making preparations to destroy the human kingdom, while thinking of a special gift for the elf kingdom. He chuckled at the very thought and failed to contain his own amusement. I will finally put those long ears, in their right place for eavesdropping and their betrayal during the Great Wars. 10. 11. Chapter 1, My, Decision. I lifted up my index finger and touched the warm drop of water that was dripping from my left eye, tracing down all its way through my cheek, then the side of the mouth, it fell on a white cushion-like object, in which supposedly I have been sleeping. Was I crying? But what for? I don't seem to remember. Where is this place and who am I? I looked to my right and some figures were moving in front of me. The bright lights that were shining all around me distorted my vision as they scattered in a disorderly manner on my retina because of the tears. Seeing them the next thing I felt was a sudden urge to do something. Something that I had been wanting to do and felt so strongly about it. There was nothing too complicated when I think about it. It could be 12, considered easy in my vocabulary. It was something that I had been doing for so long, that it felt utterly tasteless, and yet it was so irresistible. There was a deep desire to kill those who stood in front of me. I focused my eyes along their line of sight, to register their appearances, but my eyes started glowing deep red, they were as if on fire, burning a special mark on my eyes. Something manifested, something dark but was much more clear and understandable than the light. The pain didn't hurt me, the hot flames blazing deep within my eyes did not burn me. I heard a lot of crackling sound, something was breaking and torn apart just like I had been feeling since the moment I woke up. And finally something did shatter by me, but I didn't touch anything. So what was it that broke? And before I knew, all of them fell on the ground and turned into black threads which disappeared soon after. The ashes of the dead were nowhere to be found. The flames of anger were just too strong that even their ashes faded away along with their existences their soul never to return to the land of living again. I heard a deep metal clanking and some distance apart stood another man in a bold armor, brandishing a long thin sharp metal rod. The tip of the sword aimed at me. I quietly started walking towards him. Step dot step. I tried to walk as slowly and softly as I could and yet my footsteps echoed loudly in this strange familiar place. To ask him, 
Why does he want to kill me? 13. I had not hurt him. This was our first time meeting. Then why it is that he is so inclined to take my life? I harbor no ill feelings against him, but I could sense fear and hostility from him. He was afraid dot of me. Could that be the very reason for his action? Is that enough to make one kill another dot I must ask him? My blank eyes peered directly into his shallow blue eyes. The pool of fear, the dribbling water-like structure, resonated with my memories. For less than a second that I stood in front of him. I remembered all that had happened from the moment I was reborn in this world. His dead, fear-stricken pale eyes said it all. The one he wronged had the same stench. I could smell malevolence and the sin this person has committed. The insufferable things I saw. The unspeakable things they did to that little girl. Just go away from my sight. Be gone. Disappear. My left hand clad in a blue newfound highly active energy. It went past right through his neck severing all the thoughts that connected his body and mind, and in a similar manner his existence fell apart and vanished along with the black strings of death, that's what I could call it then, I touched my face, looked at my hands and the blood that was spread all over, I tried to wipe it, but the more I tried, the more it spread across the places I touched, I got so frustrated that I conjured some water and translated that red sanguine fluid into it. After all I could control any element freely, as I wished. I turned the water, into a concave mirror-like shape, and looked at my face. I was taken a bit back. I looked at my two hands, the two feet I was walking on, my slender body and the white long frock I was wearing. The person in the reflection is at me, 14. And before I realized it, I was already a human. Honestly, it felt so peaceful. 15. Status window. Name. Dash. Age. 6 months. Race. Human. Level. 10. HP. ERA. MP. ERA. SP. ERA. Unique skill. All seeing eyes of the gods first form. I have investigation second form. Kinetic eye third form. I have Adrana fourth form. I have soul. Skills. Glutton ELV8 Mystical Poison Magic, Sage of Advanced Fire Magic, Sage of Advanced Water Magic, Sage of Advanced Wood Magic, Sage of Advanced Wind Magic, Divine Mystic Thread Magic, Advanced Sun Magic, Sage of Advanced Space Time Magic, Sage of Advanced Ice Magic, Sage of Divine Light, Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless, 16, Floor, 10, I was inside the Great Tathar Labyrinth, on Floor 10, all around me there were webs, glowing strings expanding all across the room somehow relaying me all the information, even the slightest movement of air and to the very detailed structures of rocks, it was all so crystal clear and understandable, my consciousness was spread all across, I felt as if I had become one with my surroundings, the amount of information that these things relayed to me, their past, the present and the possibilities of the future, but now, that it has come to this, what will be my future, what is that I need to do now, the promise, I think I made with someone in my sleep, just what kind of dreams am I having, should I consult a psychiatrist, but will they accept a murderer at their clinic, I had two choices to blast a way through the entrance and move to the surface, from where those vile beings came, but I felt the lack of strength I had and my inability of making the right call, that is me still being naive, the thought that I couldn't even make up my mind to save someone was sickening. I knew I could have done much more, if only I had been more careful, if only I could have seen the full picture, the carelessness on my part, made someone else pay the heavy price, so there was only one option left for me to take, to climb all the way down and get strong on my own, to put my life at risk all for the sake of learning, what exactly I wanted to do right now, and the answer lied here, somewhere in these shunned walls, the hellish monsters and in its unexplored depths, an answer that will serve as a reminder of who I really am. 17. I am sure of it. I plan to travel down. From the next day, today I just wanted to relax and review my stats, skills and the things I had acquired. 
I never thought I could turn into a human by myself and the status window was speaking of some kind of evolution, most probably it's the effect of legacy of goddess Arachne, nothing else explains it and no other idea so much as struck with me. Fortunately my face is the same as my previous life, so Lady Athena will have now no problem recognizing me. I know I am delaying my meat, but this is for the best, I just know it. She will surely understand. The only thing that had changed was my hairs that had turned from dark black to ashen white. And these red eyes also seem special but evil at the same time. The most frightening part is that it suddenly starts glowing on its own. Even this body and the age it depicts is the same as before I reincarnated. My height hasn't grown. That's a boomer. Though it feels much more comfortable now, but thinking of a six-month-old kid look like a fifteen-year-old girl is a bit odd and vexes me. At least the frock looks good on me. I wonder when I made it with my webs. Could it be that unconsciously I am a born talented costume designer, who can make these beautiful dresses even in my sleep? It more or less resembles like a wedding dress, but why would I go there? Never mind. But the thing I was most excited about is, I took out a frying pan from my dimensional storage. I am glad that I put everything inside my dimensional storage before I destroyed everything on this floor. Those humans sure had a lot of equipment, food and other, 18, necessary things with them. I just couldn't properly remember just how many of them there really were. Then I had some vegetables, while some of them looked unfamiliar to me. New world, new dishes, non-perishable items like nuts, wheat spices, salt, sugar and many other things I had been wanting to eat. It was so stupid of me to get excited over such trivial things, but eating monsters for more than six months has made my stomach sick. It was time to cook for the first time, in this new world with my magic. If only I could record it, then I would have earned a fortune with the video uploaded on net back in my world. Cooking lessons on my magic pan sounds about right. The pleasant aroma of grilled meat and soy sauce wafted through the air. I was trying to cook hamburger steak but even though I did not have all the ingredients, just the thought of it made my mouth glisten with water. Then I also cooked up some white rice, though their color is a bit pale and smaller than my original world, it will do. So, yummy, one more, one again and this one too. That too, yours won't cut. Add another. And by that time I think I had eaten a full appetite for three alone. All the levels on my magic attributes have vanished. What does that mean? If only there was someone who could teach me the finer details of magic and its application. I think I can increase my offensive power. Well, maybe I will figure it out myself by going down to the very bottom. Teleport. I was now on floor 50, where I was born and chased around. Just forget the last part. 19. This was where I spent my first day after birth. The day I lost my humanity. The day I found this new power. The day I resolved myself to climb up the floors. But today, again I was here this time to climb down the abyss, go deeper and deeper. There was no looking back now. In a way I was reborn again, with a new perspective of this world. I did not want anyone I shared a bond with to die and for that wish to come true I had decided to kill those who harmed them, myself, I was being just too selfish and arrogant. These are thoughts came so natural to me that I was myself frightened. Is it because I have been devouring the souls of the dead? Is it because I have become a monster, or I always was? I don't know. There. That's the entrance to my next destination, as I slowly walked through the gate, into a new dimension pocket. Well floor 51 here I come. 20. Floor 51. How did it come to this? Come on Saki. You are not afraid of the dark. I mumbled to myself as I jumped in the very last second and dodged the tail attack of the Demogorgon. It's a huge snake, with a giant head and a very long, an exceptionally long and thick body. In the very last moment I casted another wind cutter in an attempt to chop down its neck but it was useless. I missed again. By a slight margin. Fine, I know my aim is terrible. The moment I entered this floor, it was complete dark. One would think of using light or fire magic, 
but this dimensional pocket has a special build to it. I think the entire environment is made of some special kind of ideal black body material that can absorb all light in an instant. So all I could depend on was my advanced magic sense and spider danger sense. Times like this is when you are 100% sure of yourself that you will be ambushed and still fail to anticipate the attack. Gwahak. Something came at a full swing and hit everything below my abdomen, making me directly headbutt the wall. My head hurts. More importantly one of my hands got twisted. Well, I do feel pain. Actually it's more excruciating in my human form. The spider form, I think might be a bit immune to sensation of pain like these. But it really hurts a lot, but I don't have time to concern myself with it. My ultra self regeneration kicked in, and within the blink of an eye I was back to normal. Thanks to that surprise attack, I can trace back the location of monster and also determine the length of this floor after being pushed back to the walls. 21. The only source of light was, the blue plasma glowing on my hands and bare feet. But that too was only for combat and did not help much for lighting purpose. My enemy Demogorgon, seems to have a special ability that allows it to know about anything happening in this floor. It can pinpoint my location, without any problem so it seems. But if he thinks that this turf belongs only to him, then I had my own ways. I was now using sound magic and sending small signals everywhere around, trying to receive information along my webs. One would also, Ask me to use my thermosensory kinetic ability, but that was a no-go, since it didn't pick up any heat signature. Maybe this species doesn't produce heat on its own but have the same body temperature as the surrounding. It's impressive that it can camouflage up to this extent. Monsters of this labyrinth are no joke. I cannot let my guard down even for once if I want to see it through the end. But that makes it even the more challenging and satisfying at the same time. Killing things was something I had started enjoying. To face death and overcome it at face value. Nothing could have been more pleasurable. For me it was all but a game of life and death. The objective is to survive. Another, flexible tail attack of this reptile came in full swing. I think it has enough force to even break a 30 meter thick concrete wall without a hitch. Wind cutter is useless and light and flame magic gets absorbed by the surrounding. Gravity magic is tough to use in an environment where I cannot pinpoint the exact geometry and structure of the monster, but I am going to wrap things up now. I tried to stretch the hundreds of strings I had set up around the room, as I pulled them along my fingers while jumping and dodging the tail and earth projectiles, it launched after successive fixed intervals. 22. A huge mess of nets lifted up from both below and sideways, and inside this net, lies our today's catch, a huge reptile snake monster. I again used my plasma coated hands to finally chop it into pieces, which thus marked it end times like these. I think it's time for me to choose a weapon for myself, than staining my hands in cold blood. But I have no experience in wielding one. It was now time for me to head down to floor 52. I am making a killing. It took me just 50 minutes to make out of this floor. I hope the next floors are quick to finish. 23. Monster Diary. Demogorgon. Catastrophe class monster. Name. Demogorgon. Age. 180 years. Race. Reptile healer monster. Level. 5000. HP. 60,000. MP. 40,000. SP. 60,000 skills body armor LV10 body reinforcement LV10 earth magic LV8 blood detection telekinesis ultra self regeneration diamond skin 24 floor 52 I did not imagine that I would see such a large floor but all there was to look was an empty ground with fire grasses growing all around I mean literally there were grasses with fire lit up on them while most of them had an orange color Blue flame grasses also grew among them, adding a special colorful touch to the full landscape. I might make a lot of money by selling them as magic ever burning candles. Also I think it burns endlessly. I might as well pick all of them and put them in my dimensional storage. Wee hee hee. A giant horse came galloping. Lowering its head it headed straight in my direction. Its black body clad in a fiery fist of undying flames. Without any hint of hesitation it wanted to knock me down, but this kind of attitude was not new to me. 
monsters here have a tendency to underestimate me. Now it would not be prudent to hold the monster, since it flames would burn me. Not that it would matter because of my regeneration ability but it would still hurt a lot. So, it's a no-go. I used flight magic and easily dodged its charge. But this made the horse even angrier. Out of nowhere a pair of long red wings appeared on its back, which began to glow. The heat flares surrounding its body surged, raising the temperature of the room with leaps and bound. Many a tornado of flames started following me. Even the grasses, which up till now appeared peaceful with their meditated flames, became fiery in nature. Are those wings some kind of a weapon? I think I should check it just in case. My suspicions were correct. Those are special magical wings dash crimson wings of phoenix, and they are beautiful at that. I would like to kill the monster without destroying them. 25. I was using water magic to keep the flames at bay and using cryokinesis to keep my body cool, though the horse looks intimidating with its huge size and all, but I don't think it's much of a fight because I have just the spell for this purpose. Absolute zero. The ice statue of a giant flame horse monster stood in front of me. It was quite a magnificent piece of work, but unfortunately, that is when the character is obliged to say that it was a bad match, me and you. I used my index finger to poke at the base of the statue and it came crackling down to pieces all engulfed in my black threads. But then, who would have thought that I would be going to rest again so soon? You have leveled up. You have reached level 11, as usual. Those white glossy threads appeared and started engulfing me. I did not bother to resist, because I myself felt sleepy. The comfort of the soft touch of these silky webs was just irresistible. After ten days, there was not much to speak of any upgrades, except for that I felt more energetic and strong. My reflexes and movements always kept on increasing. That was a good point. Evasion tactic, excellent vitality and 26 supreme combat ability are a must. If I want to properly analyze the strength of the monsters I am fighting, this is the only way to defeat the strong, after all. Next I travel down to floor 53 and 54. While these floors did have strong monsters in large amount, but they did not have a unique trait ability to speak of. Just some sandbags for me. No one stood a chance against the spells that I had created by myself after all. While I punched through all the Draniel Orlogs on floor 53, I did face a bit of difficulty against the flying one-eyed balloon con monsters. They were sneaky in their tactics and excelled in ambush, evasion techniques and dark magic. A lot of people you hate to see the most, because they are just too easy to keep going along with their flow. 27. Monster Diary. Equo Sagittarius. Catastrophe Class Monster. Name. Knuckle AV. Age. Dash. Race. Equo Sagittarius Star Monster. Level. 4500 HP 65000 MP 50000 SP 50000 Skills Advanced Fire Magic Ultra Self Regeneration Fire Skin Shadow Movement Quick Dash Spearhead Crimson Wings of Phoenix Class S Class Weapon Ability Allows the user to control fire in their vicinity Uses magic from the surrounding rather than using the MP of the user Description these wings were bestowed to the fairies to protect their holy forest from wildfire by the god of fire, Vulcan himself. This relic was supposedly lost during the Great Wars. 28. Status Window Name, Dash, Age, 6 Months, Race, Human, Level, 11, HP, ERR, MP, ERR, SP, ERR, Unique Skill, All-Seeing Eyes of the Gods First Form. Eye of Investigation 2nd Form, Kinetic Eye 3rd Form, Eye of Adrana 4th Form, Eye of Soul, Skills, Glutton ELV8 Mystical Poison Magic, Sage of Advanced Fire Magic, Sage of Advanced Water Magic, Sage of Advanced Wood Magic, Sage of Advanced Wind Magic, Divine Mystic Thread Magic, Advanced Sun Magic, Sage of Advanced Space Time Magic, Sage of Advanced Ice Magic, Sage of Divine Light. Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, 
Immortality, Merciless, 29, Floor, 55. I thought it would be just another monster encounter, but as I entered this new plane dimension, I felt a very strong evil presence. My heart started pounding more than it should have and my skin tightened up. I was scared by just this presence, because unlike other monsters I had faced, it had a consciousness of its own. This presence belonged to this certain someone, who was standing right in front of me giving a peculiar expression of astonishment seeing me. She too had a human-like appearance, but the horns on her head did not add up, though nonetheless those black horns looked good on her. Do I still have the blood stains of the previous monster I killed on my clothes? Or has it to do something with my face? I don't know how exactly my looks are perceived in this world, but I did get compliments on my beauty in my previous world and so did Lady Athena said herself too. Please exercise some self-control. It's bad manners to stare at strangers and people you are meeting for the first time. I used my appraisal and found out that she was a devil. Do they even exist in this world and what is one doing down here? Shouldn't S.H.E. be in hell, just as the scriptures in the Pantheon library mentioned? Since it hasn't attacked me and is waiting herself, this means that this being is exercising caution. It is an intelligent species, so can I make contact with her and ask for help? She has a tall figure, dark colored skin and has an ominous look in her E.S. I need to be extra careful just in case. I don't want it to end in a mess just like with the humans, as long as the person in front of me has no ill intent against me, I guess it should be fine. 30. But my eyes were suddenly caught up gazing at a totally different thing. It felt so attractive, more like I was drawn to it, it was calling me, just behind that strange looking person, below a cluster of large magetitors. There stood a large boulder with an intimate network of cracks woven all over it. Blue dotted light rained over it, making the edges of the blade shine, as two swords were stew CK inside it. I don't know what these two swords were doing in such a place, or what business does this devil being had to do with it. But, for the first time I felt like I wanted something. The brightness that these blades reflected on my eyes brought a sense of pleasure and satisfaction that I wanted to grab them without wasting a single moment. Don't go the wrong way of getting the idea that I have a press the red button syndrome. Nope, I don't so don't even look for me. The color of the magical aura surrounding the swords was so beautiful that I didn't even flip my eyelid even for once. The two swords were almost half deep inside the boulder. The composite rock of this boulder did not appear to be tough, but was magically enhanced with the swords. While one sword was white, the other was complete black. They appeared to be a bit rusted and unclean to me, but I did not care. My appraisal failed to work on it, but the amount of magical powers leaking from them was blinding enough for me to recognize its true strength. Those belong to me. I don't know why. But I said these words aloud. I know people practice a theory of one who finds first, gets to keep it, but just listen to me, I know the swords are calling to me, my hands are shaking, and they wanted to hold the handle of the swords, my mind was drawn to the beautiful marking embedded near its hilt, my eyes, 31, fixed on its smooth edges and sparkly tip of the blade, which I could feel, even though it was embedded in the rocks. I just know those swords will look good on me, if I hold them. Usually I do not behave like this or am attached to things, but this was totally different. Unconsciously I knew the sword's right place is right beside my waist and I can be the only rightful worthy wielder. You get it now, just in these mere seconds, how I belong to the swords and the swords belong to me. It was clearly simply, the true worth of the swords will be understood when I wield them with my own two hands. Kady Jassy Olayuk. Hi Oi Kamuju Kasi Lassi. Come again. I thought to myself, these peculiar words, which the stranger spoke, brought a sense of relief and doubt at the same time. As usual I was unable to understand neither the language nor the meaning of these words. But at least they can talk. So I tried my best too, in my own previous world language. Hello, or should I say hi, but both have the same meaning. Wait, what am I doing? Guess it has been so long since I spoke to someone, but could you please tell me where exactly I am in this world E? While my eyes were still fixed at the swords, and my thoughts ran rampant, thinking of what to speak and what not to, 
I guess I was a bit angry with this whole reincarnation process. Usually, they would have installed the language in our brains or provided us with a skill. But there should also be this magic translation stones which the people of this world use, to converse with the heroes summoned. But, maybe such convenient things do not exist after all. Well, you made a big mistake. I had already marred a preparations just in case. 32. The Devil. She had brandished a long sword, out of nowhere. Maybe she too can use dimensional storage, and directly charged at me. I did not flinch. Her movements were super fast. Normally I wouldn't have been able to see her if I was a normal human. But I was not a complete human after all. Her movements appeared slower than usual to me, slow enough that I could shift to my right and dodge it. But there is no fun, than to torment others who try to harm me. The attacker must HRV thought that I couldn't keep up with her speed, because I was still gazing at the swords. But I have kinetic vision and 360 degree view. It seems that she fell for it. It sucks when you completely underestimate your opponent. Maybe it's my human form that allowed her to lower her guard, because I am too young to explore such a dangerous labyrinth on my own. Could she also have a connection to the humans on floor 10? I thought to myself just in case. While the attacker was submitted to the ground in a single thud sound, her face buried deep inside the earth. Maybe the gravitational field was too strong for her to handle, or she is just that simple to play with. But to my surprise, she unleashed a huge amount of magical energy and was now completely enveloped in a cloudy black aura. She had suddenly become strong, and flew back to her starting position. Her hurt body parts self-regenerated and she now held the sword pointed directly at me. Her frown putting strain on her burrows and old arch wrinkles on her cheeks. She gritted her teeth and glared at me with her ominous devilish eyes. Oh, yes I was wondering she doesn't have those supposedly wings and arrowhead tail. Were those just mythical pictures in my world fake depiction and imagination of just a silly old guy? 33. I used my appraisal skill on her sword, which appeared special to me, just in case. I needed to read her full strength. Unlike any other monsters she will not easily fall in my traps and it seems to me that she is adept in combat, prepared to kill me. One conclusion dash she is strong. Maybe the strongest I have yet to face in terms of level and especially combat skills. I felt a little sad, because all I wanted was to talk. Though there was no room for negotiation about the swords. Those belong to me and that's final. I had no mercy for those who wanted to hurt me. Adding one more head count to my tab won't make a big change. Playtime was over. 34. Status window. Name. Vertigo. Age. 260 years. Race. Devil. Level. 7500. HP. 65000. MP. 68000. SP. 70000. Skills. Dark Matter Magic LV7. Fire Magic LV8. Self Regeneration. Shadow Movement. Advanced Lightning Magic Umbrakinesis. Titles. Dark Countess. Ten for Psotl. A size. Class. Legendary Weapon. Ability. Cut through anything. Both physical and non-physical entities including magic flow in the surrounding. Description. A mythical weapon said to be lost during the Great Wars. Made by the Smith God himself. But after the original wielder died in battle, all its traces had been cleared leading to its non-recovery. Because of its immense power the original wielder was given the title Ictus Knight. 35, 36. Chapter 2. Never. Take a. Stranger. At his word. As per Master Zero's order I finally came to the Great Tathai Labyrinth. Even Master Zero himself has explored this dungeon till floor 12, so he directly teleported me here. For the source of power he mentioned, even I can now feel its presence. Its mere existence is revolting and reeks of those stupid gods. Its obvious master was concerned. Then I just need to destroy whatever that is. It's coming from deep below. I took a deep sigh and used shadow movement skill while activating the ring artifact to conceal my presence. I for some reason, found myself interested in facing one of the monsters before going down. But it can compromise the mission, so I withheld myself. After all, it's for the sake of my master. If only he pays more attention to me. After the success of this mission I am sure of it. My dreams will come true. He will surely acknowledge me then. 37. 
What's this? I am on floor 13 but there are still no monster sightings. Could it be that the army cleared the monsters? What are their chances of survival? Are some of the soldiers still alive, trying to clear the dungeon? If so, then I can surely have a nice pastime, with them. It's getting too suspicious. I was on floor 50. No monster sighting till yet. All I could see were huge cracks in the ground. Large craters, burned walls, dried lakes, but not a single being alive, as if the existence of all life forms was erased by some unknown, but the concentration of this divine power, keeps on increasing at an unprecedented magnitude, if I am not careful, then this power feel alone is enough to weaken my existence, we devils stand no chance if our enemy uses powerful divine light magic. And just for that purpose this sword will help me to cut through the magic barrier, which has naturally developed around this entire region. All to blame the source of this unique power. I cannot wait any more to get my hands on it. Only the powerful must have all the authority, and everything in this world will be soon for hours to seek. I was now flying across the dark floor. 51. But this time I saw a huge snake-type monster. My appraisal skill fails on it but I am sure that if I prolong the fight then I can win against it. Well, there's no point in arguing with myself. I need to head down as quickly as possible. Finally, at floor 55, I lifted up my sword and cut down through the strong magic barrier that was surrounding this place. The sudden boom of divine power that flowed into the surrounding made me miserable. All this accumulated energy belonged to two swords carved deep inside a mountain of huge rocks. 38. I am sure of it. This is the cause of all the powerful energy waves Master had been feeling. But what's up with these two swords? Is it possible for any weapon to do such a thing? For me it feels like if I get any closer I will be burned down with its presence alone. Even looking at the swords directly makes me blinded. If I present these swords to Master, then I will be greatly rewarded. Maybe he will promote me to the top rank and also allow me to visit this world more often. And all the fun I could have while killing those human mongrels. Who is there? I readied my sword as I felt another person walk in. Until now I couldn't even grasp this person's presence. Could it be one of the soldiers from the perilous empire? Doesn't matter they don't stand a chance against me. Honestly, it felt so plain to just walk in, grab the swords and leave. It's just not like me. If others heard that I completed my mission peacefully, then my fan following might drop. We can't have that, now can we? Wait, dot. What? A little girl. She is beautiful and has what they call a royal touch in her looks and mannerism. Could she be the princess of Perilous Empire? I had heard that she was young and very beautiful. But this is beyond my expectation. But something was off. Her level was only 11. And without any soldiers accompanying her how did she cross through the previous floors, without being attacked by the monsters? Wait was she already hiding on this floor? Then she must have seen everything. Her skill list appears to be hazy, maybe there's nothing to show and the same goes for the HP, MP and SP stats. It's completely absurd. 39. Just what can you expect from a level 11? Weak people like them have no right to live. How dare she even lift her head up in my presence. Long white hairs. Red eyes in a suspicious background. She is not even flinched or a bit hesitant to face my dark aura I was radiating. She is irritating me. Am I mistaking her identity? Doesn't matter. She is even weaker than a newborn demon slime monster. I will end her misery soon enough. I dashed in her direction, pointed the tip of my beloved sword at her. But just when I was about to reach. My body lost its balance. In an instant the whole weight of the world appeared to befall on my shoulders, my body being crushed down under some weird kind of force. I let out a loud moan, before my face was completely shoved inside the ground. I used shadow movement and retreated in an instant. I knew something was wrong with this kid. I cannot let my guard down around these monsters. No, matter I will deal with her either way. A human is no match for me. I took my sword fighting stance, lightning crescent moon, I lifted up my sword and while holding the grip with both of my hands, I tilted the sword in a horizontal manner, pointing it straight at my enemy's eyes, 
I wanted to finish it in a single blow. A fierce golden yellow light with a ZZZZCHKZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZ
I could tell because all I had been fighting mindless monsters with fixed attack patterns from level clearing it had now come to PvP. Just like in games, all I had left was now my physical strength, brute strength. Though I don't think it really suits a fragile girl like me, but being a monster and fighting against colossal giants, I had realized that my body was reinforced to a level where I could punch a hole in the dungeon wall without putting much of an effort. 44. My reflexes were good too, thanks to kinetic vision. So as a human my next strategy would be to somehow get rid of that sword form her and then corner her. Saying this really makes me feel like a bad person, quark of being a secretive plotter. Honestly, looking at my opponent she was smiling. She knew all my techniques had failed and I was getting restless at the same time. Given my lack of interest in that unworthy barrage of random attack spells, as usual she took a fixed stance. I don't know anything about sword fighting so I don't know what that is actually called, but it looks cool. I don't have time to spare to think about the two swords lying in wait for me, but for now my life is on the line. I must defeat her. To survive I have to kill her. She led out a large battle cry and seeing me standing idle, she smiled and easily took the bait, that I had accepted my doomed fate, I know you can give me points for my fake acting and the expression I made which made me look like I was in a lot of pain and wanted to end my sufferings, she headed straight for my neck and a crescent shaped lightning slash was just stopped in its trajectory by my bare hands, I smiled at her, while I could see an expression of complete disbelief, my hands still firmly holding onto the sword, Scarlet drops fell on the dusty ground, my palm was bleeding, the incision was deep and the burning sensation which I felt was getting difficult to handle by every second, now all I need to do is snatch the sword and throw it away, maybe into my dimensional storage. Quag dot dot ghhg dot dot ghhghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghghgh
I squealed in panic, dropping the book back on my desk which heralded the wake of a long silence. I looked at my hands, and the horror of blood smudged thickly over it made me scream. I searched for a handkerchief in the pocket of my school uniform which I always used to carry with me, but there was not one. Instead I felt a small stream of red fluid gushing out through a wound. I was not wearing my school uniform, but a white long tunic frock, the same design I made for myself on floor 10 of Labyrinth. Wait, what labyrinth? I am hurt, but how? I need to call an ambulance, but why doesn't it hurt if I am bleeding? Where was I before? Why everything up till now appears to be hazy? I can't remember anything of my past. I made a friend, did I? And then I lost someone, a goddess my best friend and travel the new world with her. What am I thinking about? I need to ask someone for help, but I don't know anyone at school who would help me at this hour. Lady Athena she will help me. Athena. I stopped moving. My body was slowly loosening up. I slammed my palm on the desk to keep myself from falling. I am crying. As I wiped the tears rolling down my face, how did I end up back here on earth? Don't tell me I was dreaming on my own. 48. Bam, bam, bam. My eyes were drawn to the window hallway, and on the other side of windows stood several figures beating heavily on the window pane like mad people. Who are they? Why do they look so familiar? I could make out three people clearly, while several of them were in shadows. A small girl with long fox-like ears growing on head and a white tail attached at the back. Then there was a man and a woman but their faces were covered in dark fog. I could not recognize them. Someone whom I had long forgotten and could not remember. How much harder I tried, I failed to recall them. Just thinking about it makes my head hurt so badly. All of these figures had bent bodies and distorted looks. They were not normal. Neither they appeared to be the part of the living. Are they trying to break in? I need to leave. They are so violent. These noises I can't handle them. Go away. Please. Go away. Leave me alone. If I open the door and run, they will catch up to me. A window came crackling down. Its shards fell inside the classroom. Their freakish noises suddenly hyped up in intensity. Pushing each other to jump through the broken window, they leapt across the small wall. Crack. Crack. Their footsteps making even the broken glass on the fallen floor turn into finer pieces. Their feet were bleeding, their hands covered in blood for touching the sharp edge of glass still hanging at the bottom of window frame. 49. Ah, help me. Please, someone, anyone, just take me away from here. The door of the classroom flung open and slammed on the behind wall, but that did not matter. Who was this new person? Before I could collect all my courage to lift up my head to see this person, someone clap. Just like that a soft touch embraced my blood-stained hand. Just who would do this for me? I raised my gaze and spotted a warm smile of a person. A girl in black hairs, wearing my school uniform was trying her best to give me an assuring like. I stood there flabbergasted for a second. Her innocent smile. The gentle touch of her hand. It was me. I was holding my own hand. But something was different it was unlike me to keep my hairs not covering my face at school and I was smiling. A smile which was meant to lift up my spirit to make me believe that we are safe and everything will be fine. This could have been the ideal me, if there existed one. Confident looks, a smiling face. It was as if light had finally shined upon me. No, I was the light. There is no time to explain. So for now we need to stop them from getting to you. So help me. It was quite hard to hear your own self, or my own voice speak to me. Was it a doppelganger? But this feeling. I wanted to trust her, because she was me, after all, I just couldn't deny a request from someone so pure and kind. 50. 51. This me started pushing the chairs and benches in an arranged manner forming a circular arch barricade, while behind us was the wall and series of windows. The sunset has still not reached its final descent stage. In the moving sheet of light, the evident faces of people that I had killed were coming after me. The small kid that died due to my carelessness, people whom I should have not forgotten, humans whom I killed without a second thought, just because I got full of myself. In that crowd then there were my uncle and aunt, the delinquents of my school. I was under a complete state of panic and chaos. Everything will be fine, just don't leave my hand. Who.ar.u
my voice so feeble that it was barely audible to even me. I'm you, your one half, to be precise. The quick response left me in a complete unknown and confused state. My half? Yes, and now if you would please help me. We can talk later. She took out two mop sticks from the behind locker, which we used to clean the classroom. She passed one to me, while she held on to one for herself. No, matter what don't let them come close. I saw her pushing back the figures, who tried to bring down the barricade. They were mindless beings. Was this happening for real? Zombie-like creatures coming after me, and someone impersonating me comes to lend me a hand. She was using her broomstick to push them back. But what caught my eye was that she was doing it without hurting them. Using the long stick instead of hitting them, she used her full force to simply brush them off. 52. Even though it will be much easier to just beat them down, she chose to show kindness, because at some point these other people I once knew, once they were alive too. Come with us. It's your fault I am like this. You are the one who killed me. I miss my family. You killed my friends. My comrades. You monster. All of the moving mindless figures were saying their last words repeatedly, dragging their voice up to the last alphabet. And each time they tried to speak again, they were somehow hurting themselves. I couldn't hold back my TRS. What I was seeing. To what was I listening? What did I do to deserve this? It was just too much for me. All I wanted was a peaceful life. So how did I end up fighting monsters? I was abandoned again and again. First my parents, then my guardians, my teachers, my classmates and finally the gods themselves. I risked my life. I died several times. I saw things I could not understand. Number of deaths I could not count. I had hurt so many. So why was I angry? Because there was no one for me to blame. A life in a closed empty room, with no one to come in contact with. That was what I all desired. So why these many are trying to budge in my life? Are you okay? Don't speak to me. This other me seeing me in a messed up state called out for me. But I ended up ignoring her. 53. Just look at that. A tea-heard person's voice rang in my ears, much similar to my own voice, but it had that cold and arrogant sour taste mixed in it. I looked up and from my seat another me, stood up and walked to the window. She gazed at the sunset and lifted up the small tassel of hair from the front of her face and pushed it behind her ears. It was a bit classic, but her face, unlike the other gentle me was exact opposite. There was no sincerity and a haughty look in her eyes. If the one standing beside me is my one half, then could she be my other half? Come on, why you are wasting your time on these goons? Just kill them. You don't want them in your life. Isn't that true? By the way they are already dead. I was dumbfounded and froze up in my place. Just what was she suggesting to me, or more importantly just what was I suggesting to myself? The person walked towards me, and from the other side of barricade, held me by the collar. I was pulled in, and my untidy face, was so close to her cold smile. Her mouth came so close to my lips that I could feel her cold breath graze them. You are me, aren't you? I know how exactly you feel. You want them to disappear, don't you? So do it. She then threw me back and turned to the zombie-like creatures. You have all the power you can have in this world. So just kill them. No, don't do it. Even though some of them might have been bad people when they were alive. But now they cannot harm anyone. So you shouldn't either. The other me bumped in the conversation. 54. 55. But I still don't actually realize where I stand. Someone like me who was never liked by anyone and had nothing that belonged to me. How can I have all the power I want? I wanted them to disappear. So badly. But still I did not want it to hurt any innocent or the people I once knew and who were good to me. From inside of the four walls of my room. I entered a new world without you by my side. For a brief moment I thought I could hold on to myself alone. I had to. Because I wanted to live in this new world. I wanted to reunite with her. I thought it will somehow work out in the end. If it was with her. But I was only using her as a shield. An excuse to put curtains over my own floors. My fears and a discriminatory attitude that I had developed towards society. I thought that everyone was bad. No one cared about each other's feelings. All they cared about was satisfy their own needs and make the weak color themselves as they wanted. And if you don't behave or look like as they want, 
then you are forever banned. If you don't meet the requirements of the society you have no place living here. Contribution of those who cannot rise up to the challenges and expectation of others are not needed. Shunned forever. The previous world did indeed reject me and showed that I did not belong there in the cruelest way possible. I wanted to change. I wanted someone to depend on me, and someone I could depend on. Doesn't everyone have that kind of person in their life already? Maybe your parents, your siblings, someone you admire or a friend. 56. But I always found myself alone. So I tried to remain quiet and kept myself hidden from everybody. Whenever I got my hopes up, I always found myself hurt. When my uncle and auntie took me in, after some time they started treating me like trash. As if I was not a human being. Always giving me a cold and feigned ignorance around others. I never asked them to do anything for me. But they forcibly pretend to do it out of greed. So if I don't get my hopes up then I won't be hurt anymore. Nothing will matter to me, and no one will complain against me. I did not expect anything from someone and had lost interest too, even in myself. I had lost my identity as a person. Instead of thinking about myself, I always tried to run away whenever I got close to the answer. But this time, I wanted to prove something. I wanted to help. I wanted to lend my hand to someone not only because I wanted to help but because I wanted to be embraced by someone else's hands too. What are you waiting for? Use your powers. Show them what they deserve. End it in one go. The other me sounded exalted and fascinated by the very thought of it. It's not needed anymore. I gave my answer without any hesitation this time. I wiped the tears off me, because now I knew what I wanted to do. Are you refusing me? Don't tell me you can't do it now. Have you forgotten how many soldiers you slaughtered that time? It's nothing new, you can do it again and again. Didn't you enjoy it when you did it for the first time? The face of this me had dropped with dissatisfaction and words of contempt and anger was evident from her tone. While the gentle me, sighed a heave of relief. No, I haven't forgotten those people I killed and they totally deserved it. I don't think I have any problem killing those who try to hurt others. 57. On purpose, they are unforgivable. But I do not hate them, so I cannot bring any harm to them without any real son. Then what exactly do you want to do? Tell me, what do your desire power for? If you cannot protect yourself then you know, you are going to die. I remember the promise I made to myself from time to time. The first time I died on bus, the first time I met Lady Athena, countless times while fighting monsters, times when I failed myself miserably, to change, to become someone strong, who doesn't regret her own actions later. I wanted others to feel proud of myself. I craved for companionship this time. To not spend my days alone, like the previous me, people did not even think that I existed. At that time I must had felt glad to be left alone, but some way I knew deep within, that it was driving me mad. I had abandoned what they call the normal living norms of society, to establish companionship with those who are successful, to take pity and make the weak go to you, to look down upon those who did not went with the flow and did crazy stuff time to time, to respect your elders, even though all they ask about what will be your profession for the future your grades and finally compare us with the star kids, to behave formally in the market and not buy things that are considered suspicious or too fanatical from the onlookers viewpoint, then what's the point in going to the market if I can't even buy a mini skirt of my choice or an extra bottle of deodorant or multiple branded cosmetics, is the society walking on a planned route, so thin a plank that if you deviate even slightly then you fall from the beam, are you kidding me? It's best for me that instead of walking like a faithful machine or falling. 58. Like a loser, I decided to hang from the beam tightly clutching it and stay at that same place. Don't look down. Don't look above. Neither forward nor backward. Close your eyes and just forget everything. Disappear from everyone's eyes. You won't see anyone and neither anyone will see you. That what I decided to do. All that was left was to just live on in a boring, colorless world and I just could not sit idly by and let the same thing repeat itself, not when someone is counting on me for help. All I want is to live happily with people I care for. I do not care for others in the least. Those who bring harm to them should just perish. If it's for the sake of that, I will slay everything who would even listen to my pathetic desire.
It's so clumsy ambiguous that I don't know why I feel like this. Just the thought of such an idiotic wish can make me look like a simpleton and a dimwit. And if this wish is that simple then why does it becomes every time harder, the more I think about it. Even in fairy tales heroes sometimes fail to protect people precious to them. Then why should my wish considered less valuable than saving the world itself? The noises had stopped, so I lifted my head up just in case, to know what development finally took place. The zombie apocalypse had finally stopped moving. They had turned into red statues for some reason. I am so glad for you, that we will now forever be together. Teehee gentle me, was now holding both of my hands and as usual, it felt like bliss. 59. The haughty me, was still smiling like an evil person, but I could tell it had no ill intention from the start to begin with. After all, it was me. I see you have not forgotten our promise. Then you don't need me anymore. I hope that all your wishes and wishes of those around you come true. It's time for me to leave now. She sounded so nonchalant about it, and yet was so concerned. This me then walked to one of the open window near my seat. We were supposed to be on the third floor, while I used to always gaze outside but I never dared to travel outside. That was not a place meant for me to tread alone. As peaceful as the scenery looked, it would never accept me. I could only fantasize that one day someone will come to me and ask me, what I am doing? How am I feeling? Do you want to play together? Just a normal chat, but with whom? The outside world could turn into hell in an instant. The accident in which I lost most of my childhood memories, in which my parents died, it really scared me. What if it happens again and I end up losing all of my memories again? What if someone I know dies? People around me always end up getting hurt. Isn't it time for you to leave too? Just go already and quit wasting your time here. She then stared at the ground, but she was no tea surprised to see that the ground itself was missing. It was a complete dark pool of unmeasured depth. Does one of my personalities really behave and talk like this? If someone falls from here then I can have an endless happy airy sleep, that's what I would think. She then climbed the window, and taking a final glance at me jumped. She had closed her eyes, I thought if I let her go now, then I would never be able to see her again. My heart started aching. 60. This is not right. This is not what I actually desire. If you leave now, then I will remain in complete clasp. The other me opened her eyes and she was falling at an incredible speed, but she felt too uncomfortable because one of her hand was stuck in mine. And what do you think you are doing? Nothing much, I replied. While my one hand was holding her, the other hand was still holding on to my gentle personality. She jumped with me too. That's what I would expect from myself. Are you two idiots? Just leave me alone. I would not be of any help to you anyway. I will just only come in your way. You can achieve your dream without me, that's where you are wrong, if you are not there, then my dream will never come true, I want all of us to stay together forever, so don't leave me just like that, I feel the same, so come with us, said the gentle me, honestly, because of your idiocy, all three of us will die here, we three burst into laughter, it had been forever, since I laughed, this was the first time I laughed and smiled wholeheartedly after being reincarnated, we were gaining momentum, and were now falling at an incredible speed. Thanks to the sturdiness of my frock, it was not flowing upwards, otherwise I could have died because of embarrassment. The cool speeding air, which lifted up my ashen white glossy hairs felt so comfortable. 61. I could have stayed here doing this all day, chatting with each other, but now was not the time. I needed to wake up, to do the right thing, to ensure that this time I change for good. The thing which I have been always good at, defeating enemies superior than me and survive. I wanted to live a life acknowledged by others, I wanted to make these two me's holding my hands proud and happy, so I will give it my all once again. Even if it is an impossible dream I want to live like this. This was how I was destined to learn about myself. The scenery around us bent and twisted, wrapped around our body. A thick book appeared in front of us. While we looked at it with suspicion and curiosity, its pages started to flip it on itself. One side of the pages were dark as black, while the other side was plain white. Let's meet again on the outside world. Best of luck. The gentle me passed her dazzling smile to me, 
which mesmerized my heart. Same here, don't lose to anyone else. Otherwise I will have to teach you a lesson. The same went for her happy sly cunning smile. It kind of looked a bit arousing and embarrassing in a way. Do I really make expressions like these? From the book suddenly a red colorful portal opened and the three of us were sucked in a helical loop of red vortex. Thank you for your help. Let's be friends forever. I finally was able to say it. 62. Vertigo. I had finally cornered that little brat. All she had been but a pain. Her magical prowess is terrific. She is physically able to stop the movement of my sword. But all that amounts to nothing, when facing my sword play and battle experience honed every day in real battles to death, hell had never been the place of the weak and frail hearted, I was about to deal her the final blow, after all that regular strikes and dodging her unseen and weird magical attacks she was finally wounded, I sped up my movement and held my blade with my hands which had gotten stiff because of the prolonged fight, even though you proved to be a worthy opponent. But you are thousands of years too young to face me, but since you dared to provoke me, you have to die. I will be taking your life now. I wonder how a little girl left feels when her head is severed. My mark was not far off, when a white pillar of light reaching the heavens illuminated the rocky dungeon floor. I reflexively shut my eyes to protect myself against the blinding flash of light. With energy levels going far beyond my comprehension. Clang. A loud metal clasp brought an end to the white light, and on my close inspection, my sword instead of piercing through my prey's heart was stopped by two crossed swords which she lightly held in her hands. Just what is happening now? Those two swords. When did she? I was perplexed, so I checked over the top of the boulder and unfortunately the swords were gone. I watched in disbelief, the light of the creator dash the most powerful energy source, engulfed her from head to toe. A divine glimpse of their 63 power of the creator. I could have recognized those energy signatures anywhere. So warm and bright, a divine sight to behold. The pillar of light began to flake out, revealing her in a new light. The wounds I dealt to her with my legendary weapon were now all healed. The blood stains vaporized. She held a new shining white sword in her right hand and a black sword as if it was a shadow in itself in her left hand. I don't understand any of it. I lost my chance to kill her, and now she has even received the blessings of the Creator. I have never heard of this from Master Zero. He always used to say that the Creator is the supreme and only he can truly govern the worlds and rule over all the three realms, but since he chose neutrality, it is up to us to hold that place for him, till he make up his mind to lead us to a new utopia, if so. Then why out of all people a weak naive little girl, suddenly ended up with his power? What is the secret behind those swords? It doesn't matter, I will kill her and claim those swords along with her power. I need to make this as quick as possible. She lacks battle tactics, strategies, coping with enemy attacks and doesn't know anything about sword play as it was evident from her stance of holding the swords. She does not stand a chance against me, and with that predominant thought I launched a quick succession of slashes, with its strength magnified with my lightning and dark matter magic. It proved effective against her the previous time, so even now she should be vulnerable to it. Clang, clang, clang. Impossible. How did she? 64. All of my sword attacks were nullified, but I didn't even see her body move. A torrent of white and black glows started revolving around her until they got absorbed by the swords of their respective color. Her face which was up till now, clouded in light, was now clearly visible to me. Red glowing eyes, an expressionless face. I was terrified, the magical density in the surrounding started turning in her favor, making it difficult for me to absorb magic from the surrounding. Are you kidding me, a mere child cannot match my strength. With that said, I launched another heavy down strike from above on her for a movement there, I thought I got her, but just before it was about to split apart her head, with a loud metal strike, my attack was halted midway, she was not even looking at me and yet, her white sword was lifted up slightly, just to parry my strike, suddenly the white sword started giving off a bright hot golden yellow light, which kept on increasing in intensity, at that moment, she lifted up her head and made a direct eye contact with me, bloody eyes, the amount of bloodlust I had never experienced before, I wanted to run, 
This thought repetitively crossed my mind. Flash. My body. A H H H. R. And my skin was melting, just by the slight graze of that light. I jumped as far as I could, and yet I sustained a lot of damage. M. Regenerative skill, doing its best to keep up. I tried to locate my enemy again, and she was standing still at the same position. She broke in a cynical smile, and yet her face appeared to be lacking any expressions. Devoid of happiness, excitement, anger and loathe it was purely filled with the intent to kill. That very evil smile, and her curled up red lips, though alluring, made me shudder in fear. 65. For the first time, I was afraid, I was afraid of dying. If I don't think quick she will surely kill me. A mere kid. How can she hold such power? I need to inform about such an existence to master. Only he may have the ability to stop her. I headed for the exit, but before I could take my next step, she teleported right in front of me. I knew she had such magic, but I was still then able to keep up with her with my shadow movement skill. I had the advantage because I could easily read her attack pattern and have guessed where she would teleport next, but now it was altogether a different story. The tables were turned against me. Before taking the possession of swords, she could be considered the most powerful human mage for her age group and counted as one of the best among veteran adults. But my combat skills far surpassed her, so why am I afraid now? I can still manage to defeat her. Then I remembered the order that Master Zero gave me. My duty, my loyalty and my love it all belonged to him. Even my life was for his sake. I determined myself to kill her here in this very labyrinth so no one can ever know of such a being. I will wipe her very existence from this world. Just what was I thinking, trying to escape? Don't make me laugh, Diabolus Inisha. The dark matter magical energy surged in my body at a drastic rate. Black sharp claws were now covering my both hands and a pair of long black wings sprouted out of my back. This is a special kind of transformation in which we apostles sacrifice our blood and convert them to pure magical energy. It boosts all our stats and effectiveness of skills. 66. But there is a heavy price to pay, in worst case if I overdo it, then I will surely die. But even so, I know I can still make it out alive. I am going to kill her. No matter what, my whole body was now covered in black oil and finally four long tentacles like hands grew out of my back, each holding a magical sword. This was my ultimate form, the Dark Countess. Human you should be glad, that I have graced you with my ultimate being transformation. You will pay the price of your insolence with your life. I only shed lightning attack in rapid succession. There didn't exist any strategy or trickery, but just overpowering. Brute force spasm clang 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 intense shock waves rippled out from the point where the six blades and dual blades clashed. The amount of magical energy that was thrown off was chipping down the walls and creating vicious large holes in the ground. From an earthling perspective, it would appear more like a war, one where several airborne missiles had been dropped just a minute ago. Things are not working in my favor. She is blocking my every attack. Just how much good did she became in such a short amount of time? I need to use everything in my arsenal, if I want to assure my victory. Oh, gates of hell, heed my call, open your heavy doors and let the wrath of my thunderstorm rage over this land. Thunder Calamity. This was a multi-purpose spell, that creates artificial black lightning over a large area, as well as I am able to augment my body with lightning itself which increases my muscle movement and thinking capability. I had made my final move, and all that was left was to strike her down. 67. Several black flashes surged down from above creating charred craters wherever it landed upon. I looked back at my enemy, and all my hopes perished. Just the sight of her made me regret my own actions. What's hap dot pinning? And no I exclaimed, before I was sent flying towards my own doom as if life itself flashed before my eyes when I tried to look deep into those bright red eyes. That SML. Humans were supposed to be low-born creatures who shows love and fall into despair when they follow their own compassion. Desire is the emotion of the weak. One who does not desire has the only right to be called the strong. So why? This human wields such a power that I cannot persist against her. Joy, harmony, excitement, fear, anxiety. 
anger right now. She lacked every emotion on her face. Her posture was not that of a living being but of the sword itself. She had become one with the sword, abandoning all of her feeling and concentrating all of her flesh, brain, blood, cells and everything that reeks of power she had achieved the ultimate realm of swordsmanship, a level which I could never hope to achieve. She lifted her black sword in the sky and in one fell swoop all the thunderclouds vanished. No more fitting would be for me to say. It was completely nullified and the raw magic was absorbed by it. My high level magic spell meant nothing to her. My efforts were in vain. She then lifted her another sword and a black sun appeared above us. She brought down her swords and so did the sun follow. That could be bad if I take a direct hit. All I need to cut that thing with a size and dispel its magic. 68. Duh. I poured every ounce of my physical strength into my arm, while I jumped and made a shearing continuous slash through the large black sphere. I split the sun in half, but the magic did not dispel. The magical energy compressed and it was too great for even a legendary weapon to show effect. Just what kind of existence I am fighting here, a being blessed by the creator's light right in front of me and then indulges in using dark matter magic. Nothing makes sense to me at all. Everything then that came in touch with the sliced off part of the sphere was obliterated. It was not a joke to be taken light off, nor a metaphor to mislead. Everything that touched those black masses were compressed, pulverized, turned into particles and disappeared into the wind. The shockwave's pressure was on par with that of a large typhoon and I was easily blown away, losing balance and tumbling over the ground. This had never happened to me before, but it is real, covered all in blood and wounds, I rose up again to face this opponent. I wanted to know my own extent, to fix the problem I made by myself. It was composition magic of, dark matter magic, fire magic and finally gravity magic. Composition magic is considered to be one of the toughest magic to use, and she is doing it so easily and naturally. I don't want to say this but her skills in sorcery might even rival Master Zero. That's more the reason I need to stop her, before she stands in our way of complete dominance over this world. To be ruled by those who are worthy and can lead this world from the age of chaos into the age of prosperity and peace. This is not over yet, all my years of training. The hardships I faced, just to gain a bit more strength, to get a bit stronger than yesterday I had given up on all pleasure of life. 69. In my years of fighting I had learnt that the sword of the person who has the greatest conviction flows like serene water and can cut through even the hardest metal. So is my conviction comparatively weaker to that girl? Impossible. I used all of my sword stances against her and all were blocked. Since the start I have been on offensive and the smile on her face had kept on getting deeper and deeper. Before I knew it I was traumatized by her bloodlust. She was only and only thinking of killing me. It did not matter whether she gets hurt in the process, the fear of losing or the thought of celebration upon victory. It was none of her concern. All she wanted was to kill me. So it really is true. People can really get strong when they are on the verge of dying. Now that I think about it, I wonder what dying feels like. Is there a way to return? Will I be lucky enough to evade the last blow, or, will my luck run out in the battlefield? There was only one way to know. To move your body, to move the sword and cut down your enemies. That is what I had only known, what I always have known and what I will always know. The wind pressure of the surrounding was changing. The person who just stood there in a defensive stance now started slowly walking towards me. She launched her first strike even though the blade was too far. My right arm started bleeding heavily, the wind shock wave sent by her sword swinging was strong enough to get past my magical barrier. She kicked into the floor and throttled like a gale of wind. She moved so fast that my eyes couldn't keep up, which brought us directly into each other's sword range. I thought this was my chance, but she swung her sword first, even before I could clutch the hilt of my sword to deal a heavy strike. 70. A mid-level slash with the left sword. A quick thrust with the right, left, right, left, right, again and again. Her movements grew faster and faster, but something was new, something I was not accepting of. There was no way. This fighting style, the sword movement and the battle flow of the blade, it was so familiar. Its breathtaking beauty of each high-pitched slash and the beams of light shooting out like stardust. It was so close 
too close, to be precise even better than the term perfection could describe. She in this short amount of time, while defending herself had analyzed and picked up my sword skills. Not only that, she altered it to suit her own dual wielding style. Her body size, her arm strength and vision. Could I be blamed for leading to the birth of a monster, who could annihilate any of his enemy by just a single look? I was enjoying it. No one had ever pushed me to my limits, even though she was playing me around. Her expressionless face could only mean that she was toying with me. Fighting a weak opponent, who slowly grows stronger with time and finally surpasses you. Though it happened so fast, though I will fail my mission and though I lost my final battle, I was still content. The noble art of my blade which was slowly getting dull, but I was finally given a chance to take it to another level, to become one with the sword, the sword bestowed upon me by my master, his expectations from me, shattered because of my foolish desire, I must have been a bad subordinate to begin with, to think like this, I was about to reach my limits, I tried my best to squeeze as much magical power as I could from my active blood and channel into my magical veins, finally I casted a spell on myself to absorb and emit a 71 specific amount of magical energy for my surrounding to maintain a steady flow of magical energy circulate in my entire body, I flew straight up and launched a frontal aerial assault, so did the person in front of me, I knew she was able to use flight magic, but even so it was advanced to the extent that it could overcome my sonic flying speed. Wherever I go, she followed. Bright sparks of unimaginable colors and the resonant clashing of metal to metal could be heard, even if you hid yourself among the rocks closing your ears. I wanted to fly faster, faster. I knew being free felt so good to wield the sword I dedicated my life to hardships and free of all desires. But I now wanted to let loose the atrocities of hell the dark abyss where light never reached, the kingdom of fallen and the discarded souls, those who had been deemed unfit and unworthy of the light of the creator, but the person who stood in front of me could grant me salvation, oh, if only master zero was here to watch this, surely he would understand the radiance of those who were born to be the light of those who loomed and despaired in the shadows, finally I was sent flying down into all the rubble, under the rules of gravity, which already seemed to be altered by her, it's not over yet, I want he to see it once more, the light, which I had always desired, the light that can change all of our lives, to grant my wish, do it for me, I concentrated all my awareness on using magic and strengthening my body, I drew every drop of magic molecule from every muscle, blood, cell and fiber of my hair, none was left, a black aurora, much darker than before giving off its own ruinous and brutal light. My body was slowly burning in it as it dissolved my own skin and flesh, but that did not matter. I wanted to go deeper, to peer into myself, to look what's 72 within me. The answer we had been searching for hundreds of years. We looked everywhere but never inside ourselves. I could barely see my enemy anymore, but the imagery of two red glowing dots and a black curled up smile was carved deep into my memory even in all that smoke dust. One last swing, which had all that in me. The desire to merge and become a part of this light and darkness was so great that I broke past my limits. I could feel myself moving at an incredible speed. The sword of my master had become a part of me and it too was aiming at the same thing. Our thoughts aligned, I had left my past behind me. And in the present moment I was moving forward to grab my future. My vitality, stamina, magic power, life force, fighting spirit and personality. I mustered up all that I had in me. Right now, in this very moment I wanted to let loose my sword and end all of this in a single strike. The enemy. I could not see her. The distance between us I don't know, but I knew I was on the right path and the right time to strike. When the flash of lightning from the gliding steel blasted the air away and torrents of magical aura ripped the surrounding dimension leaving it in tattered black glass pieces. A phenomena that can only be said as impossible was taking place right in front of my eyes. The room was painted white and so was I too whitewashed. My fear, insecurities, screams and dark desires all were washed away. The me left was pure and pristine in everyone's eyes. No one would discriminate against me. No one would glare at me. 
No one would want to hurt me anymore and I won't be able to hurt anyone. No one would call me defeated. No one would call me the victor either, for I had lost the battle but achieved my goal. Crack. 73. In the long silence afterward, the deep sound of breaking steel echoed throughout the labyrinth. The legendary mythical sword a size laid on ground destroyed into fine pieces. With my right hand I touched my heart. But it was the cold of the steel that stained my hand with fresh blood. Her black sword was pierced right through my heart. I looked at my left hand which was slowly dissolving into black threads. Was I turning into ash? The warmth of the light was vanishing, even though I was able to witness it. I could not contain it. More of the ash drifted away gently and more of me disappeared. I was fading. And yet I thought I was merging with something even bigger. My memories, my fears, my sadness, my name, my loyalty, my rage and my smile it all merged into something incomprehensible that I could not feel anything but be grateful. The embrace of one who created us and his touch. Time stood still and in that moment I made another wish, and hoped that Master Zero Two could witness this light. 74. In that stillness another mechanical display became visible dash. You have leveled up. You have reached level 12. All seeing eyes of the gods activated. Fifth form, equivalent exchange. Fifth form. Equivalent exchange, an alchemy-based skill that allows the user to create anything, by consuming either material or magic power. However, there is a limit to which things can be created. Also you must have a comprehensive and deep understanding of the item which is to be created. For example you can create magic or, if you understand its detailed structure and uses. However you cannot recreate the dual swords of black and white since they are of a singular existence entity. 75. Status window. Name. Dash. Age. 7 months. Race. Human. Level. 12. HP. ERR. MP. ERR. SP. ERR. Unique skill. All seeing eyes of the gods first form. I have investigation second form. Kinetic I third form, I have Adrana fourth form, I have Soul fifth form, equivalent exchange, skills, Glutton ELV8 mystical poison magic, Sage of advanced fire magic, Sage of advanced water magic, Sage of advanced wood magic, Sage of advanced wind magic, Divine mystic thread magic, Advanced sun magic, Sage of advanced space time magic, Sage of advanced ice magic, Sage of divine light. Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless, 76, Information Brochure, Light of the Creator, The Denizens of Hell, Call the Almighty World God, The Creator. For he is the one who made the three realms, the omnipotent one, who stands above all, rules above all and bestows his blessings on all, the creator of life, the light that guides all and the darkness that follows us. No one can defy him, because he is the one who holds absolute authority. But during the great wars, he decided to choose neutrality so that no side gains absolute advantage. No one doubted or questioned his decision because it would be foolishness to question the all-knowing entity. Only he is the one who knows all. The one, who created the past, projects the present and directs the future. In the war, the devils and the fallen lost their battle. The light of the creator was soon banished from ever reaching the bottom. Marking the beginning of the suffering of the beings that dwelled there, the gods had sinned and so they finally after about 200 years have decided to rise up again to claim what is their right and reach to the light themselves. Light of the Creator, refers to the special powers of the Almighty World God. It is the strongest power in existence. Since the dual swords are a product of the Divine System, it is made by the Creator's light and has the power to change the laws of nature itself. 77, 78, Interlude, Memories and Expectations Ma'am, your coffee, said the waitress as she placed a white cup of hot coffee on the table. It was an open roof cafe on the second floor built on a large balcony, which had not been used since construction. So a young entrepreneur, when saw the location on sale, he opened a cafe, which became a successful venture in an instant. 
The services are good and the coffee brewed is of high quality too. Minagawa Espresso. I added sugar to the cup after I tore the sugar sachets, trying to hold back my powers at all cost and not disperse it in the process. After slowly stirring it with the spoon, I took a sip from the mug and gazed at the tall building towering in front of me right across the main street. Gransbury Shopping Mall. It was one of the busiest places in the Kibuya Prefecture, but instead of watching the thousands of people fluxing in and out, I was seeing the people of the past. 79. Mrs. Rue, I know I might be prying into, but why it is that you always visit this place and look at the shopping mall? Well, if it isn't Chico, the always troubled one. I know that you are a regular and you always look out for me, but at least don't make fun of me like that. Whenever I see you out here drinking coffee, it looks to me rather than enjoying your drink you are sad about something. Oh my! You have grown up so much in this one small year and here I was still planning to play my big sister role a bit longer. But you don't need to worry about me. Instead I visit here because it makes me happy. Of course, I will be worried. After all you saved me from those evil guys, by beating down all of those five brutes. You were like a superhero out of a Shan manga. And then you even helped me to hunt down a part-time job. The waitress tried to punch the air in front of her making sure to hold the tray tucked between her armpits. You, don't need to think about it that much. This place had a vacancy and the manager could be troublesome to deal with. I am giving it my all, so I at least get along with the manager. I even got a bonus for this month and even in the previous ones. I gazed up high in the sky, and took a deep breath. Mrs. Rue, did I ever tell you, that almost 192 years ago, just across this street there used to be a shrine not too big and neither too small. The main priest belonged to the Kondo family. I have so many happy memories of that place, but time has changed and that place is long gone. But I still find myself stuck there. The air has changed. The people who live there are no more and even my beloved. 80. I looked at my watch and the confused face of the companion lending an ear to my sob story. Maybe I spoke more than I should have. I hurriedly got up from my seat and paid for the coffee. Listen Chico, go home soon today and carry an umbrella with you this evening. I got up from my seat and left the place. Chico on the other hand stood there, unable to understand where the conversation was supposedly going. Was Mrs. really talking about her memories from 192 years back? There must be some kind of mistake. But isn't her full name as Ru Kondo too? Maybe I am the one thinking too much. She is so young and beautiful like a goddess. Next time I will surely try to ask for a photo with her. Chika then looks at the sky and wonders why I should carry an umbrella when the sky couldn't be any bluer than THS. I had been walking for half an hour, and it started down pouring a bit sooner than expected. I brought out a blue umbrella out of thin air even though my hands had been luggage free. The answer is pretty simple, my dimensional storage. I had reached my destination after another five minutes walk. I was standing at the door of a very old house, which appears to have been renovated time after time. This was the first place, the exact same position and this heavy rain when I met the love of my life. I rang the doorbell. Two people came from inside and welcomed me after seeing my visiting card. 81. I see so you must be the new buyer. I didn't expect you to be a young lady with such a lovely face. We have wanted to sell this house for such a long time. I hope that it is to your liking. A middle-aged man and another middle-aged lady spoke to me with a hurried smile on their faces, trying to sound as convincing as they could. Yes. I have already seen the property twice and I am now willing to buy it at the agreed price. I tried to grin and confirm their proposal. I am so glad that we can finally sell it. You will really enjoy living here. Though the house is quite old, renovation can easily fix the cramped floors and some of the broken walls, or, maybe you can even build an entire new house from scratch. Well at least they seem to be happy, after selling their own family home. Since I am paying more for the house more than it should have actually cost me. But I wanted to make haste and did not have any time to negotiate. This house belongs to the Kondo family, but since I am the last member I finally decided to sell the house. They did not know my true identity because I was using an alias. I see. It's quite sad to hear that. You don't need to worry. Recently we suffered a loss with our new business venture. 
I am sure with the money earned here we can then live a happy life, I think we will be taking our leave now. The man prompted and then we were suddenly at the entrance door. I will make sure that the rest of the money is sent to your bank account by the end of the next week. 82. Both of them finally left, so they were Suki's uncle and aunt. I feel exhausted after talking to them just for 10 minutes. How could I allow this house to be sold to anyone else, when I myself used to live here once? Also Saki too lived here, so I think there should be a place for her to return to too in this world. Well, this house does require maintenance. I hope that Saki is doing well on Isleguard and since she has finally inherited my dual blades of white and black I have nothing to worry anymore. But I wonder what will you do, Carolina Scalon? Hero of Isleguard after seeing those two swords again in someone else's hand, an ominous smile appeared on my face. I tried to correct back my facial expression with my two hands. Usually those who use those swords ends up having multiple personality disorder. They may become immune to blood and violence sometimes, and have a typical craze for fighting strong enemies, but since it is still only recent I don't think the effects will be that pronounced. Everything's just gonna be fine. Ha, Triple E. I hope so. I just laughed it out to release my tension. Turing, Turing. The doorbell rang and a person in black suit stood outside the entrance. Even the door needs repair after it made that long screech sound while opening it. Good evening, Mr. Kozuma. How have you been? He was soaking wet in all the rain. I will do just fine if I don't actually catch a cold. 83. I got a towel for him where it was usually kept in the leftmost room in the second drawer. You know your way around the house pretty well, even though this is your third time here, you think so. Somehow, I was finding myself in a pinch, but it's not like anyone will actually figure out that I used to live in this house around 200 years ago. We sat across each other on the sofa, with a transparent glass table laid out in between. He quickly emptied his bag with a bundle of printed documents and managed to assemble them like he means business. He used his body to protect the documents from getting wet. Buying a house these days is so annoying and going through the lengthy processes again and again. So many kinds of taxes and then the proof documents of the land. Well no point in complaining about it, if it doesn't do me any good. So, let's start from where we left previously. We were going today to talk about who should be the property named after, so please convey it to me. I gave a small thought to it, but I had already decided with what I would go. How, about Saki Kondo? 84, 85, Chapter 3, Sword and Sorcery Dash Freestyle. I rubbed my eyes, and heard two metals strike against each other. Those were my two new swords, and I think I slept with them. Clutched between my arms, I rose up from my normal white cocoon-like thing and took a quick glance at my surroundings. The fight from before was intense and my memories are still a bit foggy. I took a quick look at my status and was amazed to see my new all-seeing eyes of the gods unlock a new power, equivalent exchange, and the description fascinates me more than anything. I just want to try it somehow. My eyes just at that time fell on another broken sword. Its pieces crumbled to the point of no recovery. I picked it up and by remembering the description of the sword from my appraisal and energy signatures from my analysis skill, I poured a huge amount of magic power into it. 86. My magic power kept on being sucked in, I don't know how much, but it was enough to make me feel exhausted. My enemy's sword which he used to cut through my magic and my attack was now restored back to its glory. Suddenly I had a bad feeling as if someone was staring at me. It appeared that someone was angry and annoyed at the same time. Those were my new swords, as if they have a consciousness of their own, and I could tell how they were feeling. Recently I even had a dream where I was talking to them. They don't need to worry, I am not interested in using anyone else's weapon. So, I will just put it in my storage. Wait, was I really talking to my own swords? I really need to see to a doctor, but maybe first I need to learn more about them myself, and the best way is to use them in battle. So, without further wasting any time, no matter what I wanted to try them. After I had tried to copy the sword skills of my enemy using analysis, I was able to use them to some extent, but it was not that efficient. Obviously, you just can't learn things like that without practice and effort. 
The best way to learn martial arts and swordsmanship is to put them in use, and make your hands remember every movement of your sword. I think I have to now search not only for a magic teacher but a swords master too. I tease not that I can just go on internet and search for them. I don't know the first thing, even about the kind of sword I am holding, except that they came in a pair of two. At least I am knowledgeable enough to know that it was not one free for buying one. Oh dot R. Electric like shocks ran through my hand. Sorry, sorry. I won't make fun of you two again. 87. I think I should by now get used to talking to my swords. It was now time for me to go to floor 56 and look for my next opponent. I am half done with the labyrinth, and soon will be out of here. By then I am sure I will be strong enough. But still I don't know at what level does this labyrinth stand, with respect to the power levels of the outside world. Will the humans be stronger than me? How about my other classmates who would have got much superior and rare skills than me? Like last time. I can't end up underestimating someone again. No, one was there with whom I could compare with myself. At least I hope I won't have the same standing in the outside world like my previous world and will do fair enough outside. 88. Floor. 56. It was once again the same rocky structural walls, but there were big trees growing randomly anywhere too. And when I say big, it means absolutely big as high as 80 feet, with leaves only growing at the top and no more in between the thick lumber. Just who can reach that top of a height to eat those leaves? Thump, thump. The answer came soon after. A 100 feet tall giant walked in from the right and headed towards one of the trees. It had a goat-like head with two long horns protruding out of its head in a twisted manner, chewing down its leaves like taking a small bite from a nugget hooked up on a toothpick. Could IT be the first herbivore monster? Then maybe I don't have to fight it. It's quite a relief. But a waste of excitement I had pumped in myself just a moment ago. I really have changed since I came to this place. Seeing a strong monster my hands starts tingling, my brain starts moving in a circle and all I can think of are the monster's abilities, their strong point and ways to defeat them. So, while it just feasted on its green meal, I tried to quietly walk by, slowly, slowly, moving towards the entrance which was not far off. I thought it wouldn't notice me, and I did not want to disturb it while eating. Somehow I too felt like eating something, but all the rations were over. Then the cooking utensils of soldiers were not that impressive to begin with. They were not modern and efficient to bring out the best of my skills, but I had not yet lost hope. My newfound power, equivalent exchange, would sure pull me through, but I who as soon as waking up wanted to go on monster extermination, my swords too were feeling restless. I could just tell. 89. Pow, pow, pow. Several silver solid crystals like structures came flying towards me at a speed to even break through the sound barrier. The boom sound resonated within the four walls as the air currents got meshed up. I forgot, even though it would be an herbivore monster. It would treat me like I am barging in its house and would try to kill me. Now that I look at it properly, it is all covered in scales, which appears to be as hard as diamonds seeing the holes they have left on the ground after landing. I wonder just how many and at what speed can it launch those diamond scales. I embraced my swords, tightened my grip and tried to taunt the monster. More like challenging it, isn't how that a duel starts. Not that it can actually see my small movements from that above. Gwahuah with the cliched cry of a boss monster, announcing the unannounced special move of his. Within a second, thousands of scales were dispersed into midair and came flying at me at a much greater speed than before like a shotgun. I had already decided to not use magic, but train in my physical capabilities. Know my limits and potential ways of using my dual swords. I wanted to discover new fighting techniques and future possibilities. I had already learned my lesson to not depend on a single power. I leapt into the sky after crushing the floor with my heel. With my kinetic vision I could clearly see the path of the diamond scales flying towards me. With a single strike from my white sword I shattered one of them. Well that was one out of maybe thousand or so. Ninety. Things started to get interesting when, this time around the diamonds instead of landing on the floor started following me like a homing missile. So, they have been upgraded from the status of pure shotgun to advanced homing missile system. I am glad. 
It will give me more chance of training. From all the direction the crystals came flying at me. One would think that the wedding-like frock I was wearing would come in my way. But I assure you nothing could make me feel more comfortable. It is a perfect battle suit, and elastic in all ways. And it makes me look elegant. Even during fighting, I wanted to aspire for a mage. But if I am going to do physical attacks too then I will doing it in every heroic and epic way possible. Strike after strike I tried to cut down the diamonds. Even during this I was trying to find the most effective array of my hand movements, to get an optimum distance, the maximum torque output, my effective strike range, the true length of my swing, my piercing strength, my cutting speed, the weight I put on each strike. There were just so many things I could learn. And yet, I didn't know how my hands were full, and all I had been was able to destroy around hundreds of these, though the number of their projectiles had decreased, their strength and accuracy was increased to an unfair supremacy, I was surrounded from everywhere. While I destroyed the scales coming from my back, front and above, I used my legs to kick down the scales to blow. Unexpectedly they were crushed to dust with just my leg strike. Got to use and think all of the ways to protect myself. It was now getting kind of boring, and the boss monster all did was stand there and watch. Why do only I have to do all the work? Making a small girl fight while hiding yourself is quite rude. 91. I went flying directly at him with my swords, hoping to slash his neck in one strike, but I was stopped a long distance away by a blue glass shield. It was quite thick and my sword strike did not even lay a scratch on it. I finally decided to pull back, because the scales followed me. So, there is only one way around, to drill through all the scales. I used my inhumane movements, flying ability and webs to gather all the scales in place. And when that happened, I kicked one of the scales, increasing my speed midair and changing directions rapidly. I started striking those in my path while using some of them as a stepping stairs to keep on changing my course while dodging them at the same time. It proved to be a super effective and time-saving strategy. So, finally it's me and his barrier. There was no other way going around. I repeatedly used my sword strikes on the blue transparent barrier. This time around the goat face, instead of showing ignorance, was clearly traumatized. With no other ways to attack me, it chose to swing his hands and feet at me. It had full faith in its absolute barrier system, but I was determined to take it down. No matter what, I will make my every single sword strike count. Dual blades, white and black swords, skill, absolute magic control activated. Wait, I acquired a sword skill during fight. No, it's actually opposite. The sword learned a new skill, from appraisal. This skill isn't it more importantly said to be a cheat. Will it really work according to the description? I wouldn't know unless I try. So instead of beating around the bush, I have to just beat the bush down. The black sword started giving of a faint jet black light, while the white sword was radiating a white light with a bluish silver lining to it. Well, at least it has a good color sense. 92. I made a white heavy strike with the black sword on the barrier and without further ado, the whole thing came falling down. Crackle, crack, crack. Instead of the magic being dispersed, this wide scale barrier's entire magical energy was somehow absorbed by this black sword. Gr ra 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 ra. The goat headed giant was somehow surprised at this new development, and before it could come up with a new plan, I moved like a tornado right before attacking him to increase my striking power and made a clean neck cut severing its head from the rest of the body. In an instant its body fell and was devoured by my black K threads. It's his fault to entirely depend on its defenses, though. It might have actually been impossible if I did not have any other means. As for the swords, it feels awesome. You have leveled up. You have reached level 13. Acquired barrier magic. White strings again, emerged from my body and I was slowly engulfed by it till I was finally deep asleep. After 10 days, 93, I woke up from my deep sleep, seeing the two swords still stuck between my hands, it made me happy. After all these are my first possessions in this world, they belonged only to me. Hey, 
Now I can actually see its complete description. I had now decided to go down to the next floor, so the first thought that came in my mind was to where put these swords. Usually you have a scabbard, but I was not given one. While thinking, as if my hands moved on its own, I cleanly swiped them near my waist and two empty metal hollow appeared out of nowhere. While the black sword went inside a red scabbard, the white sword went inside a blue scabbard. These red and blue metal shells had an ornamental design to it, with similar yet different carvings on them than the sword. Even these scabbards have a skill of their own. I wonder what else these swords can do. After I thoroughly checked their description, the scabbards along with their respective swords disappeared. I panicked, and just when I thought of them returning back, they suddenly appeared. That's a nice trick to fool my enemy of not having a weapon on me. Also, this way I could carry around my sword anywhere. My swords, they think so much about me. Now I can forever be with them. I was just too deeply attached to them. I headed down to floor 57 and my next opponent was some kind of bug monster. Since they were large in number almost counting till thousand, I decided to use my simple normal easy going, mob killer spell dash. 94. Absolute zero. I turned the entire floor into ice, and using gravity magic converted them to fine powder. That's just too easy. I thought and headed down to the next floor. Monster Diary. Aries. Catastrophe class monster. Name. Avium. Age. Dash. Race. Aries primordial. Level. 7000. HP. 80,000. MP. 80,000. SP. 80,000. Skills. Dark Matter Magic LV7, Indestructible Shield, Diamond Skin, Dantomite Scales, Finder Sense, Titles, Inviolators, Dante, 95, Status Window, The Dual Blade of Dawn and Dusk, White and Black Swords, Skills, Absolute Magic Control, Skill Description, Allows the user, to change the laws of magic up to a certain extent, the Black Sword devours all kinds of magic without exception. The White Sword has the ability to transmit this magic and also copy the spell signature and recreate it for the user. Weapon Description Level Authority Not Reached Scabbards of Rubrum and Kerulium Skill Description The Red Scabbard provides body temperature maintenance in all situation and divine fire magic control. The Blue Scabbard provides special healing abilities and divine ice magic control. 96 Status Window Name Dash, age, 7 months, race, human, level, 13, HP, ERR, MP, ERR, SP, ERR, unique skill, all seeing eyes of the gods first form, eye of investigation second form, kinetic eye third form, eye of adrana fourth form, eye of soul fifth form, equivalent exchange, skills, glutton ELV8 mystical poison magic, sage of advanced fire magic, Sage of Advanced Water Magic, Sage of Advanced Wood Magic, Sage of Advanced Wind Magic, Divine Mystic Thread Magic, Advanced Sun Magic, Sage of Advanced Space Time Magic, Sage of Advanced Ice Magic, Sage of Divine Light, Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Barrier Magic LV4, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless, 97, Floor, 58, This new floor was a huge deep forest, the trees were not that big, but were laden with green trees, had thick branches and vines wrapped along them, the shade was too dark. That is why the color of the grass was yellow and was stiff when touched. Even walking on them creates a crackling sound. Whoosh. Something came flying at me, but even with my magic sense I was not able to completely avoid it. I took out the arrow that had gone halfway through my left hand. Fortunately it was directly aimed at my heart, but they failed. I sensed the presence of an enemy but it soon disappeared after the launch. The arrow actually seems to be made of magetite ore and the place is loaded with it. Though these simple attacks can only inflict pain, but cannot cause me any damage. So it's fine. The grass seems to be a part of their strategy. So instead of walking I will try to fly a bit above the ground, much like hovering. Or, you can even call it walking on air. Burning the forest is an option. 
but I want to give them a payback for hurting me. I am gonna make them regret for choosing me as a free target, but how do I do it without knowing their location? They have a skill, which can even escape my advanced magic senses. That means they are not using magic. So the solution is I should also stop thinking of using magic. I called forth my swords and unsheathed them. And holding them in my hands, I swinged the black sword and with the sword pressure chopped down an entire section of the forest. 98. I detect some movements. Over there. Are you hiding? I swinged my white sword and chopped down another section of the forest to my left, where I detected motion. But I don't think I got any. They are too quick on their feet. I flipped to my right and dodged an arrow, which completely pierced through the hardened ground. They have finally started moving. Seeing that I am chopping down the forest and they are no more in the mood to play around. Now several arrows came flying in my direction from all directions. While I tried dodging those coming from my back, I used my swords to cut down those coming from front. By this I was able to confirm 20 enemies in my vicinity. Even though I did my best, some of them still got me and I was impaled behind my right leg. I still can't move my legs freely, and even with my skills I cannot keep up with my untrained body. These hunters conceal themselves in the deep forest, and from cover use bows to take down their prey. To locate these hunters without magic sense, I instead used my analysis skills heightened my concentration to calculate the enemy's direction and distance from the force and angle of those flying arrows. I swung my blade aiming at that place, where the monster was supposed to be, and with a single hit two monsters fell down from the trees, their body chopped in half with the wind cutter I drew from the swords. They were like apes with long hairs, two large bows and several arrows packed at their back. Even if the arrows are poisoned, I am almost immortal. I guess so. So underhanded trick like poisons do not affect me. Now since their trick was revealed, all I need to do is repeat and repeat. Hence I learned to trace back the projectile's source, improve my 99 accuracy and several other points. One can even call me fastidious by nature. It was a fun lesson. After wiping all 20 of them, I decided to head to the next floor soon after, while walking through mid-forest. In that moment blood spurted out through six points of my body, in my right thigh, one near chest, and two in each hand. Ah! I cried loudly in pain. Without wasting any time, I casted, Divine Heal, which swiftly eased the pain. Six arrows fell out of my body. They were a bit larger and much sharper than the previous arrows. But where did they come from? Until the moment they hit me. They were not there. I thought I took out all of them. Even though six arrows were launched I detected one single enemy. Could it be that they had a leader, who was hiding up till now? This makes things more interesting, because he has literally pissed me off. But I don't know how this one plays. There is only one way to find out. I came in the open and the same thing happened. Five arrows pierced through me again, but I spinned around like a top and dodged the last one. But it still hurts a lot. Till I use my divine heal spell, the pain doesn't go. But I had got used to this pain. It's nothing in comparison to the mental scars I had back on Earth. They were permanent and I think even now I'm afraid of the outside world. But this pain is just momentarily. I can face it, even though it hurts. I will suffer till the end until in that process I kill that monster. Since the arrows are visible until the moment they hit me. I cannot trace back its location from where it was launched. He is fast and can shoot several arrows from different nearby direction. That means he has some 100 kind of short range transportation skill too. What a bothersome opponent I can't even evade or counterattack properly. I could only call it spiteful, seeing my blood soaked hands and body parts. I was being hunted and yet I could not come up with a plan. While arrows had been driven through every part of my arms and legs, none had pierced my vitals. I was accumulating pain, just by standing there, barely able to somehow predict and block the invisible arrows. One would say I was being tormented as a prey by my hunter for his pleasure, but truly, it felt so good. I was still standing firmly, holding my own ground I was learning. It was slow. The process could be said to be flawed and yet I knew that I was almost there. Step by step dot I was reaching my goal, 
The reason I have been fighting for became much more clearer to me. My fighting condition was finally reaching its zenith. It was still too early, much too early, to give up. There was still something to try. If I was defeated while using all my power, I could recover from my injuries and fight again, so I still need to do something. I kept on concentrating, the movement in air currents, and the changes which each of my strike create not only in my surrounding but within myself. I was trying to not go deep inside the forest, but deep inside my consciousness. From my flesh, from my blood and from every single cell of my being, I gathered the sudden outburst force and ignited it all in a single flash. My body was now shining in both of a black and white light, which was brightly reflected in my swords. Of the arrow, there was nothing that could be seen, nothing that could be heard, so rather than trying to aim for the arrow, I wanted to know more about the enemy, his thoughts his way of fighting, his movements, his 101 breathing pattern. In all I was searching for his essence of life, his being, his origin. I needed to find his breath of life. I closed my eyes, the world before me became colorless. The green leaves vanished. The ground was gone. The air was concealed and all noises had died out. I saw two circles, much like spherical balls, a huge colorless sphere in between my chest and a small blue colored sphere, hundred meters away at an angle of forty degree was levitating. Without any hesitation, I lifted my sword and rushed in that direction. I was moving forward, striking down hundreds of arrows that came flying towards me. I was able to see them, white hazy lines as they did appear to me in my dark world. I could see them and end them at the same time. The game is over. Within two seconds I took a launching jump forward and my black sword pierced straight through that sphere. Crack. Kuaak I heard a loud noise. Someone was suffering from an excruciating pain on the verge of dying. The orb shattered into pieces and then, the black and white world in which I have been living in became once more colorful. A giant ape-like monster was being engulfed in my black threads and once again I was able to grow in my own way. I received several injuries got hurt several times, screamed in pain but the things I had learned here was just worth it and irreplaceable. 102. Monster Diary Taranman SS Class Monster Name Peringans Age 165 years Race Taranman Tribe Level 5000 HP 40,000 MP 50,000 SP 80,000 Skills Dark Magic LV5 Area Invisibility, Perfect AIM, Space Transfer, Wood Magic LV6, Titles, Marksman, Sagittar 103, On Floor 59, I came in contact with a huge, wavering blank translucent blue slime monster. I really don't know what it does, except for it was blocking the way to the next entrance and whatever it touched they melted away. So I just used my black flames and waited. Black Flare The idea behind these flames is that the fuel which it burns is on magic itself, the magic of my enemy, so it can be said to be eternal unless my opponent gets rid of all the magic in his body, but even that would be useless, because then I would supply the flames with my own magic particles and the body weakened without magic would be more vulnerable. Oh, the slime is already reduced to ashes though it took quite a while and the stench is not so good either so I will be leaving Mr. Slimy. 104 Floor 60 Is this for real? The most awaited and cliched scene of a fantasy movie. I couldn't hold back my excitement with the exciting things happening around me lately. A long, serpentine neck, a crest of spurs on his head like a crown, a crocodilian facade. A compact torso with a streamlined shape, spines and spikes along his back and the back of his neck, stocky hind legs, a very long tail, covered in dark red scales which turn golden on his underside, and gleaming, orange-yellow eyes colored like fire, with slit pupils which possess an intricate, keyhole-like shape. If you still don't understand then I am referring to the most famous, extraordinarily super-powerful and rare breed monster Dash Dragoness. They exist for real after all, but the most interesting part was that, the dragon was still asleep on a huge pile of gold coins. Is that actual gold? So is this dragon some sort of collector or what? But for some reason I did not want to fight the dragon. Just look at its size, 
I am unable to properly see his hind side and I doubt whether or not even my magic can cover it completely. My swords are too small to even match the nail of its pinky toe. Just let the animal sleep Saki, and quietly leave. Let him have his gold and rest. Money is the pursuit of the foolish and greedy kingsman. Quietly, step dot dot step. R well he is a deep, resonant voice with a thundering roar. He then rolled his gigantic eyes and spots me in a flash. 105. I clenched my hands and turned around in disappointment. Just in case. I jumped almost high enough to eclipse the dragon's eyes, and brandished my dual blades in front of him. Wait. Don't get the wrong idea that I was the one to start a fight. I did not jump to taunt him. I am not that kind of person whom will see asking for trouble. But the jump was to dodge the tail swipe it launched at me as a preemptive strike. The jump just happened to be extraordinarily spectacular. It rose up from his slumber, like a naughty baby who was just about to throw a tantrum for not any noteworthy reason at all. As the lizard beast drew closer, its daunting shape cast a shadow across the entire floor. It was as though night fell on the ground, even though the magitite cluster hanging couldn't have been and why more brighter. They were loaded with magic particles radiated from this dragon which was more than enough to give an introduction to its tremendous and magnificent strength. My body didn't freeze. By now I had learned the way around to fight and crush big guys like him. I just need to play around with it, know its weak points and exploit it till I can deal a final blow to it. What mattered now was whether I could successfully defend against the dragon's attack or not. It opened its gigantic mouth and I could feel the destructive magic power that gathered before rapidly beaming out. Soon afterward, the high-intensity heat wave shot out from the dragons. Boom! The explosion was heard loud and clear. The ground was almost charred, to the extent that nothing was left to see. The wave force was extraordinary and just standing there and doing nothing could have been the only thing I was able to do. 106. I was just amazed to see the dragon stand on four legs and its huge wings that spanned across the entire floor and just a single small flap of it caused ripples in the air to leave scratch marks on the walls. Another breath attack was incoming. Black flare. My black flames totally countered its reddish flames, except for that his flames were widespread and so formed small fire storms on the floor. The temperature of the room was drastically increasing, making me feel uncomfortable. Absolute zero freezing started from its head, and I thought it was going to be a success, but it stopped soon after the freezing stopped at its neck. I could see it raising its temperature to thousands of degrees Celsius just to counteract my freezing. Maybe the fact that the inner parts of dragon are sensitive to heat is a lie after all. The inside might be even more resilient to it. By the time the dragon was involved in its own tactics to undo the spell I had casted on it, I went running around, trying to dodge the small fire projectiles, scales on fire being launched from its body looked like a meteor fault to me. Just that when it hits you, you die. I put all of my physical strength into my hands, twisted my wrist as if unlocking a door. I tried to slash through one of its legs. Its body came rumbling down to the one side. My black sword cut through it like butter. I continued my slice attacks on its body, while all it could do was wag its tail to shoo me off. But his attempt did not go too well. I was almost half done with his stomach, though. My blades did not look that sharp but they easily cut through anything. Now that I remember that even the all-cutting sword, a size, could never cut through my sword, but the opposite did happen. 107. I knew I could always count on my swords. They are super strong after all. K screech. Suddenly, I saw him converging vast amount of magic at a single point inside its body. This does not look good. Saying this I leapt backward. The whole body of the dragon shinned brightly with a purple light to even phase my visions for a second there. It had undergone an apocalyptic transformation. His whole body had crystallized. Its size got a bit smaller, but that only seemed to have increased its mobility. Two long red horns had sprouted out of his head. This dragon was indeed fearsome. Even after taking such extreme damage, it was not only fully healed but had gotten extra strong and powerful than before. The dragon's surroundings began to vibrate. An enormous power began to concentrate in its mouth. A mighty flame with the power to melt mountains and destroy anything in its way began to arrange itself. 
It flapped its wings and hundreds of flaming rocks from the ceiling fell down on the ground, completely obliterating and changing the terrain on which we had been fighting. Kaboom! Another torrent of hellfire approached me, but I just swinged my swords diagonally and absorbed the magic of the fire spell completely. I wanted to end this quickly, but the dragon's regenerative ability is even greater than mine. Though its fire is super strong it stands no chance against my swords. Now when I see its appearance after the smoke cleared and the fine grey ash drifted away, it's quite intimidating. It reminds me of a famous dialogue from a movie I saw once. 108. I am fire. I am death. I would love him to speak those words once, but that's never going to happen. New word dash greater than language issues. All I need to do is find a way to destroy its huge body in a flash. That's quite a challenge. But I have been doing this all along, so I will be able to come up with something. I just kept running around the walls, jumping from one side to another, and slashing through its body, trying to discover its weak points, the thickness of its skin, almost impenetrable. While it was difficult to dodge its wild spread flames, which caused me decent burns, I kept on using healing magic repetitively. It's no good. There don't seem to appear any weakness at all as if he was made to be invincible. No, there should be a way. If I don't find a way I will die here. If I don't find a way then I won't be able to ever see again Athena. I have to. I just need to remember the things I had used from before. To use my magic and swords together. To create an ultimate attack. To take down this ever invincible opponent. Barrier magic. The barrier magic I was using is quite of a different nature from the goat monster. I had made it to match my own pace, ideas and thought process. Even though it's a barrier, I am going to use it for attack. A repetitive successive attack. So fast that even the dragon's supreme healing ability won't be able to keep up. Haha <laughs> I can feel the chills just by thinking of this. But whether it will work or not it all depends on my eyes abilities. I used Eye of Adrana to increase the weight of the dragon several times, as far as I could go. Its wings came crashing down its sides, like dropping sails of a ship. Its tail stopped wagging. It was confused, but it did not panic and continued with its fire rays. Even though I am doing my best to dodge or sometime absorb its attack I get burnt here and 109 there, but I am enjoying this pain now. For some reason I think that since I am inflicting pain to the monster, it serves me right to suffer a bit myself. Even though I will be healed and do my best to emerge victorious, I wanted to keep on going. I was feeling alone again. The only one to accompany me are the monsters. And all they wanted to do was kill each other. I still do not understand why I was born here. A person like me who hated violence in a previous life would herself end up becoming indulged in this killing game. I wanted to play with the monsters. They were my only salvation. To rid me of the fear of being alone. Even though at the end they die, I will just find a new one to play with again. Kewak. I looked at my black sword and its color was getting deeper and deeper. I realized something very wrong was happening to me. My head was not in the right place. I had not given up yet. Barrier deployment was now complete. Several large windshield in form of a half sphere appeared across the floor surrounding the dragon completely. The important thing was I would my equivalent exchange succeeded in making a kind of barrier that can reflect all magic. Actually it first absorbs the magic and simultaneously reflects it back and the efficiency is 100%. It's an ideal case scenario. The dragon seems to have understood what I was doing, so it tried to use its physical strength to break through. Not gonna happen. Absolute zero. 110. This time I completely froze its four legs and wings. Even though it won't be for long before he breaks through, it's more than enough time for me. Now time to make myself lighter and turn the area inside the barrier into zero gravity space. The dragon won't have any problem since its legs are tied to the ground with ice vac 2 at absolute zero temperature, so no movement is possible in that state. I held on to one barrier plate, and made a quick dash to another. I charged both of my swords with magical power and sharpened my concentration just like I did previously. Even though I don't think I can reach that efficiency like the last time, because I am too exhausted from the prolonged fight and a little excited at the same time, to see whether this attack will work or not. Faster, faster, 
more faster dot it's not enough yet I wanted to move my body as freely as I could since I was young after the road accident I lost my memories I continued to develop as a weak kid I used to get ill pretty soon so I did less physical work I was the slowest runner in the entire school and even the middle school kids ran faster than me people always used to make fun of my physical fitness but I never paid any heed to them it did bother me but I didn't know what to do about it. But in this world I was blessed with the same body, but with a superhuman constitution, a body that can never get weak, ill or die out easily. I could jump as high as I could, walk as far as I wanted to go, run as fast as the wind. No one was there to stop me. Even though I would fall and roll over the ground, I wanted to get back right up and continue running. 111, 112, running at a speed faster than the air. It feels so good, moving at a speed greater than sound. I could hear boom, sound like jets being released from my legs as I propelled through midair. It made me look so free, independent of others, no one to stop me or remind me of my limits. I was boundless. I wonder what will happen if I run faster, faster than sound. Then what comes next? Light. I wanted to be light. Light that vanquishes darkness maybe that will help me to get rid of my loneliness. Maybe I will find my answers of why was I born here. I was now continuously jumping from one barrier plate to another, charging my swords still with magic power. They were glowing more than they ever had. No matter how much magic power I poured in they accepted it all. Without any hesitation. They don't doubt me. They truly are my swords. I would never need any weapon or help from someone beside them. These swords, are my strength until I have them in my possession, I cannot be defeated. I had finally achieved it, I don't know if it is exactly what I think it is. But I could see that time had almost frozen in front of me. I was moving faster more than anything, faster than the information particles could carry themselves. I was at an infinite acceleration, because of zero gravity, friction was almost tending to zero. So, even for indefinitely and differentiable period of time, the laws of nature were broken. With my divine healing spell continuously cast on me I can escape the harm my body receives from particle acceleration heat generated and the friction that exists at an atomic level. Also by making myself weightless I could maintain my revolving speed without any problem by maintaining a perfect balance between centrifugal and centripetal force. Honestly I was using the application of a cyclotron a device to achieve high speed charged particle. Even though it's used for 113, acceleration of heavier subatomic particle like proton, I went and made myself weightless. By doing so every time I make the centripetal force go beyond the centrifugal force, I will be pulled in. Even a slight difference will bring a tremendous change. An unprecedented magnitude of force will be created beyond anyone's expectation, which surpassed FN mine. Would you look at that? The thin thread like white light jumping from one barrier plate to another. Just like needles sewing through even the sturdiest parts of the dragon's body. The white light impaled through the dragon in and out almost immediately, without break. It almost seemed unstoppable. The dragon bellowed, shrieked and screamed. But the white light did not flicker, it kept on piercing through the dragon's body until it was cut down to millions of pieces. The white light was me spinning around with my hands holding the swords stretched as far as they could and cutting through the dragon's body, like a pencil draws line on a fresh white paper. The pieces of the dragon which fell on the ground were engulfed by my black webs. You have leveled up. You have reached LV-14. All seeing eyes of the gods activated. Sixth form, eye of being. Ten days later. 114. When I opened my eyes, I realized that my hairs had grown even longer than before. But they are so smooth and beautiful that I did not want to cut them. Also they don't get in the way of fighting so it's fine. I also unlocked a new form of all seeing eyes of the gods. I wanted to try it out as soon as I can because of the special spell it came within the working department of this eye is super special. So I directly headed to floor 61 after I had put all the gold coins and other jewels, precious looking shining stones in my dimensional storage. There were an awful lot of them. I wonder how much it's worth in the outside world would be. Wait what was the dragon? 
actually doing with the gold in the first place and exactly what it was protecting if it could not spend its gold here on daily commodities. It's not like a dragon as violent as that would be allowed in a village to buy milk, fruits and meat from a store, or do they? 115. Monster Diary. Dragon Lord. World Disaster Monster. Name. Ignis Dominus. Age. Dash. Race. Dragon Monarch. Level. 8000. HP. 99999. MP. 99999. SP. 99999 Skills Advanced Fire Magic Hell Flame Flare Ultra Fast Regeneration Stampede Self Bomb Titles Greatest of Calamities Gold Digger Lazar 116 Status Window Name Dash Age 8 Months Race Human Level 14 HP ERR MP ERR SP ERR Unique Skill All Seeing Eyes of the Gods First Form Eye of Investigation Second Form Kinetic Eye Third Form Eye of Adrana Fourth Form Eye of Soul Fifth Form Equivalent Exchange Sixth Form Eye of Being Skills Glutton ELV9 Mystical Poison Magic Sage of Advanced Fire Magic Sage of Advanced Water Magic Sage of Advanced Wood Magic Sage of Advanced Wind Magic Divine Mystic Thread Magic Advanced Sun Magic, Sage of Advanced Space Time Magic, Sage of Advanced Ice Magic, Sage of Divine Light, Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Barrier Magic LV6, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality. Merciless 117 Sixth form Eye of being A skill that allows the user to analyze, study and alter the living and non-living, biotic and abiotic factors of nature on a cellular or molecular level. Special skill Dismantle Ultimate cooking Dismantle Dash allows you to assemble or dissemble the constitution of anything. Applies to both living and non-living. Given that the life and decompensated is not above the threshold, also there are certain limitations to these abilities. Ultimate cooking, dash allows you to mix or compose more than one items, magic power, soul energy or life force in any proportion. However compatibility of polar opposite energies should be kept in mind. 118, floor, 61. I met a huge group of barbaric, strong looking red ogres with wings. They had weapons made of magitite or, swords, maces, spears and crossbows. This time I wanted to use the sixth form of my all-seeing eyes of the gods. As those ogres-like creatures started running towards me brandishing their weapons, I fixed my eyes on them and imagined how the spell would work. Dismantle. My eyes started glowing deep red, and a sensation of craving and unsatisfaction filled my mind in a splattering of blood. One of the ogres changed into a mess of parts without any resemblance to its original shape. I saw the whole process, I imagined the ogre to be cut into several pieces from different portions, but all that happened was, it burst from inside, from the center, blood expanded, flesh ripped off on its own and the body burst in a flip second. Blood splattered, all across the ground. It was unsightly. And yet I was focusing on how the flesh was broken down instead of actually being cut, its molecules just separated apart, and since I did not consider the stability of its structure and release of the latent magical energy associated with the life force of the monster, the structure collapsed. Now that I knew how the spell worked, all I needed to do was practice, fix my gaze on my enemy and just concentrate on severing the cells in a fixed array while seeing that the magical energy or other the life force of the being released is contained properly. So for that purpose I deployed a small scale barrier ability. 119. The ground was stained red with blood, unsightly disfigured bodies vanished in front of my eyes engulfed with my black webs. I would not call myself successful. But now I was able to chop off the big body parts, like severing an arm or a leg from the body. Most of the ogres tried to run or fly away, seeing there was no chance defeating me. But nothing could escape my eyes. Either I dismantled their legs or wings to stop them from escaping. 
Now I was trying to use it on small body parts like fingers, eyes or internal body parts like heart. Just then I felt a deep pain inside my heart and then my eyes opened again of what I had been doing up till now. In a way I was torturing the ogres to death, using them as experimental subjects for my magic craft. Is this what they call an evil mage? Suddenly the deep cries and screams of some of the half-alive ogres could be heard. Just what I had been doing, as if without realizing it something had taken over my mind. I was having fun while killing them. But wasn't it alright, in whatever way I kill them? After all they are monsters, and they are the first ones to attack me. So they shouldn't complain. But isn't it proper to end someone's life so immediately if they are under pain? Even I won't like myself to be tortured. Isn't it Sammy as bullying? Bad memories from my school and home engulfed my brain processing and hampered my thinking, as if there was a huge cavity in my brain. My eyes started burning and glowing even brighter and brighter. The red color was somehow turning reddish black. 120. I tried to keep screaming as loudly as I could. But no one heard me. No one came to comfort me. I was alone. Someone is approaching me. I looked at them. I saw them burst open form inside and something splatter all around even on my face. It was a hot sensation. My eyes were stained even redder with the blood all around. My white dress also had turned red like a tomato. Only my hairs remained white and my hands cleaned. I was afraid. I was afraid. To even look at myself. What if I end up killing myself? My swords. Where are they? Saying that I took hold of them. And started walking towards the gateway. I wanted to run. I don't know what was happening to me. But it was not me. I cannot think properly like this. Everything was turning round and round inside my head. My skin color was getting paler. I don't even know what kind of expression I am making on my face right now. I am too afraid to look at myself or even think about it. I want to leave this labyrinth. The atmosphere is not good. I cannot breathe properly. I started walking straight. I did not go astray from my path. I didn't know what followed anymore. All I could remember was I crossed through each floor, either slashing through my enemies or using my destructive magic or my evil red eyes to kill them. All I could think of them was to disappear. They were a threat to me. That's what I thought. But I had realized by now that it was just as I used to say. It's a game to me. The real threat to them was me. I was to blame for enjoying this. 121. Carnage. I had become a mass murder. I was to blame for this meaningless bloodshed. If I wanted then I could just escape from floor to floor without killing them. But I was way over my head, too stubborn and fixated on the idea of survival. It was never to become the strongest, but to remain weak and hide yourself to avoid danger. But that's what I did in my previous world and yet suffered. So I wanted a change. I thought here I could be strong, prove myself that I could change. But I think I changed a lot, just too much. What will Goddess Athena think if she hears or sees this massacre? This bloodbath I took every day. Even their corpses disappear. Do I eat them? Because in actuality I never felt hungry down here. I don't know anymore. All I did was kill and kill. Even now I haven't stopped and I was already on floor 79. I had reached level 19 and almost a year has passed since I was born here. For a year I had been killing monsters. Non-stop. Day after day. Either I killed them or they would have killed me. I didn't know whether someone is even looking for me or not in the outside world. Has Lady Athena given up on me? No she couldn't. I am sure of it. That's why I have to hurry up and return to by her side. Because that's what we promised. And promises should be kept. I rotated my head and glanced over the entire floor. It was filled with golem like monsters. Just that each of them was as huge as a truck. Dismantle. In a flash, endless stream of blood flowed and was splashed everywhere on the walls, ground and on me. I didn't even bother to clean myself anymore. Except for the instance when I use Divin Heal. Everything. 122. Gets fixed on its own. Only if it could fix me too. Was I now broken somehow? I wanted to help people in this new world, save someone and become a hero. Isn't it everybody's dream to gain recognition from people you love? But now that I am broken, no one will need me anymore. Am I of no use anymore? I was helpless and useless. I had turned back into a machine. The pain in my heart that started had instead of subsiding kept on growing. The wound was getting deeper and deeper. 
I was falling into the pit again, the grip over myself kept on loosening, I did not want anyone to see my like this, especially not Lady Athena, with the last monster dispatched, I went down the next floor, I was compelled to think that I was no longer myself anymore and just accept my doomed fate. 123 Floor 80 This was quite an odd looking floor, a huge strong built gate made purely of magetite was standing far off, and at the entrance of the gate stood a person holding a broad long sword in his hand supported over his right shoulder, he wore a calm expression on his face, I was ready to be attacked but then there was no movement from him. Instead of rushing to attack me unlike other monsters, he was continuously staring at me in disdain. He also looked confused. Before then I soon realized that instead of a monster he was a person. He appeared to be a muscular and handsome young man with black eyes, sharp facial features, and neat black hairs, while two small horns were projecting like a crown on his head. They actually made him look more confident in his unusual black attire. He wore a long black coat which looked sturdy like an armor and was filled with a compact magic formation. Maybe it actually is an armor, but enforced by magic, is it same with my long white frock? True demon lord. I was only able to mutter up these words. Somehow a light shined in my eyes. He was really very strong. Level so high that no monster up till now were able to match him. He was reeking with magical powers and the way he carried his sword confirmed him to be a master swordsman. But I was feeling a bit off. No something was driving me in crazy. Why won't he just attack me? Until now, the moment I enter a floor I am welcomed with magical attacks, arrows or beasts trying to ravage me with their claws. Then why won't he attack me like he others did? 124 isn't the demon lord usually the guy who causes the most trouble in the world? If I defeat him here, isn't that considered equivalent to saving the world or at least a huge contribution will be made by me? So isn't it okay to attack him? I need to kill him right here. If I am able to do so, then this world will be a bit safer for me. 125 Status Window Name, Xyla Nashborn Age, 230 years Race, Demon Level, 99,940 HP, 1,90,000 MP, 2,00,000 SP, 1,50,000 Unique Skill, Magic Dispersion Skills, Fire Magic LV10, Water Magic LV8, Wind Magic LV9, Space Time Magic LV8, Ice Magic LV9, Earth Magic LV9 Gravity Magic LV8, Immunity Body Strengthening LV10, Body Durability LV10, Magic Resistance, Magic Authority, Dark Matter Magic LV10, Lightning Magic LV8, Ultra Self Regeneration, Abnormal Status Resistance, Appraisal LV10, Title, True Demon Lord, Merciless, Magic Emperor, Chaos Alchemist. God Slayer 126 127 Chapter 4 Transpiring Conspiracies On the Black Raven Throne Zero sat as usual with a dismal look on his face, which made him look like he was staring right at another world governed over by his own rules. The room was huge and a thousand people could easily attend to his far-gone futuristic thoughts and heavy orders but this time around there were only eleven black mist shadows shriveling in front of the large throne. I am glad to inform you that Vertigo has succeeded in her mission. The uneasy feeling I had from the Tathire Labyrinth is now long gone, but unfortunately my link to her has been cut off too. He said these words as if his subordinate was a plaything who went to fetch him a candy but has still not returned after the sun has set. Even though she completed the mission, she had proved to be weak. I already knew it. She did not have the strength to see our master's great plans bear fruits of ruling over the entire world. 128. Among the apostles she was only the tenth spot. Since I am eleven does that means I get to be tenth now? Know your place. As two commands none shall change their position. Several hushed voices went around after master's declaration. Truth being told they knew that Vertigo was dead but they had no attachment to her in any way, not an ounce of sympathy, but words that exploited her absence. Since the twelve apostles are blood-bound subordinate to zero, that means a severed link is a definite evidence of death, 
but losing a single pawn in the game had no effect in the total overwhelming power of his army's collection. Tell me how the devil generals are doing. Joker, Akiko Totsuka, and Kachuragi as you commanded have headed to take control over the Norden Sea. The plan was to take control over all the trade routes in the Norden Sea mostly in Mid-North, which connected the Demon Continent and the Human Continent Sea trading routes. Some of the species like Beastmen and Delves had started creating friendly relationships with human and strengthening their holds by creating good trade relationships. If this continues then they won't be able to take the advantage they had when these species were isolated from the world. Knowledge gained by the enemy before us will only prove to be fatal for our future plans. So, it was decided that Totsuka and Kajuragi will raise pirates on this sea and lead them to create chaos and hinder the trading port cities in amassing wealth. And what about the other reincarnates? 129, just as you said. They started acting all afraid and taking precautions to protect their own life. It won't be long before your fear would drive them mad and at the end they would choose to side with you. Ha! Huh? Give them a show of our power and make them submerge as deep as they could in lust of obtaining true wisdom of this world and strength my dreams can bestow upon them. Make sure that none of them tries to be funny and if you find them a bit hesitating, make them disappear. Yes master. Your command will be our prime action. Now five, I think I will need your help as a monster tamer to prepare a gift for the elves. A gift for those sea long-eared monkeys dwelling below the trees. I will be more than happy to. Other ten black fogs disappeared while out of the fog at the fifth a very dark man appeared. His skin appeared to be tanned, wearing black armor and horns. Tucking out of his head he had a grisly look on his face. As if he found everything distasteful in this world. Zero rose up from his seat and walked to this subordinate of his when they suddenly vanished into a dark vortex. 130. Underground chambers. Chap, chap, drip, drip. Two unknown people suddenly reeled out of nowhere and created ripples in the ever stood stagnant water, as they walked through a dark foyer, which appeared to be lengthier than expected. The dripping of water created a ghastly silent environment. These are the times where an observer thinks would be a perfect place for a mad scientist's horrible research over creating a medicine to make eternal life out of human bones or the dwelling of ghosts. But apparently at the end of foyer a huge chamber covered by an exceptionally large oval dome was introduced to these two gentlemen. Countless beings in dark robes were loudly chanting some words from the forbidden summoning grimoire and in between them was drawn a complicated magical circle which expands large enough to construct another castle over it. Born in darkness, trapped in eternal abyss, come forth to us, sever all the guilty chains, and present yourself in full glory. The myth shall reawaken, and the legends replicate, pay heed to our calling. 131. Come forth the ruler of the cursed night sky, Araburas. At almost the same time thousands of listless empty bodies slumped on the ground. An invisible wave of myriad energy swept over the entire underground cave. Countless invisible wisp of mystical energy descended on the huge magic circle causing earthquakes of minor magnitude. However in the next few seconds everything quieted down as if nothing out of the ordinary happened. Even though everything looked the same, it was not the same thing anymore. From the fallen bodies magical energy started flowing and was being absorbed in the circle. The low-level water surface started rising up and at the same time turning red. The blood of the summoners was slowly being mixed into it. This is a small sacrifice, which we need to pay as the cost of preparing the gift. Doesn't matter master, these are just low-ranked devils. They were blessed to be sacrificed in our noble endeavors. This was how the conversation between the two gentlemen ended. The red water slowly started stirring in itself and being forcefully drained at the magical circle. A whirlpool formation took place around its core center and now the water level started descending. This blood mixed water was being sent to another dimension in exchange to draw out the ultimate power. One of the dragon gods, Araburas Gra'a 132. The air instantly froze and deep red light sprayed all across the room and out of the bottom of abyss emerged out a long mouth, then a huge body followed by a tail and appearance of two giant pair of wings. Clang, shank, clang, shank. Thick heavy chains rattled as they halted the movement of a mighty huge beast. Magnificent, 
Tis shall bring doom on those elves and suck dry the roots of the world tree. Master I will soon move on to training this lizard, but I have my doubts. Even though he is a dragon god, but the black emperor dragon who currently rules over all the dragons is the strongest dragon god. Will he allow our path to do as it pleases? I have already thought of it. So we will present our Aburas with another offering. A relic passed down since the Great Wars will surely suffice enough for him to defeat even the Black Emperor. Give eight the order to prepare the mortuous poison. While I shall resume to my duties, the day is not far when all our plans put together would end this shitty world and help us create a new one in its place. All for the hell and for those who were abandoned by the Divine. 133 Alice Hart, Goddess Athena Alice Hart Tump. After signing at the end of the request document I put the royal stamp of the royal Hart family. The crest consisted of shield half covered by a red cloak. It represented how the royal family was always prepared to protect the life of their people even if they have to bleed themselves to death in war. It was actually the crest designed by our great-great-grandfather who partook in the Great War and lead the people in this part of the continent to victory by saving all ordinary lives and homes of those who were to be burned in the flames of battlefield. Recently the monster outbreak in the northwestern region has spread to the populous region of the kingdom. If not stopped soon, then the arable land will turn into barren soil. There will be a huge loss of life and property. With the condition of the world deteriorating with frequent appearance of high-level dungeons, irregular pattern of monster outbreak and occurrences, sudden magical disasters, people are spending their lives in fear of their homes being snatched at any moment, while those in power move to safe and better facilitated locations. But the common masses have to suffer the wrath of the Mother Nature tyranny. This request was to the Bellator Guild, addressed to its guild leader Leo Luis, the strongest adventurer in the southern and mid part of the human continent. 134. Since the request is directly from the royal family of a kingdom, though our country being small, he has to accept this. His strength is needed along with our army forces combined to eradicate the widespread fear of monsters and to claim our land back. There are conflicts surrounding all around the world. The nobles are fighting among themselves, some aim for the throne, other plots with enemy nation, some double cross with their own country and enemy nations. Amidst all this corruption the general public or other commoners to speak of in this world suffers from immediate shortage of food and poverty. But the recent reports from the night shadows have been most concerning. First there was that suspicious gathering of reincarnates and gods which would have actually put them in a tight spot. No one wanted to reveal their plans or true powers and yet they still went with it. Then there is a sudden missing of one of the reincarnates bound to Aphrodite. It would have been another case if they went into hiding or on a secret mission, but it's as if their very existence has been erased, except me no one seems to remember them not even the people and family of their own country, the shadows who are keeping watch on them. Everyone has forgotten about those two, there are only two possibilities, they themselves did something to wipe everyone's memory or someone intentionally did it to hide their deeds. Either way, it must have been an exceptional artifact of sort, but it didn't affect me because I am primarily a god, I can't even ask other reincarnates for confirmation because of the bad taste in their mouth and are not so friendly relation with their god contracts. 135. Recently even they had started behaving irrational. Their suspectful behavior only shows that they are trying to protect themselves, but what could actually threaten those who are blessed by the gods in the first place? They are supposed to be the strongest. I need to watch over them for a bit longer to reach at a conclusion where all the pieces fit properly. Probably they do know how their fellow reincarnate went missing, I wonder, and I am even afraid to think about it. What if Saki too was caught up in something of this sort of existence eraser? Then I might be the only one who remembers hers. I removed the thought the very next instant. I will never be able to find a clue to where she is if I keep such a mindset, and I can still say that even when she is far, I can still feel her faint presence to be nearby, doing her best reaching out to me. I can't let it slip away again, or I will never be able to tell her the secret about me, which I have kept hidden from her until now. As a friend I wanted to tell her, but could not bring myself to. How could I tunish the happy time she was having in the divine realm? Alone I watched her suffer, 
struggle and do everything to live by in her past back on earth. No, matter how often she fell or be ridiculed in others eyes she did not lose to their words. She always did what she believed in. I always believed that growing up meant becoming a responsible person, but that was just a part of it. Now I know that I wanted to protect Saki in my own childish ways. To continue watch her laugh in the present and in the future. And the next time we meet I will be sure to tell her everything about me. That how she gave me the strength to face my deepest fears. I was 136. First reluctant with the idea to be a part of this reincarnation plan. But when I met her in person all my doubts had been washed away. Because I knew I was not the only one trying to conquer my past pains, cope up with present incompetence and ponder upon future prospects. 137. 138. Chapter 5. Should I die here? Then, promise me. Wait, a kid, at that too a small girl, was I wrong in my assessment? I was actually a moment ago freaked out by the surge in magical power in my vicinity, but there is only a single human girl of level 19. Wait isn't that just too weak, I mean a one year old kid is at least level 5. Then how did she even make it this far in the most dangerous labyrinth of this world? She is probably lost, I think I just heard her speak something. But, it seems that I cannot understand it, did humans come up with a new language? In the meantime we were spending our lives here. I think I am making the correct assumption, given that it has been more than 200 years I came in contact with any other human except my wife. So what? I too have a daughter, so I will help this girl in finding her way back to home safely. 139. I think it is possible that humans made settlement near the labyrinth and this girl just mistakenly walked in through the floors, while the other monsters did not notice her because of her low level. How cute and beautiful she is, and that red dress suits her along with her white hairs. Don't take me as a low-life pedophile. I was once a ruler of more than half the world after all, so I have a tendency to appreciate the beautiful things I find. Though the red stains on her cheeks and hands bothers me a bit dash, is that blood? It's just that I am a father, so I am concerned about another child's parents who might be searching for her non-stop in the woods, behind the house under the bed, on top of mountains or even inside the dumpsters. So the biggest dot dot question dot which comes in my mind dot is, how do I approach her? I now folded my hands and started giving it a deep thought while closing my eyes. There are two scenarios, I go near the girl and ask her name and make her feel comfortable around me, so that she can share with me the details of her situation. Second scenario, I go near her and seeing that I am a demon she faints. It won't be something new, after all I am the ex-true demon lord. Just the presence of my extraordinary magic powers makes people lose consciousness. But then there is the language problem. I am unable to understand her, but I don't know whether the opposite holds true or not. Dealing with kids is such a tough job. If I knew about something like this happening then I would have brought Caroline along with me. She is an XP right in handling kids. It's a shame being a demon lord and been bested in such a trivial thing. But I won't give up that easily. I will show you Carolyn, that I can do it too. Wait. W wait. I n all this thinking I forgot about the child. How can I make CKH a minor blunder? TCH gay. 140. I tried to open my eyes and spot the kid. Clang. With a metallic sound like a jet engine. My long sword hit another sword jet black in color. It felt like hitting a brick wall and the collision was explosive. I was tossed backward but a bit of fixing my body posture. I landed lightly on my feet and pulled back. That was scary. A moment later dot if be at then I had not reacted, and my head would be chopped off. Is she punishing me for ignoring her? I knew handling kids is difficult because they get annoyed easily. But did I really do something bad to make her go far enough to take my life? Things are much more serious than it seems. T here is more to it than meets the eye. How long has it been since I said those lines? I activated my appraisal. Her physical strength and speed was too abnormal back then. The sword felt weird too, as if my magic was being chipped off just by making a small contact with it. Is she really even a human? She doesn't appear to be just a one-year-old kid. Has the status window finally broken down? Is this some kind of system failure or error? Except for her HP, 
MP and SPI was able to see everything about her. She doesn't have a name. That is the first odd thing. Next is the skills she possess. There are no levels mentioned and what is a sage in the first place. Then a unique skill I had never heard of. Even her titles are a bit too off. How the hell did she end up with the merciless title? That's given to a person whose killing count has exceeded the system's threshold reading. My mind was screaming. My appraisal failed to work on the pair of swords she was holding now. Could it be that? 141. Finally the biggest doubt that I had. Her possessing all basic attributes of magic and wielding. Divine light magic and dark matter magic, is something that cannot exist simultaneously. After all these both attributes are completely conflicting. She is dangerous. But what exactly is someone like her here for? Even though she is a human, something is really wrong with her. She darted towards me at full speed again, striking down left with her black sword, which I blocked using my blade producing shock waves to leave dents on the ground, but her attack was twofold. Twisting her right arm she moved her white sword towards my unguarded torso, but the sword bounced off harmlessly in a circular fashion. Her expression changed to that of disagreement and contempt to see her sword blocked by the hilt of my sword. I used the slight gap between my hands to tilt the sword and stop her sword in its trajectory, but it seems that she was not the type to simply give up so soon. In that moment, with her slender body, she lifted her body upwards and jumped at my back and tried to kick me, but such kind of fighting techniques are no match for me. Though it might have worked on normal people because of her superior physical abilities, but someone like me could easily predict it with her body movements and I just drifted myself to my left. Her expression did not change, her eyes looked lifeless while she wore a small peculiar smile on her face. I who had spent most of my life on the battlefield could tell that that was the drive of ecstasy you get from fighting. But why is that kind of a person in front of my home? At least give me a proper reason. Usually in situations like inability to communicate. We used telepathy or rather thought communication, but I have been continuously trying to use it, and there have been no response. Either she does not know how to use it, or she is just too busy to respond in kind. 142. She again came gliding towards me without any hesitation and charged with quick strikes. I raised my sword and closed in the distance. Burst of sparks appeared forth, with each strike I managed to block, even though they were simple to look at. But her physical stats must have been beyond amazing to pull off more than hundreds of strikes in a mere single second or so. I had to keep on using my utmost just to block her. With her tiny size, it was easy for her to pull some small punches in between, or even teleport to my blind spots. A tenth of a second later, I let my guard down to take a small breath, and a punch landed in my abdomen. I was sent flying and directly hit the wall. I know. My bad. The dungeon walls are considered to be the strongest, and its durability is directly proportional to the strength of the monsters living there. They keep on receiving magical reinforcement power from the monsters themselves. World's most dangerous monsters dwelled in the darkness of this labyrinth, and yet her physical prowess and durability was beyond imagination for a tender-looking girl like her. The wall crumbled and the earth shook. It had been several years I have been punched by someone and sent flying off, except for Carolyn. Why am I even blushing? It's not that I enjoy being punched around by girls, but now even though she was just a one-year-old girl, which actually did not make any sense at all, I was now getting serious to fight. She again moved forward with her onslaught. Every time I notice, she somehow changes her attack pattern. After every contact we make, as if she is slowly analyzing me and refining her swordsmanship, creating a sword style in the middle of battlefield to match my own is really commendable and yet she is lacking. Swordsmanship is made up of heart, technique, and body. There won't be any real power in a sword if your heart wavers. Her looks, reactions, 143, and mind looks so composed and yet her heart where the true oath resides is so discomposed. Honestly. It has been too long that someone has kept me on my wit sense, but I need to end this quick, because this girl is going crazy. Until now her face seemed so lifeless, but now she was smiling and her eyes were glowing red. Somehow she too was enjoying it, maybe more than me. I would take that as a bad sign, but I was enjoying.
how things were just getting started, before I realized, my movements somehow had slowed down, and my body felt so heavy, the pressure on me seems to be increasing, for a moment I was perplexed, but I realized that she was using gravity magic, first her, invincible strength and now powerful chantless magic, she is not even using magic circles and yet it is too strong, even I cannot deny the fact, this gravity magic, had unordinary strength somehow, I needed to do something quick or I won't be able to move my body as I wanted to, I used flame magic, flare burst, but before the flames could reach her, she bounced back, as if she knew beforehand that I was going to use attack flame magic, so she has keen eyes, to even read magic flow inside one's body and her surroundings, things are getting dizzier, but my title of magic emperor is not just for show, I summon thousands of black mist arrows by fusing water magic and dark matter magic and simply launched them at her, at the same time I used earth magic to surround her and cut her escape route, finally I was preparing for a surprise attack just in case, 144, to my surprise, her two swords started glowing with a brilliant light, and in a matter of seconds her single strike from the black sword erased all of my attacks, that was not it, no something was surely amiss, but what, I looked at her white sword, which she swinged in my direction successively and those thousands of black arrows which I conjured were now aimed at me, impossible, that was all I could say, I had never seen anything like this before, Today has been full of surprises but this one completely weirded me out. She absorbed my magic and recreated it. Considering absorption, it is one of the ability that does more harm than good. Because if the concentration of the attribute magic does not fit with the absorber's magic constitution then it will slowly destroy its own body with the resulting uncontrolled chaotic energy. It's impossible for a person to absorb water magic if he doesn't have affinity for it and its difficulty rises with the composite magic I just used, and recreation in an instant totally surpasses my expertise, it's the ability of those swords I see, now, she charged at me again, while under the cover of those thousands of arrows, what a waste, saying that I launched my surprise attack at those barrage of arrows aiming at me, it was actually a windstorm spell but the special thing about it was that it could rip even the walls of this dungeon, that's just how high the wind pressure and the current of speed was, but suddenly even the windstorm had started acting suspiciously, the wind current inside the storm suddenly started changing its direction, 145, rotating in opposite direction, this time it was not the sword interfering, I sensed great magical power radiating from her glowing red eyes, interfering with the magic of the windstorm, every time I look at them a sense of fear crept even in my mind, those eyes were filled with violent emotions, eyes that had seen through the reality of this world, from the palm of the girl's hand a huge amount of dark matter magic leaked out and merged with my windstorm, the temperature inside the storm raged, it also contained fire magic, not only she converted my magic but instantly poured her own magic in it, I feel like I am losing my pride, I don't know what is the nature of this magic but taking it head on will be dangerous, so as a normal guy, I used water magic jet rays, to cool off the fire, but the black fire storm just grew in size and it even became much darker than before, as if it used my water magic as a fuel, for its own, I see I dig my own grave, maybe this is what they call losing your touch, when you keep living without fighting in here, there was no time dodging it, if I moved from my place and tried another thing then that girl would probably succeed in stabbing me, so I took half of the storm head on, my body was on fire and burning me in the black flames, so it really burns on magical power of the target instead of consuming the user's magical power, I have been counting on my magical reinforcement ability, but I don't think it will last a ny longer, the girl as usual continued striking with her sword, she was not there yet, but was making a great progress in changing her style to counter my own sword, the fire was not extinguished and now I had finally started accumulating damage, my movements were slowed down by her gravity magic, but I was still able to keep up, finally I interlocked her white sword between the hilt 146 and the blade of my long sword sword while I was holding her black sword barehanded, my palm was bleeding and the pressure she was exerting was super high, but for me they were not that difficult to manage, 
But then the unexpected happened. She let go of her black sword in a tenth of a second, using her white sword as an axle she twisted around her body, and clad her free hand in a sharp blue blazing light. She chopped at my arm and freed her sword. She then kicked me in my abdomen and sent me flying off again, while my body was still on fire. Somehow the black sword reappeared in her hand and she started running in my direction again. Finally, I rose up from my pathetic fallen position and took a concentrated stance. I was exhilarated. My arm grew back in a second. I clutched the handle of my sword. Magic dispersion. In a blink of an eye the black flames were extinguished like. You touch the wick of a candle and put out the flame. It is a unique skill, which I learned when I inherited the title of true demon lord. It allows me to destroy or completely disperse the magical constitution of any magic spell or accumulation. Before she could even start her strike rally. I swinged my sword at a speed that even she couldn't react and this time she was sent flying off. That strike might have even chopped down the mountains, but her body durability must have been maxed out to withstand it so easily. I clutched my hand, thinking that I had won. But I soon realized that I was actually in a way picking up on a small girl, an adult like me, who was almost 230 years old, was trying to mercilessly beat a one-year-old girl. 147 just what kind of situation I was set up to be in. If Caroline hears about this, then she will be making fun of me for the next 50 years of my life. My life was about to be ruined. Either I give up fighting and be called a coward for losing in a battle against a child or brutally defeat her and call it a win. I think I am going into depression. The road ahead sure was filled with ups and downs. But I gulped it down my throat, and pretended to not think about the circumstances that much. And no. I can't continue like this. Wait, my life is already over. She is not waking up. Could it be that she was knocked out unconscious? But suddenly there was a humongous surge in the magic particle in our surrounding. Someone was condensing and releasing an awful amount of magic. That is not me. I prepared myself for anything to come. Several spheres of different colors headed in my direction. I analyzed the type of magic and was mesmerized to see their composition. So beautiful. Fire element was profoundly mixed with water magic and they were in complete synergy. And so did the other magical spheres. But if I take a direct hit from these, then I would surely end up with sustainable amount of damage. So I again used magic dispersion. All of the spheres were flushed out. But one of them in that moment accelerated in my direction. It was a culmination of light and dark magic. This was something I did not expect hidden among them. These two were the kind of elements that couldn't be mixed and so no one person can wield both, not even gods themselves, except for almighty world god. Then how did she? I raised my sword horizontally, trying to slice off and guard myself at the same time. The pressure was overwhelming, and even though I was able to protect myself, the surroundings were completely scorched and charred, the floor was grumbling and so it might even collapse. With the amount of magical particles accumulating here, it can even lead to a magical disaster. That's what I feared about the most, right now. 148. I need to ask her to leave, or at least bind her somehow. I dashed towards her, in all those wake of explosion, maybe some kind of trap magic she set up in advance. I quickly made my way dodging all of those unique traps. They would have been highly effective against someone else since no kind of magic was involved, so I could only rely on my danger senses to detect them. I lifted my sword high, and tried to strike it down on her head, hoping that it would at least knock her unconscious, but she too was a stubborn one. Trying everything to do, to protect herself by either dodging, using ice magic or blocking it with her sword. For a moment I thought she was crying. Have I pushed her too far in the corner? I didn't mean to make her cry. But for now if we didn't stop here, the shock waves would surely bring the ceiling down. And my home on the other side of the gate would be destroyed. We can't have that happening. In that moment she again spoke something, and suddenly my hands froze up. It was not an ordinary kind of ice magic, but a very different one at that. Usually my strength would have been enough to break through. But as if everything in my hand... The life force, the magic power in it was frozen. If I don't stop this then my whole body would be frozen under its expanding effect. Magic dispersion. I used it for the third time, 
it was slowly taking a toll on me, using it on such kind of advanced spells I had never seen before and with such high magic accumulation was even tough for me, so in no way I was going easy on her now. She drifted back to the other side of the wall. Maybe she too was exhausted, after fighting for so long and using so many different kinds of magic continuously, and since most of them were ineffective against me, or could not harm me enough. She did not like it. 149. She again said something and finally, a green light appeared in between her hands which kept on growing. The magical density in that area was growing exponentially, without any regard of the natural surroundings. What is this brilliance? It scares me. I was baffled to see a different kind of magic. There was no attribute involved and yet magical powers from everywhere was continuously sucked in from the environment in which we had just been fighting now. If she continues then it will probably cause an explosion big enough to maybe destroy four to five floors at once. The intensity of light kept circulating in a small vortex, and even so she was doing just fine in handling it. Slowly the disarrayed magical accumulation finally took the shape of a small black orb revolving infinitely, the magic particles still being absorbed from the surrounding, while she herself supplied vast amounts to it. I could tell, she was raising the mass of the orb, several million times, maybe but and d that and yet I couldn't foretell what she was actually doing. Finally her body skin started tearing and burning up, while at the same time it instantly healed itself. Until moment now, I was amazed by the way she was controlling the flow of magic, which could be a feat of very few in this world even during the Great Wars. But I suddenly tensed up, when something in the surrounding area changed, as if something suddenly went missing. The life force of the environment, it started distorting on itself. It felt to me as if the world was falling apart, while every cell on my body screamed of danger. The then not too unidentified magic orb dangerous magic orb was now classified as still not not identified super dangerous bomb. Honestly, my senses told me that if I do not stop it now, then it will probably kill us all. 150. Wait is she planning to kill us both with that spell? Why go so far? Even though this is our first time meeting. Kids are sure hard enough to understand. I didn't know what to do. I don't think I am in a position to move. Because the ice on my legs keeps on growing. There was only one other way. I had to kill that girl. If I have to stop her rampaging. Communication establishment has failed. And she is not going to be knocked out. If I don't stop her now, then there won't be next time. It's not like I know who this girl is. Isn't it her fault to start a fight with me in front of my house during breakfast time? Solaris Devastation My strongest destructive magical spell. The theory behind this spell being to construct a material structure and releasing vast amount of energy in a chain variable state by collapsing this very structure using my magic dispersion. I am sorry, but it seems that there is no other way. To protect, I must sacrifice. I held my hand in front of me and form a magic circle. It rapidly expands and causes particles of magic power to rise. A huge black colored sun appeared overhead, which I tried to stabilize by holding both of my palms upwards. Huge orange flares rose high and at the same time subsided down. The temperature was super high, enough to cause electrical discharge of air, as evident by the annular blue ring forming around the giant sphere. The dark light emitted from the jet back sun covered the entire room, set ablaze in its mysterious light. Finally, there was a blinding flash. The brilliant blue light drove away the last vestiges of darkness huddling in the corners of the cavern. On formation of the complete blue circle, the spell would be complete. I just hope that I make it in time, before she completes her ultimate strike. 151 152 Two beautiful magical spells, whose knowledge far transcends the boundaries and imagination of the mortal people, only heavens know the result of this exchange of two powerful blows, it was a truly awe-inspiring sight, I cannot feel anything but be thrilled to find out who will be the winner. 153 Saki Kondo Finally, I had found the Demon Lord and the system itself specifies him to be true so it isn't a lie. I hope so. It's not like the divine system and status window made by the gods would later send me a sorry message of wrong call transferred. So, I have got this in the bag. 
If I defeat the Demon Lord doesn't it mean that I have saved the world? Then I can return back to Athena. Finally, I will be free of this madness. Without wasting another moment I charged in against the Demon Lord. He seemed to be prepared with his extremely long demonic sword. All I need to do is take his head, and it will be all over. I wonder whether an achievement certificate will be transferred to me, or there might be floating colorful balloons. A trumpet parade with a fine small congratulatory song. First I need to find just how strong the demon lord is and at what level I stand. Level wise compared, then I won't be surprised to be subdued in the next moment. But I have made my way all through this, while fighting monsters beyond my capability. I have always been victorious, because I had my pride in my magical powers and self-created spells. Because I believed in my own powers, now I even have these two swords with me. I just need to find his weakness and then exploit it, while tiring off the man. His stats are too high, irregularity or trickery won't work against him. I have already set up some timed magic spheres on the ground. The rest is up to my strategy, and the only way a character defeats the boss monster in a game, is a head-on fight. I kept on charging with my swords, slash after slash. But none of them made a direct hit, I was being pushed back. Compared to my three months wielding the swords, it was pretty much obvious that he knew what he 154 was doing. Even with my super physical abilities my sword didn't even pass through his impenetrable defense. For some reason, he had decided not to attack me, but I do not care. Defeating him is the only way out of this. There is no other alternative. There never has been. From the day I was born in this world, all I have been doing is fighting. I can't complain. After all, it was my choice to be reincarnated, but at the same time I cannot give up, because I promised Athena that no matter what, I would survive. I would be beside her all the time. So I need to be quick on my feet. Faster, faster, to be quicker than a heartbeat, to become invisible even to a trained eye and to pierce through like a lightning bolt. I kept on repeating my strikes trying to find an opening. After five minutes for the first time I was able to slow him down and land a kick. Sword play alone won't work. I need to use magic too. I started with my usual fusion magic spheres, but his sword seems to be able to shatter them easily. I wonder just how much does it weighs. It's almost twice my body size. A single hit from it would be potent enough to break my bones. I need to keep a proper distance from it. My attacks are not working. Maybe I should try hiding between the spell attacks. He started using his own spells. I wonder what kind are they? After all I never saw any intelligent species use magic before. Several black arrows came swinging by in my direction. Wait, isn't that just too simple? I can easily take them off the field with the ability of my swords. And so I did. 155. After absorbing it with my black sword, I recreated them and launched it with my white sword. He then soon launched a windstorm attack, but using my kinetic eye. I changed the direction of wind and added my black flare magic to it. That should surely work and take him down. Even though he took the attack head on, I launched another sword directly at him, punching through his defenses I thought I got him, but suddenly the flames went out. Might be his trump card ability and he had to use it now of all times. I was getting tired by the stunt of sword attacks I pulled before. But now my black sword was stuck in a stalemate with his sword while he was holding my white sword in a static state. I cannot let him take over the flow of the battle now. I need to do something. I left my black sword and clad my right arm in blue glowing plasma. I sliced through his other hand and then sent him flying off again. The earth shook just by his crash landing. I teleported the black sword back to my hand. I was not in the least able to understand what the demon lord was murmuring. Not that it will matter to me anymore. I had decided to end this now. I was a bit hesitating now, because somehow the air around him looks a bit changed after that fall off. Maybe I am getting a bit delusional, and it will be better to still play it safe. So I again use the same trick to first launch many fusion balls and under the cover take him out. Gyro.hhhhh. When did he? A single swing from his sword, crashed on my side and I was flat out, bouncing on the rough ground. 
I stopped after crashing into the wall. That really did a number on me. 156. 157. Now, I see. The difference in our swordsmanship level. I couldn't even sense or follow his attack. All this time he had been playing me off. Wait, what I had been doing wasn't even sword play. I just t might as well be moving my sword like a stick to shoot off the dogs. But I will commend myself on that, because I won't have been able to do even that much in my previous life. Magic spells had failed. He would just cut off the magic simply, and just no w dot this pain dot from a single attack is not going away. I then saw the demon king heading in my direction. The traps activated but nothing happened to him. Will he kill me now? Is this how it ends? Just how many times have I thought of this line? And every time a miracle occurred, but now I am at my limit. I have nothing else anymore to show up with, no ground to stand and no power to hold myself up against him. A single, transparent tear trickled out from between my closed eyelids. Was I crying because of the pain, or because I found myself in a bind, or because I was on the loosing side and was soon about to die? I don't know, but the answer is just in between there. What am I supposed to do? I haven't the slightest clue. Don't blame me. I've been on my own all this time. I was leading a bland, placid life of mine back in my own world. No one ever noticed me peaceful and free. I wonder that's what I should call it, or I imagined it to be. I had been for a year now hacking through flesh and bones, risking my life. For what? And at the end I when I met my match, I am trying to remember the past. What a cringe and ungraceful thing to do. Was it even worth it to put this much effort? 158. Was it meaningless to come down here? Meeting the gods could be called a thing of fate. Then was this scenario a thing tied to my own fate? But where will these strings lead me to? I knew that things made on sacrifice could grumble at any moment. I had been killing these monsters for my own convenience, even if I was the one to first disturb their slumber. If you lose, everything will be over. There is no meaning in ideals that won't bring me victory. Because you can't protect if you don't win. That's what I thought. That's why I had to win no matter what. No matter what methods I have to use I'll win, and take everything back. Even though these words were to persuade myself and lift up my spirit, I knew I was not wavering. That's how it should have been. But I could not feel any power in my body. Why? I tried to stand up, I had to win this fight, or else everything will be over. I won't be able to save myself nor anyone else. Why? Why? I wanted to keep on going. I had not given up yet. I did not want it to end now. Not at least the way it is going right now. Not while lying on the ground and waiting for my doom, like back on the bus. I didn't want to revert back to my weak pathetic self, who would just idly accept her fate. Even though it might be destiny, but there was a choice I could still make. To kill myself and take this demon lord down with me. And all I could count on is the wish we would be granted after saving the world. And I know what I would ask for. 159. This is right. There I is no other way, even though I can't think clearly for future consequences. But in this present time, at this exact moment in this place, I will end it all. Even though there will be no witnesses, I know someone who will always believe me. Well my future plans for reincarnation and having a loving family, friends and companions alongside with me has gone flip-flop. I am going to obliterate this entire labyrinth. No, monsters and no demon lord will be alive and I will perish with them, but with this comeback plan, though succeeding in it will be all left to my luck, one of the most crucial factors I have been counting on up till now. Phew! With a deep breath, I calmed my mind. Brandishing my hands I casted my magic. Absolute zero. I had put the legs of the demon king in a jam loop of ice. Now with my preparations, I had done this before. But that time the idea was new. My magic power was low and yet I had put it on halt because it was far dangerous to use in immediate battles. I had prepared myself. Hypernova. A dark small orb appeared between my hands. Magical power in the surrounding and from me started gathering at that single point by forming loops of circulating magic to contain the exclusive flow of the large amounts. There were more than enough magic particles from our fight to speed up the process. 
My hands were burning and the mass of this thing was too heavy even in the anti-gravity field I had casted. 160. I used my eye of Adrana at the right moment to make vanish the Coulomb's force, and there it was the magic spell that could rival the dawn of creation and bring this place on the brink of extinction. I was not afraid, even though it was the signal of my doom. I was more than excited to test out its new power and capabilities. The demon lord seems to be making his own counter move but it's all futile. I was laughing, I know. Why not? I could only rejoice to see my own art. A spell that can be cursed for its own creation. Isn't that just too cool? Maybe I have hit my head and finally started speaking nonsense. But I was going to do it. Even though my heart hurts a bit to die like this dot I don't know whether I was still making the right choice. This excitement and eccentric drive in my heart. Is it to be rational and make the right call? Isn't it a bit tedious to think of it after coming this far? If only I had someone to call for help. If only there could have been someone to reassure me of my happiness. I wanted to live in peace with the people I like. That's all. Was it too much to ask? I keep on thinking about this again and again, but the things I am fighting for, do they really exist? In the past, it was merely a dream. A wish I could make while looking at the stars. In the present I thought it was in my grasp when I saw the star fall, but I don't know what hold death for me in the future. In this abyss hidden far away from the luminosity of stars that fills the sky. I wanted to see the night sky that I love to watch alone. That's the only time when I could comfort myself when there was no one to watch me. For a year, I had been in the dark and no stars to brighten my eyes. Is it alright, if I let it go? If I drop this power orb on earth, then the tree that will sprout from it, will there be beautiful green leaves or will it turn barren and poison the land? 161. From the beginning I knew the passion and the fire will I thought I gained that day would eventually die out. Hey, I thought I didn't need anything. My uncle and aunt used to call me good for nothing back at my house as far back as I can remember. They said I would never find a place to belong. I was a misfortune to be born. That my parents died was somehow my fault. It hurts, but I cannot remember about them anymore. No one would care if someone like me would die in this unknown place. And I wonder whether that was really true or not whether that notion of mine still holds true even as of today. I am kind of jealous now with my that self, who thought she could achieve anything if she works hard and believes in herself. But even now, I'm so serious. Ah, I still have time to make it. To prove that I am strong, I must defeat all of those who ever looked down on me or said that I was not needed any longer. I will prove them that I too can achieve things impossible in the first glance, but in actual are just walls that need to be brought down with a huge bang. My heart. Was it this cold? Has my body ever felt so light and open? My consciousness was fading. I needed to make a decision and I had decided what my fate should be and I was going to crush and remake it with my own two hands, to again watch a night sky filled with stars with Athena and this time with new people around me who would love to have me with them, it's all over. 162. 163. Don't cry dot dot wake up. I heard a voice that jolted me awake. Words I clearly understood. A voice that made my mind go numb. I wasn't just hearing things, because it was a voice I had never heard before. It was. I will not let you die here, as if my wish had been granted. For a moment I thought I had been dreaming, but when I saw a bright star shining ever brightly up on a huge elevated rock and a figure of a person, I thought I was blessed and with that soothing light all my worries were washed in its white. 164. Status Window. Name. Caroline S. Callon Ashbourne. Age. 215 years. Race. Human. Level. 99,940. HP. 1,80,000. MP. 1,50,000. SP. 2,00,000. Unique skill. Phantom materialization. Skills. Fire magic LV10. Water magic LV8. Wind magic LV8. Space time magic LV7. Ice Magic LV9, Earth Magic LV7, Lightning Magic LV9, Immunity Body Strengthening LV10, Break Limit, Body Durability LV10, Magic Resistance Spirit Sense, Magic Authority, Divine Light Magic LV10, 
Ultra Self Regeneration, Appraisal LV10, Abnormal Status Resistance, Overload, Absolute Crystal Formation, Title, True Hero, Merciless, Lux Saber, God Slayer, Mountain Crusher 165, Xylan Ashborn, Demon Lord. So, you are saying that she is a reincarnate just like you, and from the same world you came from. Ha, huh? good grief. I took a deep sigh after the women who saved our butts explained the whole ordeal to me. While on the huge bed beside me, lay the girl who was the hot topic for our discussion and was to also blame for wrecking the whole floor a few moments ago. Recalling what actually happened, in there, it was all but a close call. When you think that your life was saved by a hair's breadth, when I was about to launch my strongest magical spell, Caroline appeared and chopped down the huge black sun in half. That's just how gifted she was in swordsmanship, even more than me. I excelled in magic and I am proud of it. No hard feelings between my wife and my pride. The next she used was five Bectus Tenio stones or rather soul nullifying crystals in simpler terms, to seal of the magic or rather totally nullify the magic reservoir of that girl. Hence the magic she prepared was suppressed to a large extent without causing any loss of life or irreparable damage. It's ridiculous. That's all I could say, and I cannot deny the same. A single crystal is strong enough to nullify the power of a high-class god from our parachelon and render them unable to use their divine power for more than a month. But here, I ended up using five of them just on a single human kid, and yet I was unable to seal all of her magic. I wonder how much time she will take to recover. It seems that Caroline has too realized it by now. If she is a reincarnate, then did the gods finally decided to make another move. After 200 years of that bloodshed and faithful meaningless battles, they are pelling something again. 166, it can be. We will just have to wait and watch. After all we cannot go back to our original life. I don't want to, I'm more than happy here, to live with you. I hugged her from the back and reminded her of the promise I made to her, when we fought for the first time. I promise I'll protect you. I'll be here for you forever. And I'm all yours. She said in a hushed tone. I then quickly tried to change the topic, because we needed to collect our thoughts, before she wakes up. Even though she seems to have completely recovered, for some reason we didn't knew why she wouldn't wake up. Do, you have any idea who she is? And those two swords I cannot appraise them. It's your expertise and you seem to be somehow familiar with them. I was eager to know about the swords, which were able to turn my own magic against me. When my wife saw those two swords after the battle, she was taken aback, as if she remembered something unpleasant from the past. If something was bothering her then I wanted to know what it was. After slight hesitation she spoke in a serious tone unlike in her usual loud pitch. For some reason, I found that concerning, but knowing the facts are important for us. So I didn't interrupt. During the Great Wars have you ever heard of the Queen of Doom? Yes, but wasn't she a god? Man, I wanted to face her that time. I heard she was strong enough to wipe out an entire army force, though no one could describe or give proper information about her. She was a complete mystery on the battlefield and all their surrounding her were complete rumors. 167. My wife suddenly got tensed up, but then continued followed in the same serious fashion. Don't ever even think of fighting her in a to death battle. She was my master, who taught me and improved my dual wielding skills back during the Great Wars. The reason you were never able to obtain proper information on her, because no one was ever left alive on the battlefield when she took charge. Her real name is Urza, goddess of thunder and sword. Her clan is one of the members of the main Apostle Council of the Beginnings. Now you understand, she is one of the strongest gods out there. But what exactly you are getting at? I was getting impatient because you would never find Caroline speaking of someone in such a compulsive and fear-stricken manner. Those dual blades or rather white and black are actually Principium weapons. She was supposedly the true wielder of those weapons, but she finally gave up on those swords and abandoned her godhood. But now when I see those swords in her hands, these swords have finally chosen a new wielder. It is also a possibility that, this girl could be of Master's clan lineage. Well, that's quite a lot of information that we were able to speculate, but things will become much clearer if she wakes up soon and you could talk to her.
Her face lightens up. Kids sure do make her happy. I have known her from the days when we were so young and she has always loved playing with kids. Maybe she alone was getting bored here. That's why she came to check up on us. And I am glad that she did. Don't you worry. She seems to notice me when I talked in my previous world's language. She might not have been taught in this world's language. I would really like to know about her circumstances. Seeing 168, her state I am quite concerned. She would have killed herself and all of us, if she had decided to go through with that magic spell. Yeah, I too was wondering, do you know what kind of magic that was? Ah, don't tell me the demon lord known throughout the world as the best magic user could not figure it out. She said those words nonchalantly with a smirk on her face. Don't joke around, just tell me if you know. Or rather you couldn't comprehend it yourself. Well what would a sword saint like you would know about magic and its complexities? Fine I won't tell you. Just stay like that dot dot to and Caroline turned her head away, now slowly and gently caressing the pearl white hairs of that girl. She totally reminds me of Master. Even her long white hair matches with her. Except her eyes are blood red instead of deep sky blue which my master has. I see. But weren't you going to tell me about the magic? No, I won't. Please, you have to tell me. If this continues, then I might have to stoop as low as begging to her to cough out an answer. Obviously as a magic researcher as myself, I could not let it slide. I had to know, as quickly as possible. So it was time to go with plan K. Kachi dot Kachi. I tried to tickle in her stomach, to force out an answer from her mouth. However dot ha huge bursts of laughter, drain the tense atmosphere. She sure is sensitive in those areas. Even I enjoy it in one way. 169. Our noises were loud and we haven't noticed that the unconscious girl had started sweating profusely and making faces of distress. She suddenly said something which I couldn't comprehend as usual, but Caroline seems to understand and was taking it seriously. Please, don apostrophe t dot dot don't die and leave me alone here. She suddenly let out a loud scream and woke up. Her eyes were still in a squinted state and adjusting to the surroundings and our ear-splitting voices. I don't know what has happened to her until now, but we were ready to help her in any way we could. You are finally awake. So how does your body feel? Perhaps you would like to eat something sweet. Caroline has always had a sweet tooth, but it doesn't mean that this logic traces back to everyone. If you offer her something sweet and soft like a cake, it was easy to get on her good side and seek forgiveness. Perhaps with this trick I would be able to make her confess an answer from her. The girl quickly reacted to Caroline's voice as if she understood what she said. Though I didn't get the exact terms, but I too could read between those foreign lines. Why couldn't I, after spending more than 200 years of my life with her, while roaming in the city under guise, exploring dungeons, on the battlefield and finally in our little home, we would always meet, whether it was by accident, by pure chance or coincidence, the work of fate or the myth of red strings that connected our desires for a next meeting. By now, the girl started showing some movements by moving her hands, but when she looked in my direction, that is just beside Carolyn. 170. She jolted a bit. She tried to murmur something with her dry lips and the end the most unexpected, but the most rational action one could think in that situation occurred. She teleported herself behind Caroline and several composite magical spheres appeared right behind her. Her casting speed was something to be admired. Then several ice swords floated midair ready to be launched at me, while she brandished two swords right out of nowhere. A wave of huge gravitational field was set up in the room. The room got destroyed in a split second. The tables broke and were simply crushed to the ground. The ceiling was dangling as if it was about to fall, under the huge stress of its own increased weight and downward pull. R.H.H.H.H. She cried out loud and fell down. Caroline held in her hands and all the magic spell set up was cancelled. I casted a small restoration spell, to fix the things back. Don't push why ourself, you are safe in here. Your magic power has been all drained so you might feel a little weak. Caroline gently laid her back in her bed while she didn't try to resist a bit. For a moment I thought, we would be at it again, wasn't her magic supposed to be flushed out for a month? 
but just after 30 minutes she casted so many spells, I think she has already recovered in the meantime while she was asleep. It's beyond impressive. Then I noticed her wearing an expressionless face. She did not seem to be pleased to see me here at all. Maybe she still considers me a threat. How about I leave the room and go out while fixing the things that might have been broken? I will also prepare dinner while I am at it. 171. 172. I walked out of the room, while making sure to close the door. It's better if I leave them alone to talk quietly, though it wouldn't matter either way, because I couldn't understand their language. I shut the door and drew a quick breath, because the whole outside was in chaos. I was stunned to see the amount of damage done in a second. My mansion in a structure was destroyed. The beautiful hangar with precious crystals was shattered to pieces on the ground. All the furniture and wall had cracks in them, as if my house was the epicenter of a special disaster course. I prepared myself to go from one side to another, fixing things. I was the ex-true demon lord and I simply won't be outdone. I made a note to lessen one of the items from the dinner, because there won't be much time left after cleaning. 173. Information Brochure main apostle council of the beginnings after the creation of this universe the almighty world god primarily with his own blood gave birth to several gods who represented 24 pillars on which this entire universe and his creation stood these 24 pillars were actually the first generation of true gods who later formed clans and produced the next set of gods angels were brought into existence for the sole purpose of serving the gods these gods later went on to create worlds on the foundation laid down by the world god, giving it the breath of life and a life-supporting environment. Blessing to those who brought prosperity to lands and worshipped them with their open hearts. The main Apostle council was formed by him, to decide on how to further create this world and take decision regarding the life forms that would inhabit the three main realms and the worlds that would support the divine system and the tree of life. In the recent main Apostle Council, out of 24 pillars, 20 were in favor of the reincarnation system introduced to fulfill the true purpose of Iligard's existence and bring a clear-cut end to the great wars that only left resentment and hatred between the three realms. 174. Principium Weapons Weapons created by the Almighty World God and the Divine System itself during the creation of Cosmos from the Nothingness. These weapons were the result of the universe gaining self-consciousness and were imbued with Isaac's blood. It is said that the carvings on these weapons are the truth of this world and the meaning behind all the creations. These weapons were blessed with his power and of the ability to alter the laws that govern this world, in a way providing the wielder with the sub-administrative rights to the divine system. These weapons have a consciousness of their own and decide their own wielders. They chose their masters themselves. Each wielder is then said to be granted a wish that appears as an ability of the weapon. Usually the ability is then inherited by the next wielder. These weapons are indestructible by all means and no power can destroy them, because in a way they are the symbol of the creation of this world. If they ever fall apart and so shall the world perish. When two wielders of Principium weapons fight in a one-on-one -on -one battle, then one of the wielders always dies and doom falls upon everywhere where the sparks of this battle flies off to. Currently, for the Principium weapon, white and black, Siki is the third wielder since the birth of the cosmos. So the swords have currently two abilities and one wish left to be granted to her. At present she can only use one of the abilities which she was able to bring forth during her fight with the true demon lord. 175 176 Interlude memories and closed paths. Was I victorious? I think not. There are no popping balloons and it's so dark to perceive anything, but at the end somehow I was able to see a dazzling star, even in that chaos. It was glowing brightly. I was calm for this was not my first time anymore. I have grown up. I was sure I was dead, if not then why would I be again in a dark empty place? But I don't think I should be getting proud or habituated of dying in the first place. I cannot move my body, not new. Though I feel something tickling my face. Suddenly the black curtain-like thing distorted in irregular curves. In a lift-off, 
bright light blinded my eyes. Noises came pouring in and visuals of the scenery presented themselves in a quick glance in front of me. ZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZ
It was a horrible accident and help arrived late too. If it was not for my mother's protection, I might have been dead too. Maybe it would have been better that way. If I were dead, I wouldn't be left alone. People wouldn't avoid for no good reason at all. I didn't have to put up with my uncle and aunt's horrible treatment. 180. But it was painful to think that what life my mother tried her best to protect, shouldn't fall apart or give up so easily. I had to live. But I missed even the last opportunity. I wonder what my parents would have said when they would desi me in that unsightly state. Covered all in blood. Lost to my own impulses. And I couldn't even protect my own life because I foolishly jumped into trouble, more than I could handle, do they hate me, for that accident, do they blame me for their deaths, wasn't it my fault, they were forced to take me to the carnival, I s that's the reason I can't see their faces, they must be angry with me, why wouldn't they, I am to blame, people around me always end up getting hurt, first my parents met with a horrific road accident, Athena was targeted and attacked by Fenner because I stayed around her, maybe uncle and aunt were right about me being a misfortune, maybe that's what you call people with a curse, nothing good ever happened, nothing went the way I wanted it to, even that little fox girl was murdered right in front of me, maybe if I tried harder, then I could have saved her, had I known this would have happened, that my life would become so miserable, I'm sorry dot it's my fault dot this was all my fault, if only I could have met them once again, if only I could have asked for their forgiveness, to always put up with my stupid demands, I won't ask them for anything anymore, I would obediently listen to whatever they would say and try to be at my best behavior, if only I could see them again, smiling, if only I could hear them calling out my name, affectionately, if only they could come back to life, but, 181, I dot I don't have the right dot to even dot see the man in, I think my eyes finally opened up again, I was still wrapped in my mother's arm, I think she was trying to move, to piush me outside the window of the car, when her hands finally stopped moving and fell, the surrounding started turning cold soon, blood started running all over my clothes, I couldn't watch any more of this, and I felt a huge cavity growing inside my head, trying to break it apart, I cried in pain and finally I was somehow able to lift my body, but this time, I was back to my new reality, 182, 183, chapter 6, a new bond, when, I woke up, I heard someone speaking to me, asking me how I was feeling, it was so soothing, that I wanted to know more about this person, it was the same lovely voice that promised to save me, and it did happen, so was I really saved by her, for the first time, I understood the words of someone and someone understood mine, it was such a great indescribable feeling, I wanted to talk more, but that had to wait, because I wanted to know about my current situation, when I saw the demon lord's face again, I was first confused and strange thoughts started crossing my mind, maybe my delusional nature from previous life took over, isn't it the correct moment when the character has to speak, you can have my body, but you will never be able to make my heart yours, well I could see that I was lying on a bed, and he was ostentatiously looking at me, 184, but wasn't I still a young girl, my age is one, a complete one, so I tried to take guard behind the lady who appeared to be acquainted well with him, I don't know of thy our exact relationship, but to protect myself I was even ready to blast off the demon lord, I prepared several magic attacks fears just in case, but then I fell short on magic power, I sank to the ground, but the lady just caught me in time, I looked up at her to thanks her for saving me, but I couldn't muster up the strength to speak when it mattered the most, my sense of speaking had been distorted since I hadn't talked to anyone for real, but when I looked at her, she had such a peaceful expression, that my racing heart skipped a beat and then slowed down, she was such a gorgeous lady and had a charming face, her skin appeared to be so bright and glistened in the light, while mine was cold and pale white, she laid me back on the huge bed, but I did not resist, I had neither the strength to fight, nor any motivation to lift my sword to fight against him, she then said something in a foreign language to make the demon lord leave, her voice made it look like she took delight in conversing with me, I too had been rearing to hear someone talk to me, and all I could do was response in a yes or no, I was tired, 
and then I fell asleep in between that talk. 185, at the dining table. From what Carolyn, explained to me, the circumstances were too simple and yet complicated not with their plus the loose ends. The gods had absurdly decided to take initiative and reincarnated twenty human kids from her previous world accompanied by one god each. Their mission was to save the world. But isn't it too vague, to understand, from what? And I, a kind soul like me, who had given up on fighting several years ago became a victim of this misunderstanding. According to her world's logic, a demon lord is supposed to be the root cause of all trouble and evil spread across the world. Isn't that T.O. presumptuous to brazenly make such assumptions? A demon lord's job is to low okay after the demon kingdom. Just like a king rules over the human kingdom. That's it. Where is a tyranny, destruction, wickedness that comes around in their minds? But wasn't this mindset needed in the first place to start a war between races? It's not that the gods didn't know. Or rather they didn't tell but pretended to look the other way. Just what are they playing at? If another war occurs then it will be on a scale much greater than the Great Wars and this world will be surely destroyed. But this world is one of the most ancient and largest worlds among all the existing ones. They just cannot go around and end it. Could Almighty World God have another motive regarding this reincarnation plan? Now, that I think about it isn't she too unfortunate to be reborn in this hell. All the monsters that were too strong for this world to support were pushed to the brink of extinction during the great wars by the gods and were forced to live here. I still cannot believe it, that she traveled 80 floors, by subjugating all those ancient monsters. Their abilities and strengths defied world logic, for which even shook the gods themselves. 186. But isn't she herself an exemption? Born in a monster body, turned into human race and even though having a human body of a 15 year old, the status only shows her to be one year old. She can use all attributes, including the conflicting ones. Her light magic has advanced to the divinity of gods and at the same time her dark magic has evolved into dark matter magic. Does she herself realizes that how much strong and powerful she can become later on in the future? She was a challenge for me even then, but later I might not even be able to stand up against her in a proper fight. It's too embarrassing for me to accept this, but facts are facts. Though with experience I do have tricks and strategies of my own to defeat a more powerful opponent than myself. I laid out the plates on the table and called out for Carolyn, who was searching some books on basic language of this world, to help her communicate in this world. Caroline came through the door and quickly took her usual spot near the part of the table where the pickle plum jar is usually kept. I have already told Saki. Yes that's what her name was supposed to be dot to join us in dinner. Caroline though to herself. So what have you made today? I would have loved to help in the kitchen, but you know things came up. You don't need to make excuses. I was fine on my own. Since a guest will be joining, I made rice and curry. I pulled the chair and sat beside her, nothing for the desert. She tried to sound so innocent and demanding at the same time. Fine I will look into it. If something unique and easy clicks me then I will prepare the dish. 187. But something suddenly caught our attention. A young girl quietly standing stock still at the entrance. Why don't you come in? Again listening to that foreign language, she walked down and took a seat two meter away from us. Maybe she is still keeping a distance, because she is not sure whether to trust us or not. She was wearing her usual white dress. Her skin was white almost as if it was transparent and her red eyes, reminded me of the red spider lilies that grew in the lake of the royal demon palace. She was a lovely girl, to the point where I was afraid that if I touched her as gently as I could, I might end up hurting her. It was impossible to believe that few hours ago. We had a battle to death and now we are eating on the same table. I am not against the idea. And this was not a first time for this kind of situation to transpire. However, those eyes which during our battle were beaming with joy were now awfully hollow. It was to the point where one could describe it as expressionless. Perhaps because of the tension her expression was stiff. She didn't seem to be focusing. She kept on starting at the food, as if she was seeing it for the first time. It was suspicious whether or not she could even see us or the food, no before that I couldn't even sense a will within her, isn't this calmness dot a bit strange? 
Just what exactly happened to her? We cannot stay quite like this, I know. This would surely work. Is the curry not to your liking? If you want then I can play flying aeroplane spoon game. I tried to put up a smile. This trick always worked on Lila and then she would always finish the dish. 188. 189. However, unexpectedly the girl's expression did not change. She suddenly started crying, and speaking something I cannot understood. Caroline pinched me tightly on my right hand and I let out a shrill screamer. What was that for? You forgot. Ah, I remember she cannot understand my language. And even though she is one year old she is not a kid to fall for the flying spoon act. After all aeroplane is a thing which is from her world, so it wouldn't sound too amusing for her. In this world we only had space balloons for air travels or tamed griffins or wyverns. I used to be proud of knowing all the languages of each species and every other ancient language of gods, but other world language was a space case for me. Just how many times will my pride be shattered today? So. What exactly did she understood? She is asking for mercy, because she thinks that you are feeding her for the last time before killing her. How shameful. And you look creepy with that smile. I think I heard something cracking in my heart. I had screwed up. My life is over. This is what I get for showing kindness. Just what kind of fiendish picture she has of me in her mind. I am not that bad looking. Am I? No. I am the adult here. I must act calm and smart over it. But even my smile was rejected by a young girl. Does Lily find my smile to be creepy too? I was at my wit's end. As if I was taking damage of being verbally self-abused and on being misunderstood. 190. After Caroline was further able to explain my position, she quieted down and quickly finished the food. Then Caroline took her back to her room so that she could recuperate. 191. Saki Kondo. I was lying on a huge bed and thinking back how I ended up here. I considered myself fortunate to meet such kind people. The demon lord decided to spare my life and the female hero is also a previous reincarnate like me. Though I am not surprised. I was concerned with the fact that why such an information was not disclosed to us in the divine realm. Even some of the facts of the great wars which she described were quite different from the history books I studied in the library of the Pantheon. Though I find it quite amusing how, the true demon lord and true hero fell in love with each other on the battlefield, they self-resigned from their post, while faking their deaths and thus bringing a close curtain on the war. From where I see, it's the usual trope where they were unwillingly used as pawns by those people in power to instigate conflicts which later unexpectedly turned into some sort of world war. I too told them everything about the reincarnation plan and who my god in contract was. We were told to keep it a secret, but if the other party is themselves able to conclude that I was reincarnated then the promise is not considered broken. Also as a fellow reincarnate. I should be thankful to her for lending me these books of this world's human language and feeding me curry. It was surely to die for. I read through them carefully and using analyze skill I made sure to remember them. It was as if the whole new language was installed into me like a computer program. Though it took me two hours. Learning a new language this way is quite easy. Now that I remember, for some reason hearing Athena's name she looked astonished. Or... Maybe I am still feeling a bit dizzy in the head. They did say that he I won't be able to use magic for a while, but I think I have regained half of my strength. 192. Now they are living a peaceful and happy life here. I am so happy for them to have such a nice environment of living that it makes me jealous. She had a home, people she cared for and they loved her too. I too wanted to be a part of such a loving relationship. I too wanted to reunite with people I know or I cared for. I wanted to get back to Lady Athena. If I stay here any longer, then I will only cause trouble for them. Because now I know that people around me always end up getting hurt. So I must leave. This is for the best. It was night time. The hallway seems to have quitted down. I have not traveled through the house. So I knew I would get lost in here. So I decided to jump from the window. I was on the third floor. Even though it's high, using wind magic or even a direct jump won't put a scratch on me. But to keep the noise down, I need to become one with the air. I slowly descended down to keep even the nocturnals from waking up. I saw the huge two gates, right in front of me, 
though we were far apart, I looked back and a huge stunning mansion was towering in front of me, teleport, I was now standing outside the gate, I then passed through floor 80, while I found floor 81 and 82 empty, they must have cleared the monsters beforehand to stop them from trespassing on floor 80, well that makes it quick, I soon will be out of this nowhere land and free from this desire of hunting and killing monsters, I knew I was changing, but whether this changing was good or not I didn't in W 193 194, on floor 83, I was swarmed by 500 Draco roadies, they were some kind of lizard men with nasty faces, long spiked tails and a huge built body, each of them was almost 10 feet tall, possessing super strength and wielded magitite maces, some even had spears which they threw at me at an incredible speed, they were arranged in flanks with some magician class monsters at the back, it was like a small national army on a parade of demonstrating their military strength, but it matters not, I don't have time for your slow tactical games of war, I was now going to play with my own rules, my arms flashed blue and with speed that seemed to race with light, I hacked through their flesh, for far away monsters, I used dash, dismantle, my eyes started glowing red and slowly all the lizard were wiped out, after clearing all the mob monster, the boss character appeared which was their chief tribe, without hesitating I drew my dual blades and made my way to the next floor, unlike the previous floor this floor but had a single monster, frost queen, the whole floor was covered in ice, I saw my own reflection in the mirror like frozen water, but I did not respond to it, above several icy steps a huge ice throne was implanted on which the queen sat with a manic laugh, several ice spears of different lengths and thickness came at me from all sides, I used my advanced magic sense and started dodging and blocking them with my swords, even from above and below, ice spikes would appear without any warning, had I not been able to sense the change of 195 magic flow in nature in advance then I won't have been able to avoid them. In midst of all the chaos, I leapt towards the queen, directly aiming at her neck, but my swords only were able to cut through a shield slowing down its momentum and were blocked by another silver sword which the ice queen was holding in her hands. Clang, clang, clang sounds of frozen metal banging against each other reverberated and echoed in that blinding ice storm, the temperature was below minus 40 degrees celsius, but my body was not responding to the absence of heat, it was all fine, I thought, but since my status window cannot explain their exact values, I was oblivious to the magic particles I had in my possession currently, maybe because of the sealing spell they used on me the magic replenishing veins were deeply affected by it, I could slowly feel my consciousness slipping out of my grasp, my movements slowed down, the attack power and the weight of each of my sword strike became lighter by second, my vision narrowed and finally turned hollow, a halach, h h h h h, several ice spears were thrust through my abdomen, blood spilled out from my mouth and gushed out through the opening in my stomach, it was definitely painful and more effective than an alarm clock placed directly under my ears to wake me up. I cannot fall asleep now. I wouldn't eat, die of cold, nor excessive loss of blood and neither by the hands of this monster queen. But due to my own foolishness, I thought I could handle everything on my own. I didn't need to depend on anyone, or so I thought. I came alone in this world and maybe I will die alone. This time I was not sure, I think that to happen every time but for some reason, I always wake up. 196, maybe I was counting on to that, maybe I wanted to stay in that warm indoors a bit longer, it was peaceful talking with that lady, I did not even say anything before leaving, how rude of me, to hurt her feelings like this, after she had been so good to me, I ended up ignoring her. Did I even thank her? I don't remember doing it. I am so inconsiderate of others' feelings and oblivious to my own responsibilities. I wanted to be saved, to be told that it would be fine, if I stop and rest for a while. Even if I hurried I knew I was not prepared to face the outside world, when I couldn't even make up my own mind of what to do with this new life. This time if I woke up again, then I would surely accept the kindness of the people who were good to me. 197. Monster Diary, Frost Queen, Catastrophe Class Monster, Name, Glasses Regina, Age, 
5,000 years, race, fallen demon god, level, 6,000 HP, 60,000 MP, 1, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, SP, 90,000, skills, ice palace, cryokinesis mystic ice magic, water magic LV8, telekinesis, dark matter magic LV7, ultra self regeneration, crystal skin, titles, ice clid, ice sculptor, 198, Carolina Scalon Ashbourne, I was resting inside my bedroom, waiting for Zyle to come, today. I learned so many things that have changed back in my previous world but the more I hear, the more I wanted to know. My favorite anime ended in exactly the other way around of what I had initially thought of. The main character, put a bullet in his own head and transferred his heart to another dying person, later regaining back his memories and proposing to the girl he loved the very next day, and the girl without any explanation understood what had actually happened. Eight child perceptive of her. I even feel embarrassed to say that I ever liked such kind of show. Just who directed the ending and created such a tragic mishap? Wouldn't it be nicer? If the person who was donated heart also loved the same girl? Butino. He went for the heroine's twin younger sister, and now the two of them are in conflict. Thus the second season has been put on hold. Now I will never know, who ended up with whom. Young relationships can be so complex sometimes. I took a deep sigh and thought of the previous life background which she explained to me in short. She lost both of her parents at a very young age and was not properly taken care of by her guardians. I feel sorry for her, to end up in this hell, all alone. But now that she is here, I will definitely look after her. The state I find her is similar to that of me when the Great War started and I witnessed the first battle between the gods and the devils. Humans, demons, elves, beastmen and all other races were just fodder and pawns for them. Some ventured to gain power, some wanted glory and vanity, and some wanted to swim in riches while others wanted to command authority. No wish is completely and inherently good or evil and this war was a means to fulfill their wishes. But what they lost in there, were they really able to afford the heavy price? 199. But who would have thought that out of all gods Athena, was willing to come back to Isle Guard and that too as a reincarnate? It was probably that kid, who was able to change her mind. She must have meant a lot more to her, if Athena was willing to go this far. I still remember the day, when she was just a little kid, almost 200 years back. During the final battle. Her father who was the strategist for the war and her mother another war planner and looked after the supple Lee chain unit and research over new magical spells used by the enemy. During the last wave of enemies, when the Exidium Tower was discovered to absorb all the energy from the world core and the final plan to compress all that energy and destroy the world, they took it on themselves to go to the tower and stop the process midway. I was their escort, while Master Urza was leading the main army to finally subjugate the last enemy main base. We reached the top floor of the tower after facing several difficulties, but it was already too late. They asked me to leave and in return to carry Athena to safety. Even though they would be able to stop the world core from self-destruction but according to the Eidos system, the energy released from the already absorbed core needs to be suppressed and even then the whole area would be caught up in the after wave of the explosion. Someone was needed as a brain filter to control the explosion and not let it spread to the battlefield. They tricked me and secretly teleported me to the nearby base where Athena was staying on probation waiting for her parents to return. That day, I lost two important people in my life, but at the same time millions of life was saved that day. It didn't matter whether they were good or evil, or whether they were on our side or a part of enemies. 200 forces, it really didn't matter to them. They sacrificed their life to protect everyone. They were gods and even then they couldn't be resurrected back in divine realm. The reason being that the explosion involved the breaking down of the Ica's blood which destroyed their soul core and they were lost in the war forever. But how? A mere human like me could ever hope to explain myself to a child Athena. Even though that time she acted maturely, and held back I knew it was hard on her. She knew the consequences of her parents joining the war and never to return, but she was kind and finally forgave me. I still remember her words, 
of how she told me that her parents were so happy that they could meet a true hero who saves all like me and they would surely have no regrets if they were able to save so many lives. That day she returned back to the divine realm, but I knew she was weak at her heart. That wound which the war left on her would haunt her eternally, and I was to blame for it. But I wonder if her wounds were patched up by this girl. Then I could not be more than grateful to her. She is filled with youth and talent. It shines with both kindness and strength and basks in compassion and respect for those who are honest to their own lives. Maybe she is the salvation I was waiting for these years, the lamp that I needed after my long stay in the depths of despair. The light that will shine no matter how old and dark it gets, for it eternally gets brighter and brighter. And I the extra hero wanted to see it grow and bath in it. I received a strong signal from my domain boundary. Did she really think? She would be able to escape my agorist domain sword technique. It's a single hand sword technique in which the user expands his consciousness to a large range and perceives information in 201, a single beat. Even a small change is registered in slow motion which allows the user to defend and later attack the enemy simultaneously. But I can also use it for surveillance. Since it's a soul martial skill, hiding magic doesn't work. It is actually set up to detect the intention of soul and its movements. And right now she is in a lot of distress and her mind is jumbled up. Doesn't she realize her body condition and how it's holding up? I can't believe she would try to run off in a high feverish state and that too while she is unable to recover or use magical powers. Just how desperate is she? I walked out of my room and tried to quickly follow her. But I needed to put on some light clothes first. So... She can even use long-range advance teleport. Even I have the ability to only use the short-range ones. She is not to be underestimated. To think that she was self-taught in magic, thought her six attributes might have been a big help, but to corner the demon lord in a magic's battle was a feat to be reckoned with. It's impressive to see magic of this world and science of our world to be combined in such a spectacular way. Maybe it's true after all. People are able to break through the wall that they have set up to limit themselves, when there is no one to say that you cannot do it. I was on floor 83, but she was nowhere to be found around. Wasn't there supposed to be around 500 lizard-type monsters of SS class with a catastrophe class boss, but all I could see was blood spilled all around. There was no monster corpse or any sign of living being present. Phantom Somnia my unleashed my unique skill. This part of my ability specifically allows me to see the things that happened in the past here. 202. A small blue hazy screen appeared over my palm and as I said the monsters were alive a few minutes ago. But then she entered the floor. Her expression was grim as usual. But what happened next was beyond my expectations. I thought Xylan told me everything about her powers but I think even he couldn't evaluate her powers properly. Her hands were surrounded in blue laser-like plasma, and moving in a single line-up flash she chopped through the monster like running a knife over melted butter. It was smooth like the flow of a gentle stream that could carve ravine in a huge rock. For far away opponent I saw her eyes glowing in deep red and with my expanded senses I saw the life force inside the monster expand in a peculiar single lines. Suddenly the body of the monster expanded and burst open with blood scattered all around like a crimson flower blooming in spring, and she was able to use such a dangerous ability continuously. Even though the scene was so gruesome, I could see the faint light of pleasure in her eyes, the ecstasy of fighting, but it also brought her true character to light, of enjoying the bloodshed, the faint glimpse of delight in her eyes, her beaming smile which bloomed naturally on her face, and yet she might have been unaware about it, she was too busy fighting the monsters to even take notice of herself, she fights recklessly, with too many openings. Just having a good healing spell doesn't make it okay to sustain pain and get on being hit, if you can make your enemy pay back in return. Then after defeating the final reptile, the boss monster came forth. He was five times bigger than his troops and his skin was reinforced with magic to the max. 203. Her dual blades appeared beside her waist and she unsheathed them in a flashy manner. She sure likes to shine. I now had a nice comparison of her to someone. Her lips rose up to catch a small breath and a single strike flared in front of my eyes. 
leaving behind a bright black and white trail the blades bisected the enormous giant lizard body. Not even leaving his enemy the strength to cry in pain, she silently stood there with her blades tightly clenched between both her hands. She submersed in the blood rain which formed from the falling of such a large monster. Then all the monster corpses were engulfed in black webs and then disappeared. So she has a relatively similar skill to my own phantom materialization. She is a beast, clothed in her innocent childlike beauty. I could clearly see why the Principium weapons chose a human, the true mark of being born in her clan and inheriting its powers. I had no doubt about it, she had to be from Master's Lenique, but I needed to hurry, even though she was somehow able to recover some of her magic. She won't last long like this. My fears came true on the next floor, where the fallen demon god was trying to hurt her. Seeing her in pain, made my blood boil, as if I was burning from inside. I could not forgive the person who tried to hurt her. I unsheathed my own two blades, while one of them was much wider and longer than the other. The another blade had a much sharper edge. I glided like a hawk, midair towards the Frost Queen, sensing my bloodlust approaching her. She tried to block my thick blade, but that was the second biggest mistake of her life she could commit after hurting her. And I was going to make her realize it soon. 204. While her sword shattered under the great pressure of my first strike, my other sword quietly sliced and went past through her neck. The ability of these swords was for the broader sword to double its defense on the exact damage taken, while at the same time the attacking power of the thin sword is made twice. Impressed. I know quite a special ability, isn't it? My phantom ability activated and the corpse of the Frost Queen turned into black mist. It actually fused with my ability where it is materialized like a phantom soul which I can later imbue it in my blade. I tried to break free her from the spikes by shattering the ice in a single punch. She fell in my arms. She was so lightweight that felt like carrying a bag of feathers. I could carry her back home even like this. I looked at her deep wounds, which healed in a single blink of an eye. Even her clothes grew back and the blood stains vanished. Even in sleep her face looked so peaceful and her body felt so cold, as if she had been sleeping for a very long long time. All I could hope was that when she woke up she would be finally able to make up her mind of what to do next. All I wanted was to see her smiling. Always. 205. Flashback. Suki look this way. Don't turn your head away. I was hearing this voice for the first time, but it felt like I had been hearing it from the start of my world. A voice that was etched in my heart deep within. Every time I heard it calling me it made my breathing heavier. The more it called out my name, the more I wanted to look, to open my eyes and see it for myself. The image of my parents. But I knew if I open my eyes then there will only be blank faces. I hate it. The thought that I forgot about my own parents. Even when I see their pictures, I cannot seem to remember them. So they never fit in my dream frames. The only way to solve it was, as I thought it to be, was to remember them on my own. But this was the first time I heard their voices, so I obediently followed it. I was scared but, when I removed the hands covering my small phoenix eyes of my kid form, cheerful voices sprang in my ears. They were loud, but they sounded so happy. The scenery was vivid as day even when the sun was about to set. That day before leaving the carnival, in front of the huge ferris wheel, we took together a family photo. Suki what's the matter? Why are you crying? Did something go inside your eye? Tell Mama. Even though I was not in control of my own body I think my overwhelmed feelings affected my nervous system to induce such a forced reflex. How I wish I could hear her call my name a thousand times more, to burn this image deep within my eyes, to settle with a vow to never forget such fond memories again. 206. Under that beautiful sunset, my father was holding me on his head, while my mother clicked the photo of three of us. On that small screen, the big smiling faces of my parents appeared so bright to me. How could they be so happy, when they were about to die? The next moment after leaving this place, I wanted to warn them, but my own body was not under my control. I wanted to scream, but all I could do was make another stupid selfish request. Mom, Dad let's come here again tomorrow. Tomorrow dot dot that might be difficult dear. But I want to come here every day, with you all, 
And what will you be doing here coming every day, aren't you too young to work here? My father replied in a sarcastic tone, while trying to sound funny by forcibly speaking through his nose. I pouted as a way to show how angry I was. My wholehearted request denied so easily on the spot, was not something I liked, didn't mom say. I was her little angel, so why won't come with me here to play every day? But I want to come here, or, I will again start writing on the tables and walls, now. Now don't be impatient, if you really want to play then you should come here next time with your friends. Friends? Yeah friends, that you make in school or other children whom you play with in the park. My father again said something which I could not have understood that time. Finally my mother made an effort to make things clear for me. Yes, Saki you should make lot of friends and come with them here, then you will be truly able to enjoy this amusement park. Friends are 207. Those who are almost about your same age and you can trust. You wish to be with them whenever you are sad or happy. Then mother and father won't be my friends. We are your friends, but the more friends you make, the happier and easier your life becomes. After hearing those words dot at that time I said something that made my mother and father happy, that they couldn't stop laughing. Who knows I might be serious about it and yet was able to crack a joke for them. Or what I said was so ridiculous to them that they couldn't stop laughing. But their smile was all that I needed. I think I knew what I wanted. What I had to do next, to achieve my goal. I wanted to head out on a journey and this time instead of hiding wanted to explore this new world. To see everything this magical world had to offer that I was not able to see previously. Magic can truly work miracles. I had got a new life and this time I wanted to dedicate it to myself and to people who believed in me. To make new friends and live without any regrets. I wanted to live a happy peaceful life and no one should interfere in it. 208. Suki Kondo. A warm sensation enveloped my body. I was confused. Just a minute ago I was writhing in intense pain in my stomach of being pierced and dying. Just what in the world was happening now? The pain had magically disappeared and my muddled mind had finally cleared up. I was supposed to feel sad, maybe, but for some reason I felt extremely light and happy, as if a huge weight or doubt had been lifted from my mind. My eyes were still too heavy to open by themselves but I could hear a sweet melody playing along by. Someone was singing. Happy dreams come together. Walking on ropes forever. Millions of desires flow down the river. Let's forge our paths all together, to the bed of flowers of wishes forever. To fall from a cliff, or fly off with the wind. I roll down under the stairs. Oh no. I just woke up from a dream. But first I must return home, to a treasure more valuable than all. And then we shall be on our way to the land of Oitlo, Oitlo, referred to as the place where dreams become reality. 209. So you woke up. Tell me how you are feeling. Sorry, for interrupting. I. I feel fine now. I see. It's just a family song which my mother used to sing to me back on earth. I was feeling so embarrassed to say this, but I finally did say, though it might have sounded a bit rude, seeing that I was being done a favor. But why am I being carried? Carolyn, the hero was giving me a piggyback ride, and we were heading in the direction of the mansion when we just shifted to a path on left which drifted us to a totally new location. One could not have possibly guessed that such a place existed here. We were now walking through a forest where the foliage from the densely packed trees seemed to spread out overhead like a ceiling. It was a forest where even the light of day was obstructed. Not that I would know because it was almost night here. Using magic to implement a day and night system was periodically set here. It was so advanced that one could even see the seasons and weather changing alternatively or so I had been told. My cheeks were red with embarrassment. I felt that I could walk on my own now. But I did not interrupt her, or asked her to stop and drop me. I was enjoying the ride. I wanted to be like this for a bit longer. So I tightened my grip. While in response Caroline pushed me up a bit to make the surroundings a bit clearer. She was really a tall woman and I notice now that she has rather peculiar long ears. And from up high I could surely say that the scenery looked a bit much more appealing than when walking on the ground. Soon, the forest cleared up and a huge circular open area showed up. 
but my eyes were rolling upward across the huge black sky dotted with a 210 stream of beautiful glittering dots. It was a river adored with shining pearls, from which the light exuded radially in all directions, attracting attention from far and wide in the cosmos. It was breathtaking. So, she brought me here to see this. She put me back on the ground so that I could see the full sky from the advantage point. If you think this is amazing, then the stars in the outside world are much more stunning than this. I would love to see those. Maybe this was the first time when I answered so openly, without holding up anything. I can look and tell that you have finally made your decision. I am still not sure. There is so much to do and think for. I have to learn so many things about reading, writing and speaking, common sense of this world, currency system, politics, controlling my power and abilities, things that needs to be eliminated from this world and the things I had to protect. Then I am sure that you have already all figured it out. It's just that you are now in a phase of preparing for your happy future that you have envisioned for yourself. I w and to get strong enough to eradicate all of my enemies in a single gaze. I don't want someone to disturb the peace of this world which will be my new home. I wanted to make myself happy and the people around me happy too. I tried to make myself clear, though the more I think the vaguer I sounded. I don't know a single thing about what's happening in the outside world. Where Athena is? What about my other classmates? What are they doing for this world? How strong are they, since they must be leading a good life and being trained by their respective gods? I am sure. The whole picture and the wish I have are much difficult to achieve, than I make it sound. 211, 212. Impossible. That's what it would appear in a critic's eye. But that made it look like a thing I wanted to do the more. An endless pursuit, which you get done by first taking small steps and achieving small victories. I have a proposal for you. Why don't you stay here with us? Why you can learn so many things from us, and when you think that you are ready to leave. Then, Caroline stopped after putting forth such a unique request. To me it more appeared like it was a first point of contact of happiness for me. Maybe I wanted to stay. Maybe I can learn so many things here. Meeting these amazing people I realized that knowing others is not so bad. You get to feel so many types of new emotions. And right now I was so happy but a little sad and worried at the same time. The feeling of being attached to someone. To respect the person and try to become just like them, to be loved and love them in return, to be looked after and worry for others, to learn by sharing thoughts and performing actions that helps you to become more capable, but my hands were steeped deep in blood, I didn't know what was happening to my psyche myself, I was turning something into a non-human, or rather I tried to forget that I was born a non-human, a monster, my violent tendencies had intensified, I craved fighting, I was no different than those monsters, but am I allowed to have such happiness? Happiness doesn't appear without a reason you need to think carefully. Whether you deserved it or not. Whether it's rightfully yours or not. Whether you are making others to force themselves to behave in a certain way. At the end you are the one getting hurt. Because afterwards the other party would surely leave you behind, when they think they had enough of you. 213. Keeping true to your ambitions when it could mean life or death. That isn't something just anyone can do. Even when you were fighting the demon lord, weren't you thinking of how you can save this world? But people near me always get hurt. I cannot bear to see something happen to them. If something would have happened to you on floor 84, while rescuing me then I wouldn't have been able to forgive myself. Don't forget that we are the strongest in this world. There is nothing that can actually hurt us. You get it right. Caroline under the silver light of the stars appeared so confident with those words that I wanted to stay with her. I admired her for saving me twice. She understood how I felt and what I really wanted from the start. And yet she patiently waited for me to arrive at an answer by myself. I wanted to stay here not just because I had no other choice to go anywhere else but because I wanted to stay. And now more than anything I wanted to be with this person, to know more about this person to become a part of her life and make her a part of my own, to form a connection, a bond. Caroline then knelt down a bit leveling her head and eyesight with that of mine. She then slowly brought her head to cross my own and her lips near my ears. Hugging me lightly, I silently stood there, unable to move. You know, it's okay for you to stay here, as long as you want. 
You don't need to be alone, because I want you to stay with me. I knew I was crying, but I did not make a sound. I moved my head forward and hugged her tightly in turn by enlarging the open area which my arms could cover. I did not want her to see my crying. 214. How could I? When those words were so strong and fulfilling, that I thought I could achieve anything in this world, I would love to. I hurriedly said in a light tone, trying to still hide the fact that my eyes were filled to the brim now. If I moved or spoke any further, I might not be able to hold them in. It was such a blissful occasion. How could I make others feel sad just because I got overwhelmingly happy? Suddenly my body was lifted in her long hands which emanated extraordinary strength and affection at the same time. She put me at her back again and started walking. Thank you for everything you have done up till now for me. I finally said what I wanted to. There's no need to say thanks when we are a family. Family? Now there are those words, which I didn't expect to pop up. Yes, family. Since we are going to live together for a long time, I am sure you will love living here. It might feel like we are cut from the outside world, but it is a paradise that he and I created for ourselves to have a loving happy life, and I want you to be a part no F it. Dot. 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 Silence fell for a long time as she continued walking, while I carelessly tried to move around my head pretending to observe the plants and small nocturnal animals, in a vain attempt to hide my eagerness and awkwardness. 215. Then, let's go back home. You need to rest a lot and punishment is in order to leave without saying anything. Wait, what? While she laughed with a hearty smile, I was left in awe and wonder. 216. A first morning. I was lying in my bed, because of the exhaustion from the excessive magic drainage and inability to absorb magic, which normally my body was able to do before. Since I was a monster, without magic my body gets excessively weak than it should have been, but fortunately my fever had subsided. While Caroline was telling the demon lord what had happened, either the demon lord would shout at me for putting everyone in danger, but instead he scrubbed off his hair and smiling at me he calmly said, I am glad that things got settled before you can die and could have taken a worse, and I am surprised to see that you picked up this world's language so fast. For some reason, I was first happy to hear those words but from inside a voice cried out that this was not how a true demon lord should behave. Even though he is self-retired, but he should have acted more violently. He might have destroyed his own room or punched open one of the walls, or could have threatened me for making a mistake and punish me. So another feeling arose from inside that I needed to make him behave like a demon lord. Otherwise my mind and heart won't be able to take it anymore. I cannot let my hard research work in fantasy novels go to waste. Since I cannot change my prior knowledge I had to try and come up with a way to change his ways. Suki listen. Caroline called for me. While I directed all my attention to her she continued. Since your status window doesn't show a name, we have decided to give you a new name. 217. But isn't Suki just fine? I tried to see the situation from her point of view and realized what she was getting at. I know, but it would not be good if you move around in the outside world without a name in the status window. It's not normal and will attract suspicion towards you identity. I see, so how are we going to this? Is it just as simple as that you give me your name? Because individually I had already thought and done so many things previously to get a name issued on my status but none worked. For example I tried carving my name on the dungeon walls, and then I tried to use my own blood to write it. Then I tried to use monster corpses to form a big name sign of mine. But there were no changes observed. Well it is indeed simple. Just an extra requirement. So we both have decided to adopt you and will be your mother and further from now on. Wait. I was not told about this. Isn't it out of the blue? Please think carefully about this. I don't want to interfere in your life. You know that I will be leaving after some time. So wouldn't the fact that you both are alive might be revealed. Didn't I say before, that we are going to be a family and family members trust each other. You are going to be our sweet little daughter. You are so cute and little. How could I resist the temptation when the seat is open? You are just one year old and someone needs to look after you, because of your reckless behavior. Now be a good girl and do what your mother tells you. 
There aren't going to be any yes or no's. I am still worried whether this decision is good for us or not. I tried to ransack my brain to think of the consequences. Zhao, do you have a problem? No, not at all. I think the house will become much more lively with her around. 218. I see. She had been planning to do this from since then. Family. I looked outside the window and it was already morning. The artificial sun and sky prepared by the automatic weather system felt more charming and lively than the morning of the busy city life. I looked outside the window and a pair of a typical squirrel species of mother and baby was playing on a branch of a nearby tree. There is no need to think of complicated stuffs like consequences and planning. I wanted to be happy and right now I could only feel joy when I accept being a part of such a loving family. The daughter of a true hero and a true demon lord. Mama dot dot and papa please give me your name. I hurriedly uttered the line trying to hide my hesitation. I might have never sounded so much confident in my whole life after being reincarnated. This was my best decision in this life I have taken up till now, and I just know it. I wanted to be happy and this is the best way to experience how it feels to be loved by someone you hold dear to. So, Caroline have you thought of a name, or do we need to come up with only on the spot? The demon lord inquired, or rather I should say father. Don't worry dear I have thought this through. I have already a name in mind. And all you are going to like the sound of it. After a moment of pause the name vibrated through my eardrums creating a delightful sensation. It had such a nice ring to it. More importantly it was a name my mother chose for me. The second precious thing in my possession in this world after my dual swords. Alicia. 219. 220. F from now on your name is Alicia Scalon Ashbourne. The daughter of the true demon Lord Silen Ashbourne and true hero Caroline Escalon Ashbourne. I had lost my smile because I was stunned and moved by the dreadful beauty of hell. But with this new identity I just might be able to know why was I born in this hell. Why I had to endure up until now. And was I really that special to end up with such happiness. I love my name. Alicia. So cute and beautiful. Caroline thought to herself as she saw her new daughter smile under the bountiful glow of fresh sunlight. She couldn't control herself and leapt on the bed tightly hugging her, rubbing her cheeks alongside her glowing soft small tender developing cheeks. Amidst that happiness, something interrupted my happy reunion with my new family. You have leveled up. I looked at my mother with a concerned look because of what was going to happen. I was worried. What if all of this vanished after I woke up? What if all of it proved to be my imagination? I did not want to be alone again. I did not want it to go back to sleep when I can be with my own family now. Why now of all times? Carolyn. My mother looked at me affectionately, even though I haven't told them. She was able to get a gist of it of what was going to happen. She kissed me on my cheeks, while my panicked mind returned to its initial peaceful state. This time I did not want it to leave things like this. I did not have time to explain. I wanted to return these feelings in a mere single moment. 221. So how would a person like me who grew all alone, did all things alone and never expressed her true feeling to anyone can pull this off? The answer to how to convey your feelings. There was no answer. If you loved someone deeply enough, then your own feelings would surely get across to whom you wanted it to, unconditionally. It just happens, so naturally that you can only admire that such a beautiful feeling exists in this world. I kissed on my mother's cheeks passionately. I love you. With those words I let go of her and white thread started covering my entire body, till I was completely engulfed by it. With light fading in front of my eyes, I went in deep slumber, knowing that I was not alone anymore, because someone was watching over me protecting me. I could rest easy and for the first time sleep without having any fear in mind. 222. Divine System. You have received a new name. Name. Alicia Scalon Ashbourne. Transferring Authorities. You have reached level 20. Gluttony reached LV10. Acquired World Severing Web. Acquired Eternal Poison. Received Title. True Demon Lord Candidate. Authority Wish Granted. Immortality activated. All seeing eyes of the gods activated. Seventh form. I of Voxtus. Evolution stage. Two inchalizing. True demon lord. Soul core analysis complete. Species evolution. 
in process Gress's system, code setup code, legacy of goddess Arachne, authority granted species evolution complete 223, am I awake now? My head feels so heavy. My head felt like it was overburdened, as if blood has collected in one of the areas and was bothering me. Is that whole leveling up thing over? What a weird way to level up. Just how many days has it been? IT has been exactly 10 days since you reached level 20. I see it has been 10 days. Wait was I hearing things right now? I looked around and I was still in the dark. Why can't I move? Evolution has yet to reach its final stage. Is this answer my question quiz show going on? It felt like whatever question I thought just gets answered by someone. Wait, isn't that exactly what's H happening? Since I was meeting a new person, proper introductions are in order. Hello my name is Alicia Scalon Ashbourne. I am one years old and I like to create new magic spells. Now that's how you give proper introductions. I had been wanting to use my name to introduce myself to someone after getting a new one. I waited for a reply but then a worried mechanical voice spoke to me. I already know about that. My dream of giving proper introduction shattered and it was all this voice's fault. If I knew where he was then I would have surely burned him in my black flare. And do you me and d explaining how do you know about me and you haven't introduced yourself yet. I tried pointing my finger upwards since the voice appeared to be coming from there. I'm you to be precise half of your brain. 224. That's just creepy. Why a voice of an old computer is buzzing inside of my brain. That's just rude. You should more importantly call me at least a supercomputer. In your world I would be more properly referred to like an artificial intelligence, an AI for short. This voice suddenly sounds like it is suffering from an identity crisis and is desperately trying to clear the allegations put on him. T hat confirms it. You are definitely me. It's like I'm in my subconscious this dark empty space, where I can only see myself in the light. So tell me what your other half is made of. Sure, there won't be any complications if I converse with half of myself inside this new empty space. My first half is born out of your consciousness, while the other half belongs to the divine system. I am the product of the unique skill, I of Voxtus. That's amazing, so you really are an AI, fitted inside my brain. Don't tell me you implanted a chip inside of me. No, there is no chip. I am installed in the non-usable or rather underdeveloped parts of your brain, which is usually dormant or inactive. I see so it's more like using the hidden potential of my brain as a skill. So what use are you, or rather that can wait? Do you know how to get me out of here? Yes, for completing the process you first have to give me a name and assign me a job. That's simple. I think I already have thought of two names. How about Super Deluxe Cyan Machina Mark I Processor? 225. I am asking to name a part of yourself and not a toy series which is to be put up on sale. And if you would rather keep it short, you sure are choosy like me. But aren't computers named that way just how I did? Dot so, what is the second name choice? Yeah it's rather short, as you demanded. But how about simply calling you Al? Is it to your taste now? Al. Name. Al confirmed. Job profile, requesting. I see you need a job too, then since I am living in a family now, someone needs to look after things. Fantasy world. How about a guardian? Since you are half me and half made up of divine system. Job, guardian confirmed. Fine now let me out. I quickly want to meet my new family. Yes, before that but could I please know? What should I call you? Since, I gave you a name. I think it's fine if you decide it by yourself. What you s would call me. I see. Scanning memory data. Preferences searching. Found. File. My dark fantasy. Secret life plans. Dot now scanning. Wait. What kind of memory file you are reading without my permission? Stop it and let me out of here. Reference search complete. N no. How could you invade my private thoughts? Wait aren't you already a part of it? But even so it doesn't make fine to make it the more conscious to me. Request accepted. 226. As you wish my princess. Princess. Did I really want Ted to be called a princess? It might be when I was young. But now it looks silly. Wait. W he the place is falling. 
No, we need to reconsider what you are calling me. Come back here. Super Deluxe dot dot junk dot iron mac in a mark I processor dot huh. Don't turn your head away and hum me. Aren't you my guardian? I am sorry Al. I was just joking. Don't get angry with yourself. Aha. Uh -huh. Light flashed in front of my eyes and I finally woke up. 227. World severing webs. Web magic which of an advanced divine attribute. The webs can now be produced from any point existing in space. These webs are indestructible, except for Principium Weapon and High Class Advanced Divine Magic or Black Matter Magic. These webs have the ability to cross dimensions, time and even world barriers and still remain intact. Title, Immortality. The holder of the title is immortal and cannot die due to body destruction, mental attacks, body ailments, curse or disease. However destruction of soul core, would mean deletion of existence from the divine system and the authority of the title will fail to function, causing death. Holder becomes neutral to body fatigue, sleep, hunger and other unnecessary feelings that may inflict pain. Downfall is that it messes with the biological clock of the body. Hampers personality development because the sense of time and lifespan changes. Observed to be more severe in cases of reincarnates. Note. However these sensations can be artificially recreated by using Al. 228. Seventh form. I of Voxtus. Allows the user to have a mind link with the divine system's consciousness allows users to affect the thought waves that directly link the brain of living beings with the creation genesis. These are thought waves are capable of causing various phenomenal changes that appear as magic. Hence amplifying the thought waves in turn makes the magic abilities more powerful. Can also create parallel egos for separate data handling. This ability is also able to carry out several orders made by the user, which lessens the user's mental load. It boosts the growth and learning process of the user. Skill, thought acceleration, conscious stale, ego creation. Glutton 11 10. Allows user to devour soul, physical body, raw energy, magic power and life force directly and transfer it to the soul core of the user. Can also create copies of souls by using analysis skill over the devoured souls. Hence the skills are transferred intact by gaining relative information on the target can absorb magic even from greater distances can isolate various substances after devouring the mixture composition 229 status window name Alicia Scalon Ashbourne age 1 year race human demon level 20 HP ERRMP ERRSP ERR unique skill all seeing eyes of the gods first form eye of investigation second form Kinetic I third form, I of Adrana fourth form, I of Soul fifth form, equivalent exchange sixth form, I of being seventh form, I of Vox Duis skills, Glutton ELV10 Eternal Poison, World Severing Webs, Sage of Advanced Fire Magic, Sage of Advanced Water Magic, Sage of Divine Light, Sage of Advanced Wood Magic, Sage of Advanced Wind Magic, Advanced Sun Magic, Sage of Advanced Space Time Magic, Sage of Advanced Ice Magic, Sage of Advanced Gravity Magic, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Barrier Magic LV9, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless, True Demon Lord Candidate, 230, Information Brochure, Title Information Regarding Demon Lords and Its Authorities Titles are supposedly authorities granted by the Divine System to an individual to take control based on his achievements, power standards and lineage. In this world there are four titles regarding the Demon Lords. These are with their authority level, dash, Demon Lord Candidate, Demon Lord Candidate, True Demon Lord, True Demon Lord belongs to the Royal Demon Clan of Noble Blood. He is supreme authority over not only the demons and other demon title holders but also over all the other non-human species like vampires, dwarves, beastmen, elves. A true demon lord candidate also belongs to the royal demon family and has supreme authority to an extent over the demons and other clans. They are next in line to declare their candidacy as true. A demon lord serves under the true demon lord. 
also referred to as the Demon King. They belong to the various powerful clans of the Demon Tribe. They also serve as the Demon Generals of the Demon Army. Note, after the previous true Demon Lord was declared dead in the Great Wars, no one was able to ascend to the title of true Demon Lord and so his throne still remains empty. 231, 232, Chapter 7, is, that, how you, learn things. Do you have any idea what is happening to our dear daughter's isle? I was now standing a bit far away from a huge white cocoon, in which Alicia was wrapped up inside. When you look into her status window and her condition, I would say it's type of an evolving level up, but this is somewhat still fundamentally different. There is more to it than just leveling up. Just look at the flow of magic power in our surrounding. Those white threads are special. They are first absorbing the raw magic power from the environment, assimilating it and finally transferring it to her. But, how long do you think she will stay like this, parting so soon just after? It's kind of sad. I know I feel the same. By the way do you have those five Tenio stones with you? 233. I took them out of my side pocket at the end of my shirt and passed it to him. I wonder what he was going to use them for. They were now just ordinary stones but a very high density magic fields is trapped inside. Usually it takes more than four years to prepare a single stone and the materials required to form it alchemically is extremely rare with a sophisticated process of production involved. It was one of the most sought for weapon during the Great War and was used by both the sides on an extensive scale. If you are not able to handle the sealing magic properly, the condensed energy will go berserk and the explosion will kill you, but after sealing it properly, then breaking the energy free from the stone and reusing it is still an unachievable feat. I watched Zyle carefully as he then brought them close to the white cocoon-like thing and those normal colorful stones started glowing. Vast amount of magical power started flowing from them and into the white webs, but dot dot how is that possible? I couldn't ho ld back my curiosity. I wanted to know, and the only person who could answer my question would be the great magic emperor's island. Who knows? Wait you cannot tell. Maybe dot or maybe not. I see you are still upset from before. You are still unable to figure out what kind of spell construction she used. I don't know what you are talking about. He hurriedly spoke and turned around his head ignoring me, pretending like I was not here. Fine then I will tell you, but first you need to tell me what is going G on with her. 234. Really? You see I think it's because she possess all six basic magic attributes and at the same time can perfectly use all their derivatives. Her level does not appear in the status window, which means they are maxed out. Her compatibility is perfectly in sync with our surrounding which contains all the six attributes. So it does not bother her if she directly absorbs them without using a filter. Well that's true, if someone with five attributes directly tried to absorb magic from the surrounding. His body might suffer several injuries at spiritual level. Since he does not possess aptitude for the sixth attribute the other attribute's antagonist component will repel it, which in turn will destroy the mind of the magician. It's almost similar to, only people with the same blood group can donate to people having the same blood group, but Ab plus blood group can accept blood from all. But is that really all Zyle? I think there is really more to it than that. I have another theory. What if her natural attribute is not the six basic attribute after all? Just the thought of having all six is bizarre. Especially possessing the dark and light element together. You do realize it's something even gods cannot achieve even if they desire. So for a human body it's unthinkable even if she has gained immortality title. There is another explanation for such a thing to happen. But I am not sure. I will have to think more about it. Zyle then took out some sort of a magic measuring device and holding its two small thin silver rods in hands started waving it around the room, outside the window, at the door, below the chair and bed, over the cocoon, over my clothes, over my face. Hey watch it. So what did you find? Any luck? Her body constitution is amazing. But in the least if her status shows human, I doubt her origin is a human. 235. Didn't she tell us that she was born as a spider? Though spiders are one of the weakest races in this world even if they are of monster category. No, that won't suffice. It's not that she was a spider, 
It was just that her actual body was replicated as a spider. She does possess an uncanny title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne. She said it was her first title, she had. Wasn't Goddess Arachne your side's head research developer or something along those lines? Engineering soldiers who could fight for a prolonged term with the undead army of the devils. Do you think she has to do anything with her body's origin? Well, I did hear she was obsessed with making beings that could survive all extreme conditions a body can be subjected to. I did hear that since her own divine body was weak, she eagerly wanted to join the battle. So she used to speak of creating an ultimate body for herself that can evolve and get stronger to adapt to any situation. But she died in an enemy invasion of the base and was killed by one of the devil's general. So what if, what if? She succeeded and then hid her achievement and waited for it to grow, though she couldn't see it the end. Then I gave some thought to the process involved in reincarnation. It is said that during the reincarnation process by gods the actual use of the magic circle is to lay strip the soul of the previous body and find a new one in the new world. Seeing how mysterious her power is, that would explain her ending up in such a soulless body. And went through this hell. What are you talking about? It is this hell that has made her stronger, it is indeed an ultimate creation, a new life form. Just think initially her body was extremely weak, but then by consuming the monsters here she took their raw energy and makes it her own. Then during this evolving, 236 up process she draws magic power directly from this dungeon's inner walls, a highly dense magical area where such strong monsters with exceptional magic powers lived. She has no limits. She will keep on growing and gaining strength. Unlike us who have finally reached their limit in leveling up. A being with boundless power. That's so cool. Our daughter is awesome in all ways. She is a beauty and also going to be super strong. That's another way to put it. It won't be long before she would surpass us. Or, she might already have. But cannot us see her full strength efficiently. That was obvious during our fight. She lacks swordsmanship skills and even with only magic she has no control over efficiently storing in and drawing it out at a single point. And other finer details, I then saw Caroline lost in thought, so I just reminded her in case. So, tell me what she did to cast that destructive spell. Yeah sure, I will tell you, after she wakes up. W it. What dot dot why not now dot dot you promised. Of course, I will keep my promise, so I will tell you. But after she wakes up, I had been betrayed and cheated by my own wife. I forgot she never mentioned when she was going to reveal the secret. I cursed myself for my foolishness, as I banged on the floor and ashamed of the fact that my own wife outwitted me in a deal. You are evil, I will never forget this. All I could do was cry and run out of the room but that would be too pathetic. So I again just stared back at Carolyn, who seems to have come up with a new dish of idea. She smiled and coming closer to my face. 237. So how about we two train her, in our own respective fields? That sound interesting to have such a special student, but you do realize the consequences. Being trained by the best swordsman in the world and the best magic user in the world, I don't know whether she would be able to keep up with the training or not. But she will become so strong that no one could handle her. I have faith in her and that's why before anyone else lay hands on H -er and corrupt her, I want to see her blossom in all good ways. It's just that, because of her extraordinary powers I don't want her to be exploited as a hero or be feared as a demon lord. Carolyn, you truly care for her that much. I tease just that I want her to live a fulfilling life of which she can be proud of and don't have to hide herself like US from this world. I exactly understood now how she felt. We were on the same boat going downstream, and there was no turning back now. But she still has a chance, to live her life with all the freedoms, she wants to. How could we allow our daughter to meet the same horrible consequences and suffer a terrible fate? I understand, I will give her all my knowledge and skills which I have learned and honed it to its maximum in my life. And then there are those mindless gods who think they can do anything whenever they please with this world. I will not let them control my daughter. She will possess a will that will far surpass what even those stupid gods cannot fathom at the top. She will not yield her will to others, and unlike us be strong enough to walk on a path she believes is right. Isn't that right Zyle? 238. 
At that time when the true demon lord looked at Caroline his heart skipped a beat, seeing his wife happily smiling it reminded him of the day they first met on their travels to get stronger, achieve their dreams and realize their true potential. 239 A Memory from the Past, Zyla Nashbourne, The smile I saw on her face today, reminded me of the day when I met Caroline, the true hero of this world. For the first time, I was traveling in the northern forest of the human territory at that time. I had to keep my identity as the prince of the royal demon family and at that time being a true demon lord candidate a secret. As a royal member I had the ability to shrink my horns and make them invisible. Though every time I did it, it made my hair tingle and my hairs would always get messed up. Horns being one of the most sensitive and arousing part of a demon is no joke. Mind it. I wanted to explore a newly appeared dungeon whose boss monster was supposed to be a three-headed serpent. The magical stone embedded in its head was reported to be abnormally huge. This information even though was kept extremely hidden, only the powerful of those would have known and ventured for this exceptional item. I needed it to increase my magical powers and make alchemy-based potions and weapon enhancers. At that time even the two continents were not at war. But everyday conflicts had sent deep-rooted hatred in between both the species. Since I was from the royal family I did not knew much about the mechanics of the outside society and so I always used to keep to myself, away from the people who wanted to use my authority, gain my favor in every wrong way possible. At that time I was just around 27 years old and that's fairly young for a demon. It would be around seven years later that the Great War broke out after an entire country was wiped out mysteriously. As usual I continued to walk on the route to the dungeon entrance while wearing a black robe, which even though plain was magically enhanced for defense from surprise attacks and keep my senses unaffected from any hazardous environment. I always used to live on the edge. 240. I was not yet strong enough to rule over the whole demon continent and other non-human races. I always thought that to get strong I would have to keep on working hard alone so that no one else held me back. Or rather I was afraid or I knew that if I work with someone then due to my weakness I might lose them. I had to get stronger to protect my kingdom, my people and end this up ending war before it happens, all on my own, just before I could reach the entrance of the dungeon. A trap magic activated which sealed me off inside a barrier. Suddenly from everywhere fire magic arrows were launched at me. Such petty tricks won't woe RK on me. Fire in my hands and devilish be my voice. Fire burst stream. A huge fire typhoon engulfed all the arrows and the melted them away. But my spell should not have been underestimated as it broke down the whole barrier in a single contact. Five people with swords came running at me while more arrows were launched at the same time. As I dodged the first swing by bending my body downwards and making him fall off by sliding my right leg in a half circle, in that position I moved forward and from inside my long robe drew out a black dagger, made of an ancient dragon's 2th. Clang! Yellow sparks flew by as the second intruder's sword went soaring high in the air. I kicked in his abdomen and as he went flying I put up a nice barrier to my left to stop the incoming arrows. The second man landed on the third and knocked him out, but at that time who would have thought that the fourth attacker would throw his sword at me. Producing a shrill sound the sword carried itself straight in air and headed for my neck. I had just casted my magic so there was no time left to chant for a second spell. My one of the legs was still in air, while my right hand held the dagger. I thought I could block 241 it, but then my hands stopped moving. I was late to realize that I had been hit by a paralysis spell, and since its casting was long, quickly nullifying it was a no-go. I am so pathetic, had I been more good at my footwork or had a more physical strength, as a knight, I might have spinned around and dodged but not out of the paralysis poison, but out of fear my eyes were strictly attached to the flying blade. Who would have known in that movement a young human girl would swoop in and cut its sword in half with her own sword. It was beautiful, the speed at which her sword moved, the whole strike as if was visible in a straight single stroke line as clear to leave a marking in open space. She turned around, while I was still nullifying the paralysis spell. My eyes still looking ahead. A woman maybe around 17 years old. Holding a weird looking flashy sword with a curved, 
single-edged blade turned around. She had a concerned looking eyes and at the same time had a constant smile which glowed under the sun, her emerald green colored long hairs rippling in the wind as she flexed her long body and a beautiful tall looking human girl almost same size as me but with a much brilliant aura asked. Are you fine? Do you have any injury? By now I had dispelled the paralysis spell and putting back the dagger inside the scabbard hidden under my robe I answered while my head was down. No I am fine now. Good. A joyful voice carried a simple word shot through my ears. 242. Something jumped out of the bushes and at a breathtaking speed a light slashed through the air and knocked off the fourth and the fifth assailant. At the end of the light stream, there stood a tiny little girl with a much mature face and posture but was clouded with an expression of doubt and anger. At least you should be thanking her instead of turning around your head from your savior under that robe. It was a bit of a stingy sound but the truth, master, called out another manly voice from the bush and out came another young human maybe around 22 years old, holding two people in his hand. His thin built falsified his own true strength. I have caught their magic archer and mage. He continued, excellent job my apprentice. She gave a thumb up to that man. Maybe they had a master-pupil relationship of some sort. But why is that young girl the master? Hey, you dot you the one under the hood. You haven't said thank you to us yet. These days the adventurers have grown to become so haughty. It was that same stingy voice. Where were my manners? Or was I too complacent to say thank you to a human for helping me out? Or was it because it was a girl? I am sure I had talked to girls when I was studying at the Demon Academy. Or was it because there was something different about her? We met for the first time and yet the way she talked to me felt like she and I were close acquaintances. That being said why did I let my guard down around these guys? All I could know they might be another group of attackers, or the same group were there some conflicts. But now I just can't bring myself to get my daggers. 243. Out. After seeing that the assailants were tied up and taken care of, I thought my work was over. So I started walking away, thinking that was the best course of action, hoping to never see them again. But then I was stopped. Unexpectedly. Or I could have just walked away ignoring them. But I turned around to the voice calling out to me. Hey, wait. You haven't introduced yourself. And why were they attacking you? After a long pause, I had decided on what words to speak. I don't know who they were. Is that so? For my long though question come answer that was a quick response. Hey don't trust this guy. He took an awful lot of time to come up with that response. He is weird and suspicious. That same stingy voice. But I had bit my own finger as my timing and thinking misfired back at me. I really don't know who they were and I don't see any reason why I should state my purpose of being here. Short and precise, I thought. That would keep them quiet. Now I can finally leave, yeah. Or so I thought. Maybe we should capture him too. Hiding his face, he must have a huge bounty on him. Might as well hand over this criminal to the Knights of Cheval Recorder. That same shorty stingy voice, kept on ruining my day. Don't be so hasty Mar L. He seems to be in a pinch that is why we decided to help him. Branding him as a criminal now will be Ro NG. At least someone is level headed in this group. 244. No, no Karol you shouldn't be easy going with this ungrateful kid who needs a woman to step in and save him. That pimp, I will crush her. Maybe first we should ask that guy about his situation. I think I should leave soon, or things might get ugly. I understand they saved me, so they would surely like to know a little about that person, obviously, but someone was crossing the line here. Carol, you are still so innocent and a pure-hearted it is people like these that try to destroy the loving world you dream of. Just look at his dark robe and that thin dagger. Cheap things and scrawny appearance, I am sure his appearance matches to a purse snatcher on the highway whose wanted poster I saw in the Empire. Let's hand him over to the Knights. Justice shall prevail. I quietly walked to the person spouting nonsense about me and holding her petite body high in my hands. Hey what are you doing dot dot hey? Hey dot put me down dot dot you mongrel. I gently put her down. I knew you were weak dot dot ah dot dot ah ha ha. 
She was now sitting on a thick raised platform of freezing ice which I specially created using magic. She would obviously yell as her butt gets freezing cold in a blink, and I had forcibly stick her to it using magic, so it will be a while before the ice melts and she breaks free. Serves her right. How could she call a prince like that? It was best if she got executed had she been in the demon territory for disrespecting me, and I wouldn't interfere to save her then. He he he. Mal. Are you okay? That piece of trash. Ah. Uh, how? Ah. Uh, he dares do this. Dot h h h h h h h. 245. It's your fault for picking up on him. Sir I am sorry if she bothered you. No, Coral you shouldn't be the one being sorry. Dot dot ah. Uh, a h h h. Damn it all. Mal. At least behave of your rage. Now then, I think it's better to introduce ourselves first. My name is Carol, she is my companion Mal and this is my other companion Mucka. Being left no choice I had to explain myself. So, I slowly walked to the front and taking off my hood displayed my manly charms. Even in the demon kingdom I am considered the most eligible and handsome bachelor according to the surveys. But I always wondered what good these surveys were doing for our kingdom. My name is Zyla and I am not bothered at all. You see because I am not scrawny and neither someone suspicious. I usually use this alias to travel around while keeping a low profile. He might have cool looks, but it is obvious that he is clearly bothered by it. That puts him off, but that means that he is a good person at least and not someone we should beware of. Carol, Carolyn, though to herself as she saw the man in front of him taking off his hood. Hey. Tell us why you are here at least. That tiny girl was now somehow miraculously free of that sticking magic. She must be pretty strong. Wait is she a dwarf? That would explain her foul tongue and rude behavior towards innocent guys like me. I think those people were some ordinary hunters who wanted to hunt people who come out of the dungeon after they had conquered it. But seeing me alone, they thought it was better for them to attack me now. I see. Then that means we two parties saved each other. 246. Hey Carol, what do you mean by that? It's clearly obvious that we saved the guy. He is the one who owes us and not the other way around. Just think, Mal had he not been attacked, after we had conquered the dungeon. We might have been tired and getting attacked by those bandits after that would have been bad. We might not have gotten out of it unscathed. So you have our thanks in return Mr. For getting attacked first. I was dumbfounded at her conclusion which she so brazenly arrived at. It was totally ridiculous and too optimistic to be true. Though it was quite blunt of her saying that I was some kind of a decoy or it was my bad to begin with getting attacked by them and all. She is messing with my commonality. And for some reason I ended up dot thanking her. Thank you for saving my life. Now I will have to take my leave for some urgent matter I had to attend to. Next time we meet I will make sure that your debt is paid. I thought this time for sure it was over. But the ideas of this human girl knew no bounds and rationality. I think you can pay your debt even now. What do you mean by that? Didn't I just explain how I had an urgent matter to attend to? Aren't you two aiming for the dungeon? I don't think it's any of your concern. But I think W.E. can have your help. You see we three two are aiming for the dungeon in front of us. And we three are close combat fighters. What are you exactly proposing? I had no idea what that human mind of hers is thinking. As a mage please temporarily join our party. And consider your debt paid. 247. Hey, Carol. Are you sure of this? This guy is a pain. Just look how weak and thin he is. He doesn't even have a muscle or hair on his chin. He will surely slow us down. Guessed so. She is a dwarf. You stupid dwarfs. Now, Mal you surely remember his fire spell. Weren't you yourself surprised by it? It would be nice to have him on this raid. I am sure he will handle himself just fine and won't slow us down. I see master. Your point in this. He me GHT be a good safety measure after all. Hey Maka you should be supporting me and not him. Yes I might be aiming for the dungeon. But I have no reason to share the spoils. So I would rather do it myself. I tried making my intentions clear. Now they would surely leave me alone. Yes it's fine. Keep it all. You see. So good be. Wait what? You are fine giving me everything. Yeah. Our purpose here was to clear the dungeon to stop the monster break and level up a bit at the same time. We were at it. 
I then thought about the consequences. The three looks pretty strong, but the three-headed serpent is a formidable monster and carelessness may be our doom. If one of the members makes a mistake or is lacking in ability, another person can suffer. But then I remembered her speaking how she was confident of clearing the dungeon. She might actually be strong to say things like that without an ounce of hesitation in her eyes. And, and maybe I wanted to see her swordsmanship too. You don't need to be hesitant. If you find the situation dangerous just run away. 248. Yeah, make sure to run and don't piss in your pants. That stingy voice again and her filthy dwarven language. Had she known that one day I would be her king, I doubt even then she would show some restraint. That time I am sure it will be fine if I pass an order to execute her. Fine if the conditions are as you put it. I am ready to form a temporary party with you. That day even I don't know exactly what made me to accept their invitation. But that was my first time meeting her that changed my life and outlook of this world forever. Her thoughts and ideas had a great effect on me and brought in me a change, a good one, that I was able to realize my dream of becoming the greatest demon king and inherit the title of true demon lord later in the future. It was because no matter what I did, she did not let go of me and continued with her pestering. But in truth I never got annoyed with it. It was more like I was always looking forward to it in some way or another. It was because of her that I could make my mind to make my own allies with whom I could trust my life like Geld, Leon, and Elna. Comrades who would never betray me and stay with me not because I am someone important or powerful but because they wanted to. They saw me as an equal, a friend and a comrade. That's what I had always wanted. Maybe that do why it was because what she told me after we slayed the three-headed serpent together. Zyle, I think you would make a fine friend. So you should trust more people and let them help you when you are in trouble. I too would like to be one of them. These words may not be that complicated or too big a demand but I wanted for it to come true for a very long time. I still remember the brilliant smile on her face as she wished for my happiness from the bottom of her heart. We were no more than 249 acquaintances. She had the heart of a true hero, one who resolved everyone's problem knowingly or unknowingly and unconditionally. But this was not our only fateful encounter but more of them were about to come at unexpected events whether being chased down by an army, or being caught in a monster outbreak or protecting people from natural disasters or infiltrating suspicious mansions. Unforeseen meetings bound by strings of fate always brought us together somehow and I always looked forward to those small meetings. And today again, I wish that I can always see that smile every day. If she wishes that for our daughter then I will make it come true no matter what. 250. Saki Kondo. The world cracked in front of me as I woke up from a tiring conversation with myself which implied I had still to learn a lot. I tore through the white cocoon. As it easily came falling apart as I gently slid my fingers through where the webs appeared to be joined. Light shone as I jumped out and was suddenly in arms of someone, as if they had been waiting for me all this while to come out. I did not try to move my head, because I knew who that person was. It was my mother. Even though she did not give birth to me in this world, she accepted me and treated me like her own child. So it would be wrong of me to not return those feelings. And most important of all because I wanted to welcome home. An embrace so warm and words so sweet that I might not get enough of it even if I get used to. But then something felt wrong with my head. Not only that but my back feels a bit weird too. And that uneasiness kept on growing, till I no longer could hold back my curiosity. I lifted up my head and by shifting my eyeballs to the top, I spotted an almost circular horn protruding out of my head and hitting mother's cheek. Ha ha. Mother R cried too in astonishment. Ha. While I screamed out of surprise the very next moment, but mother, instead of being surprised she looked more excited about this but on the other hand father standing on the other side of the bed, 251, had a look of inquisitive temperament, as if he was about to conduct an extensive research after observing his experimental object, I looked at my back and two black wings were shaking uncontrollably, just what is happening with my body, even the dress I am wearing has turned black except that my hairs are still white and eyes red with a much deeper color than before. 
Suddenly mother started rubbing her fingers around my horn and had a bewildered expression on her face. This was more than I could take, as a peculiar sensation wrapped around my head, which was getting unbearable by every second. My breathing somehow got heavy and I wanted to stop her. I knew horns are one of the sensitive portion of demons. Mother seems to be happy by confirming her prerequisite doubts, but if you already know that now, then stop it. But instead she gently started rolling her hands across my wings too. So I was a demon now. How did that happen? Right the status did mention about evolving and scanning father. So don't tell me it tried to replicate his features and alter my genes to a demon. What the hell? I did not give permission for this. My life was over. First there was language problem and now don't tell me I would be stuck with this appearance problem. Then I glanced back at my mother my eyes in the dark because of her shadow over me. I could see a smile curled from one ear to another. Don't tell me she is enjoying seeing me behaving in such an arousing manner. The sensation of having a horn was a first for me and I did not know exactly how to react. By instinct I kicked on the ground and drifted myself back till my back was touching the wall. 252, 253. Someone help me I wanted to cry out loud but falling a victim to my own mother's evil acts where I am being assaulted inside a dungeon, just who would rescue me. That's when father came behind mother, whom I thought to be my savior. Caroline stop, but I was enjoying it. We already had ascertained that such a thing was going to happen. So it's fine. No I'm telling this is not the way you do it. Wait, what is he even speaking? Didn't he jump in to save his daughter? How did I not foresee how my parents could have been a weird in their own ways? Even though they were strong, they were the biggest shut-ins I had ever met who had stayed here for at least 200 years. They beat me. After all they are strongest and it's common for them to have a fanatical nature and weird quirks. He suddenly bent down and as if watching every inch of my horns and wings, he stopped at my face. There is no doubt about it. Her curved horns and black wings are identical to a female of the royal demon family, and even her face has changed a bit. She exactly looks like my mother back in her youth. I would say her jawline somehow is matching with yours and has the same colored horns. She is definitely your daughter. She must have used her analysis skills on me during her fight and when she leveled up, she used that he data to turn into a demon. So that's the secret of legacy of God Arachne title. 254. I was confused, and just awkwardly stared at them. Without knowing having much information, they had exactly figured out what I was and then they properly explained things to me. My parents are so reliable as they explained how things were and what exactly I might be. So you both are saying that I have the ability to evolve and change into any species if I want to, and by defeating enemies I can absorb their power and get stronger. I exclaimed as I stood from my fallen position, leaning on the wall. Exactly, that's what your further concluded. My mother confirmed the facts. So, am I going to stay like this? No, I think you should be able to take any form. Why don't you try thinking of reversing back to your human form? I don't know whether that will work or not, but there is no point in thinking about it if I do not try. I tried to remember back my human form and suddenly tendrils of white and black web in a mix started tracing their way around me and in a second I returned back to my human form. Yes. Or so I thought as I was then asked to practice this, I turned myself again into a demon, and every time I did mother greedily stared at my horns and wings with lustful eyes. According to her thought they might look stiff but were actually soft to touch. So, instead of complaining and being pushed down to ground and be embarrassedly violated by my mother I went through the experiment. So, now I have full control over how I can change form. And now I know how I can easily do it. 255. Then mother clapped her hands to draw everyone's attention. Fine then, since we could not hold our welcoming party for Alicia that time. So we are going to do it now. Really? A party. I realized someone has never did such a thing for me. Even my own uncle and aunt never wished or let me purchase a birthday cake on my birthday. As for friends I had none to invite or celebrate with. And, guess what? I will be cooking food and you are going to love it. Amu, I would actually love to try your cooking. I thought I should go with the flow, 
but I was actually very excited about it. Wait did I just make a childlike sound? Nah. Never mind. But my suspicions rose when my father's face spoke at her eyes, though I couldn't comprehend what exactly it meant. 256 257 Chapter 8 I am fine taking care of a kid. Food is ready. My mother came in from the back where the kitchen was supposed to be as I was eagerly waiting for the dishes mother had specially prepared for this occasion that is me. It was as if I received an epiphany and was now able to comprehend my father's doubts, his weird looks, thoughtless expressions and biting his own lips from time to time. Times like these even if you get used to it, you wish to disappear from this world for a moment. Something incomprehensible was laid out in front. While my mother was smiling and waiting for us to start eating, I thought it would be nice to know the contents of the food first. I won't have a problem because I had devoured monsters before, and this was the food prepared by mother. I could never say no to it. 258, but the problem lied with the taste buds of father. His reaction was enough to untelepathically convey me that it's not only the way the food looks but something might be even wrong from the inside. Dear why don't you go first, I know you have been waiting to try my new dish. What are you talking about? You made a new dish. When did you have time for that? The demon lord appeared to be flustered. You forgot, didn't you always entered surprisingly into the kitchen and asked me what I was doing? You always said that you were just tucking G out some snacks for yourself. Wrong. I lied to you. After all, my new dish was going to be a surprise for both of you. What? Father made an expression of a guy who had been tricked by a fake lottery ticket sponsor into a foreign trip package and extorted money and went by himself and of a man who was cursing himself just because he let his guard down around his wife. Is there a pee problem? Why not move your mouth and try my dish, or just try to guess what it is first, that I can do. Father's face which was tensed up until now, lightened up a bit, as the creases on his forehead reconfigured themselves. His load had been reduced, but he failed to anticipate that it was one of the tests conducted by righteous wives, a test of courage, wisdom and patience. Much tougher than conquering the unconquerable character of a dating sim game or finding a house for a lost puppy, because you always end up with more puppies later than you started with. I guess it's one of the paradox and urban legend which even the geniuses failed to solve. 259 Father properly went through the three plates put in front of him. Each had another worldly texture and incomprehensible smell. You cannot say it's good but stating it bad would be an understatement. Suddenly further made a curious face and raised his hand. Yes, your question. For some reason it felt like it was slowly turning into a live show pop quiz. Father excitedly picked up the fork and sticking it inside the bowl with one of the most complex and violent looking food lifted up a chunk of black mass. At some regions it appeared to be spongy and at some places rock hard. It was a mystery. Indeed, I think there is a piece of charcoal in my plate. It must have come here by mistake. Father made an expression as if he had gotten rid of trouble finally, but the dark clouds of calamity were soon to befall on him. Blame his poor luck. Mother's smiling expression cracked and he turned into a grim reaper's face. That is not charcoal. It's steamed potatoes. It seems that your eyesight has deteriorated Zyl. Now her broken looks were that of doubt and anger. A single word might have fixed the mood but a wrong step and you might fall into an overflowing dam which was about to break. Wait. How did you burn something this badly wh eel steaming it? Dad sounded so innocent and curious to know the secret technique. I would prefer to know too, but it is not right for children to speak when adults are having a serious talk. I had realized the hidden truth in those lines. Old men sure knew to play their hint games well. 260. Seeing mother suddenly in a dark shadow and overflowing with magic particles in her vicinity, he soon realized his mistake. But it was already too late. Or rather he was doomed the moment he took a seat on the dining table. But even the most knowledgeable saints and loyal worshippers can't stop the wrath of gods to befall on earth. A knife flew by father's face at an incredible speed grazing through some of his hair strands and landed on the other side. Unfortunately that day a portrait of a chicken was mistakenly beheaded. Oh my bad, my hand slipped. 
It was another rare event happening from my fantasies, and I could somewhat guess what was to follow. Father was now sweating bullets, while mother's hands were reaching on to a second knife. That time I realized that the conversation was slowly heading to a very dangerous and adulthood uh, rated stage that I would be unable to handle and keep my hands off of it. So before things escalate, I am coming from the kitchen. I rose from my seat and picked up all the dishes, while forced mother and father to wait there, before they could get off their seats and follow me. After 15 minutes, I walked out of the kitchen alley with a huge tray much bigger than my hands could carry was miraculously well balanced over it. I carefully placed it on the table, and laid new dishes in front of the two members of my new family, and a third set where I was sitting. During the time of preparation all I could hear was them discussing what I was actually doing. While well, all my father did was supplement a yes to every statement of mother. Is that how family is supposed to work? 261. I don't know, but the atmosphere of the room is lively for sure. Both mother and father right now were staring at the new dishes I have placed in front of them. Alicia did you prepare, this food? Yes. I tried to smile back at her, assuring that everything is fine. Did you really manage to make these dishes in that less time? You don't like it? No. Of course it's not that. I will eat anything you cook for me. How can I refuse that charming smile of hers? Caroline thought to herself. Thank you for the food all of us said at once. The next moment mother and father kept staring at the food again, but after nodding to each other started eating again. The menu was potato salad, rice, hamburger, bread and soup with seaweed. Well all of the items were just thrown around in the kitchen. Maybe keeping the kitchen clean is out of the syllabus for mother. Let's eat it at once before it gets cold. Why yes. Further followed the example of mother. While I too started eating slowly, I watched them finishing their food first. Both of them savored the food silently, but a smile escaped each of their faces. They couldn't help but grin and I took that as a good sign. By the time I realized they both were now stunned while sitting in front of their empty plates. How did you make all of this Alice A and you were so quick with it? 262. Well, I used magic. First I peeled the potatoes to remove the charred part and then used magic to turn it back to a state which would best suit the food. As for rice I just knew a trick to prepare it faster. While I multitasked cutting vegetables and cooking other dishes, I couldn't come up with much because I don't know much around the kitchen here. Actually I used my eye of being in bioengineering skills to increase the content of sugar in potato which was gone because mother had overcooked it. As for cutting vegetables with telekinesis and at the same time cooking it directly using fire magic made it less time consuming. No it's super awesome you came up with so many good dishes. I didn't know you were such a good cook. You must have been very popular with your cooking. No, I think you are the first ones trying my cooking first hand. So I never knew how it tastes for other people without knowing their preferences. Back in my world, I have been cooking for myself since I was just 10 years old. Why don't you two commend your daughter for her hard work, Azile? Further has been awfully quiet during our conversation, but when we looked at him, his face could be described as heartbreaking. For the first time I was able to eat food at ease, without choking myself. For the first time the white rice was really white in color and the vegetables were peeled, and the meat is so juicy instead of being dry and rock hard. Until now I only knew to cook curry and somehow survived on that, but eh finally the dark ages are over. Both mother and I were astounded by such a loud melancholic soliloquy. The outburst of his true feelings was too loud, but he soon realized he did something again that was not good for his health. In distress he quickly stuffed his mouth with more of white rice. 263. Like a squirrel with both cheeks puffed out he appeared to be a victim of a beatdown on his face till they were swollen up to its limit. I will let it slide for today. Hugh. Father heaved a sigh of relief. As if life returning back to him. He gulped down the bullets in his mouth. But of course I am going to use it later. Please look forward to the future revenge. It was a loud and clear announcement of a family war. The demon lords who are known from their dreadful death traps to set up in the dungeon. Had to now beware in his own house not to falling in traps set by his own wife. Sound like he had it rough, from the first day. I never realized that during this time, 
I had taken only a single bite from my plate. Ha dot dot ha. I was laughing so loudly that it drew attention of both of the gluttons in front of me, and they started laughing too. Mother then suddenly held my hand and said something which no one had said to me before. The food was very delicious. And I would like to try more of your dishes, Amu. I for some reason again made that childish yes. I never remember if I used to talk like this. It was as if I had really become a child again. And we want seconds please. Both of them said in unison, sure. 264, 265. I already knew how my food would taste, and yet when I took the second bite, its taste was elevated to a devilish degree. It was mesmerizing and felt so comfortable. It was not the fact that I was eating human food after one year, but it lied in the fact that it was for the first time I was sharing and eating, and that too with my own family. Something I thought would never come true and had given up on those things was now happening right in front of my eyes. I could have cried right now, but I won't. There is no need anymore for that kind of sentimentality. I just cannot pretend to be grieving about the past when I am this happy. It doesn't mean that my sad past, when I had to sit and eat alone or cook food all the time by myself, doesn't matter to me anymore. It is more important that I go beyond that and experience things that make me and people around me truly happy. Mother and father were beyond doubt pleased and enjoying the food I had prepared for them. I made up my mind that from now on I will be cooking for them. Hearing someone praise my cooking is really a blissful experience. I has made up my mind to prepare new dishes whenever I would be struck by an idea and make them fall in love with my cooking. And while I'm at it, I could learn more about the ingredients in this world, because when I taste tested some of the raw vegetables they had a bit of a different taste. Maybe I can find something new, and make my dream come true of making a legendary dish of my own. Acquired title Master Chief. Al's voice rang in my mind, as it seems I had totally forgotten about him. I could tell mother and father later about it. 266. But at this moment I was truly enjoying myself. It must have been like the time when the protagonist is asked about how the food can taste so good and he says that the main ingredient is love after all. But the feeling of cooking for your loved ones is truly heavenly. 267. Caroline S. Callon Ashbourne. Thank you for the food. I had never eaten such delicious food, or rather no one can cook this kind of meals. Even though these were normal dishes you can find in any family restaurant. But the secret lied in her way of cooking it and Zyl must have realized it too. I think I will for now keep it a secret from her, while her cooking skills are the real deal. No one can deny that. She even did not waste the food items from my own dish and used it in her own. How thoughtful of her. My daughter is really kind. She is just like an angel. I can't help but feel like keep her all to myself, seeing that how adorable she looked when she smiled while finishing her food. Okay, then, it's time for some mother and daughter's bonding, and I know the best way to do it. Alicia have you taken a bath? No, but I can do fine just without a bath. Wait, how do you do that? She suddenly started glowing and radiating white light of great intensity. It was the divine element but why is she using that? Just as the light slowly died out, I saw her skin had started glowing more than before which I thought was already at its peak and also her dress was now shining, her hair's all neat and tidy. It was not only her, but the whole area where the light strike was returned to its former glory when the mansion was made. Also the plates and other utensils on the table were now clean as new and he didn't appear to need washing anymore. 268. Well that relieves us from the maintenance work, but that's not the issue now. How should I put it? You see mum. I used this spell, to clean myself, while I was traveling down the floors. It was a relief knowing a nice healing spell. There was no doubt about it. How could she? Does dot dot she even understand what she is doing? I gripped my hands around her shoulder, a bit strongly and looked directly into her eyes. Alicia don't use a god dear healing spell for a simple purpose of cleaning yourself. You should always take a bath and behave like a normal girl. Oh, okay, mother. She obediently accepted it and went to make preparations. I think there's a lot to teach her about common sense, since she doesn't even know how powerful her magic is and where it stands. Maybe I too was a bit jealous, 
because even with my own divine element my healing spell is a bit lower level than her. On the other hand, Sile can't use light magic, so there's no point in reasoning with high M over this. After 10 minutes, in bath dot dot actually it's an artificially created hot spring. Magic has its own perks after all. Everything is at the tip of your finger. Ha! Huh. It always feels this great. Even my voice got a bit sloppy as energy itself got drained from my body. 269. It was so relaxing, in the warm alkaline water where I could rest all day and no one would complain. It has been a little more than 200 years, and under the pretext of recuperating from war I warm myself here every day, and it never gets boring. I suddenly heard the sound of footsteps heading my way. A girl in a loosely fit, short white yukata without a belt walked in. Alicia must have picked one up from the outside wardrobe. I didn't know there was a hot spring here. A cheerful voice leapt out of her mouth. She seemed so excited just by seeing it. She undressed her robe and after washing herself, took a dip inside. A loud splash was heard, though the water surface doesn't seem to be bothered by her presence. It was as peaceful as ever. So, this is how it feels like in a hot spring. The water is so warm. Her voice seemed even more cheerful than before. Should be. Wait. This is your first time in a hot spring, Alicia. I came from behind her. She first turned to my side and seeing my face closer to her, yelled, ye e e e e e e She took a step back, and tried to pull herself inside the water. Is there an enemy monster she is hiding from? Losing her balance as she was about to fall, I caught her hand and pulled her to the side. Are you okay? Did water enter your nose or something else is bothering you? She still did not respond and started looking down, while bubbles surfaced on the top. I wonder what's wrong with her. 270. This is my first time in a hot spring. The school did plan a trip but my guardians back then didn't allow me to go. She finally spoke after a while. I see. How about I teach you to make your own personal hot spring armory with magic if you want. Really? She almost jumped out of the bath, but then suddenly lowered her body inside water. What's the matter? This is my first time sharing a bath with someone. She is still flustered and her cheeks started getting red. Is that so? Then you surely need to learn something about group baths. Suddenly a strong wind blew, and the water shifted to one side of the bath, while two females stood stark naked on the other side. While Alicia led out another loud yell, as water splashed all around and returned back to its normal contained state. Even though the magic I used was to make Alicia feel a bit embarrassed and that did go accordingly, but the one who was really surprised was me. I didn't realize that her hairs had grown even longer than before. Her beautiful porcelain-colored skin glowed even in this almost white foggy environment. The wind exposed the nape of her neck, only served to increase her charms. She had a perfectly nice body which I couldn't see before because of the usual dress she wore covered her whole body except for hands, feet and head. But this kind of anatomy was on another level. Does it even exist? The sight of her naked body was so perfect that she almost seemed divine and seductive even for her small age. 271. Well, I was at a complete loss of words now. I could feel my hands reaching for something that should not be done by a mother to her child, but it's fine. She is just a one-year-old kid, but that would be just like taking advantages of facts. After all she is mentally much older and her body size is surely not of that of a one-year-old. But there is nothing wrong if a mother hugs her child or tickles them as much as they want. There was not a single blemish on her plain skin and her proportions were too perfect to be true. I would doubt even royalty could stand against such godly beauty. Alicia, it's fine. I won't do it again. Really? Her voice so pummeled in itself and her reddened face. It was more than I could take. Then she scooted over next to me. To be honest if any other women from far would have seen the two of them then they would surely call them a close pair of mother and daughter. Maybe, as a mother, I think I need to warn her, because she herself seems to be unaware about it. Listen, Alicia, you should prefer not to take bath with any others. There might be chances of an accident happening. A mood dot. I will remember. She didn't ask me why. 
but in a very childish tone faithfully accepted what I said. She is such a nice daughter to have around unlike the other troublemaker Lily. Maybe someone's position in family was about to drop, but her being overly serious and overly shy was a perfect combination of bashfulness and seductiveness. 272. 273. The question is would I be able to control myself? These hands of mine surely moved on their own. I hope even if I end up someday assaulting Alicia she would forgive me. Because it will be purely out of love and not lust. Isn't it her fault to be born with such an attractive body and cute face? So, I tried to change the topic and remove my mind from dirty little thoughts. I asked the still flustered Alicia. What do you plan on doing first, Alicia? I think you should take it easy. You have been working so hard, fighting those dangerous monsters. No, it's fine. It's something I had to do to reach the bottom. And I am glad that I never stopped going down because otherwise I would never have been able to meet you too. Alicia stop saying such kind of things, otherwise I will really end up assaulting you and laying you down on the floor as I tickle you bare skin. So stop saying such embarrassing lines with a bashful face like that. My thoughts were something along those lines hearing it. If you say I was having fun, then I will surely agree. Then how about your father and I have decided to train you in both sword art and magic. From basic to all we know, we will teach you everything. And then you can make your dream come true with that power. Wait, but why? What do you mean? Isn't it normal that the parents would want for their child to know everything they can teach them? She then turned her face away and in a hushed voice said, I wanted to be the one asking you to teach me swordsmanship and magic. 274. At that time Caroline thought that her daughter was just trying to be nice, but in truth from Alicia's point of view it was one of the fantasy trips where the character has to ask someone strong to teach him the art of fighting and drill it in his soul. So it's the student's job to present an offering or a request. So she got a bit upset, that is all. Your father and I have decided to start teaching you from Teehee next week. Until then why don't you try to learn more about the outside world and its history? Well this place is itself a history, seeing that it hasn't been updated for around more than 200 years. Mom, I want to learn all the languages of this world. Wait, all of them. There might be more than 100 languages. Even for your father it took him more than 100 years to do such an unscrupulous task. I would have preferred him to do house chores but he just wanted to satisfy the quorum for being a demon king and play the know-it-all guy. Because I didn't knew the language of this world, I ended up fighting father. Had you not interfered then and saved my life? Don't worry about it, knowing you that you are strong, you would have survived either way. How could I have told her that the real problem was that if the blast went off then the whole labyrinth would have been destroyed and thousands of world disaster class monsters would have escaped. The world in itself would have been over, before you went to save it, but wouldn't it take an awful amount of time to learn all those languages? I don't think so. I learned the common tongue human language within two hours using my skills, and according to Al, it would take me only five days to learn all the languages. Besides I love reading. 275. Whenever I see Alicia talking about things she likes, her smile is the brightest. I hope that she finds new things to do in the outside world too which can make her happy. Because I need to protect her from ruining her life because of the effect of the two swords. I am sure I will be able to tell Alicia one day about it. Am I even a good mom to keep this many secrets from her and not explain her power? I keep on telling it's for her own sake. But is it really true? Am I not terrified myself to know just how powerful she can really be, if she learns about her true strength and control it, but something always tells me that I can believe in her. That she will not make the same mistakes I and Zyle made to lead to another war. She will definitely be the one to protect the innocent and the weak and at the same time not lose the sight of her goal. All I need to do is stand by her side and watch her as she decides for herself what is right for her. I have faith in her that she will make a decision which even I and Sile couldn't make or understand when we had the chance to. As for her, the fact that her consciousness has merged with the divine system is truly no joke. Just what kind of unique skill did she inherit from Athena? It's totally unheard of even for me and Zyle. At first we might have pretended not to believe her, 
but knowing Alicia she would never lie. Since our appraisal failed to identify all seeing eyes of the gods we could not determine its true nature. It's truly a mystery. There are not many skill out there which is unrecognized by a maxed out appraisal skill level 10. I wonder just what almighty world God was thinking to accept such an elaborate and yet incomprehensible reincarnation plan. Honestly, it's unreasonable to think of what a God wants to do or not. It's because they 276 are the creators so we actually cannot classify any of their actions as good or evil. Right and wrong varies from each of their perspective, but that just means we have to simply oppose them for what they are doing. Suddenly my eyes went to Alicia whose head was rotating circularly, maybe it's because her first time she could not handle the heat. I tried to pull her towards a bit more on my end and push her out of the bath, but I soon realized that she was unconscious, so she wouldn't mind or rather she wouldn't know, so she wouldn't mind. Just what kind of a mother I am to be bewitched by her own daughter, but really her other world beauty makes the gender barrier seem so unfair. 277. Zyla Nashbourne. I was in my study place, arranging books according to the genre and at the same time pulling out books that I wanted to reread. Reading a good book is always fun and no matter how many times you read a good book it always remains good. From my childhood, I have started reading at a very young age because magic interested me a lot. For me it was something fascinating and I fell in love with it the first instance when mother started reading me books at night before sleeping, but because of her royal duties and death in the war, I considered books as the only thing that connected me and her. From there on I started my journey to know all kinds of magic, to unlock its secret, different kind of utilization techniques, special magic of each races their common base and laws and the mechanics which governs and influence the entire magic system. Over these years I ended up learning and reading each kind of book. At the end I also ended up with a hobby to collect ancient and rare book artifacts and other legendary stuffs. Then suddenly alchemy and blacksmithing caught my interest too. It wasn't since long because of my passion, I ended up with vast amount of knowledge which no had until now acquired and assembled at one place in this world. And this workplace of mine was a living proof of that, and I am proud to be its owner. Knock, knock. The voice at the door released me from re-immersing myself in my past exploits in search of unraveling secrets behind magical phenomena and the genesis of this world. I put down the thick book I was holding on the table and dust simmered out like thick smoke. Just how old was that book? 278 Creek. I see. Alicia you came to visit. Alicia was standing there in her usual white combat suit, I wonder does she have anything else to wear. I will later talk about this to Carolyn. She was twisting her right leg in a clockwise manner and looking down on the floor. Realizing that I have opened door she directly stared at my face. I knew she was beautiful, but up close it turns into something you can only keep staring and wonder how it is even possible. Do you need something Alicia? I straight went to the main point. Of course she would like to know more about this place. But to choose my place for her first visit was something I did not expect. Rather I thought Caroline would take her to the training grounds. Father. Yes. I don't know why she stopped in between. But maybe she still feels a wall between us. Because we fought at that time. But it was not something new for me. Ending up in a fight where both parties misunderstood each other was rather common. I really don't mind at all. Instead I think it was fun fighting with such a strong opponent after such a long time. She then again changed her tone and desperately fumbled in her vocabulary to search for the right words. Dad, I want you teach me all the languages of this world. She ended it as quickly where she started it. You mean all of them? All existing languages of this world. I was at a loss of words because I had never heard such a ridiculous request before. 279. Learning a new language was no joke. For me it took almost about 100 years. The reason being I have a long lifespan and a knack of discovering beyond the plethora of knowledge. Yes, then why don't you come in? If that's what she wants and we have already decided before to teach her everything we know. So it would be better explained if she comes to my workplace. She quietly walked inside at my invitation as I shifted to the right side of the door to give her some space to stand. She was shocked and speechless, or better put thunderstruck. Anyone will have that kind of expression, 
If they come here for the first time, I built this place myself using alchemy and magic. From an outside point of view it would just look like a simple two-storied commoner's house who is getting well through his life, but form inside it's a huge extra-dimensional space, with no limits. There was no top, but a clear blue sky, with a huge observatory telescope attached to the side. Well I cannot use it anymore because we are inside a dungeon now. Looking at an artificial made sky is nothing comparable to the real vast as you blue sky where at night the stars would rally across the globe. The whole building was round like a big can of frozen peas and stood taller than the magical tower in the human continent. A total of a ten-story building height, the interior was full of thousands of shelves packed with books circulating along the inside perimeter of this building. Then there were several doors leading to different small rooms, but in actual they led to huge spaces built underground. They included alchemical lab, summoning room, magic practice hall, research lab, meditation room, storehouse and for other important vocational purposes. 280. For a newcomer the whole place was like a maze of literature who would wonder how to reach the top of the tower to pick up the books at the greatest of heights if there are no ladders around, and they weren't. Of course, otherwise it would be just like a normal library. But that is a mystery I'd later leave for her to figure out. As for the number of books there were a little more than a million, from ancient history, to general knowledge, from basic magic spell books to forbidden knowledge, alchemic books, books on potion making, books on flora and fauna of this world and also included some novels for my pastime. There was no book left in this world I did not have in my possession, till I was on the surface. Even for a single existing book. I used money, power or influence to get a hold of it, but when I saw Alicia roaming around the library waving her arms in the air as if she was about to jump in all that excitement of hers that had clearly surfaced on her face, I was too caught up in that expression of her, that I was enjoying myself seeing that this place made her happy. Unlike the other twerp, Lily whom I had to force to come here and study all the time. I was then suddenly lost in thought. I thought people from Caroline's world liked fighting just like her, so she would too go down that path, but rather it seems that books are to her liking. So just to confirm, Alicia do you like books? I like reading books would be an understatement. I used to read only books all the time in my previous world if I was not cooking or studying at school. That was the only thing that kept me busy and around. Then why don't you look around a bit more? Really can I read the books here? Whatever I pick. 281. Of course you can pick any book and come here anytime. After all this place now equally belongs to you too and so these books are now yours as well. If you need any help then you can call me. She walked straight up and quickly tracing her finger through the titles she picked up a book labeled Magic Control and Instant Spell Casting Speed. That's a good pick and she does realize things that she need to know to improve herself. Maybe it would really be fun having her around here. Now I would not be the only one here doing research alone. There might be chances that she would too like the pursuit of inventing new spells and potions. Alicia should I help you in finding a much better book that will help you to combine different attributes in a magic spell. Yes, thank you, for taking out your time for helping me. I am going to teach you everything about magic from now on and every magic spell that I have learnt including all the magic spell that has been used in this world. This place contains information of this world, all of it. It feels awesome to brag about your own collection and achievements. Amu, I am ready to learn anything you teach me. I thought things are going to get pretty interesting and though teaching such complex things to a person who is new to magic would be tough, I will try to not blow you pee myself. Or that's what I thought to be the case. 282. Alicia Ascalon Ashbourne, it has been almost three days and it feels so normal here. I don't need to kill monsters on a regular basis anymore. I have a place to call home where I can rest. Though it's so big that I sometimes lose my way around. The feeling of moving from a single cramped room into a big mansion is a change which is more heavy than I can handle on my own. Even the way to the bathroom, 
It takes me more than 20 minutes to figure out, or I have to take assistance from mother. Though she is always ready to help but I have to always beware of my steps. I have people around me who consider me a part of their family and I love and respect them from the bottom of my heart. I am very grateful to them for providing me such a peaceful life here, but I know someday I will have to leave, but it's a thought to which I have given some rest. For now I want to learn more, more about this world about how to use my powers effectively, to become strong enough to find Athena and save this world. I wonder what is out there, which threatens the existence of this world, if the true demon lord is living here in peace in the first place. Though a part of me considers that I have to put him under surveillance, and being her daughter helps me to keep an eye on him that secretly whether he will try to destroy the world or not. Or that's how one of the storyline of the novel goes which I read ages ago, but honestly, when mother is around all he can do is end his sentences in yes and submit to her whims, that is truly unbecoming of demon lords that I could not like to see and cannot accept. He should be ruthless, or out of anger destroy a wall, order his subordinates to do the bidding, imprison those who oppose him, not that I am one to talk, when I inherited his title. 283 wouldn't it be much better if I help him in becoming just like the demon lords we read in book? Speaking in an old mythical ruler's lines while standing in shadow, ordering subordinates, mass killing people, ravaging wars, luxurious life w with a harem dot dot and dot if mother hear us about it, then I guess his life will be over the next instant. For now I will give the first two options a try. As for mother it seems that for some reason she really likes to pamper me, while always trying to hug me or pat my head. I actually like it, but it really becomes uncomfortable when she gets rough or sometimes asks me to turn into my demon form to fondle my horns and wings, usually in my demon form. It's not that I actually don't like it, the wings are good for flying around and boost my speed and at the same time the horns allow better vision and perception of magic in the surrounding. But I would rather stick to my human form, which is the most closest to my previous life. Further has been recently teaching me about controlling magic, new magic spells, though seeing them once is fine to imitate them and not use the chant, and as well as about magic circles. I am also reading new books on different languages. And as Peral's prediction it would seem like I will be done with it real soon. The books are not tough to memorize with my analyze skill, and at the same time I like reading. It seems that from the beginning of this world the most common language is that of human tongue and almost every race can speak it. Then there are other races that had their own separate languages, but they have all become ancient and lost. Reason being mass extermination of species during the Great War while the humans survived as the majority. So other speaking languages were shifted to the minority side and became invisible to the masses. Their thinking was that why bother learning two languages when you are well off with just one. 284 But I can't go with that line of thinking anymore. To not hurt innocent people or engage in a fight with them. I need to be able to talk in every language and improve my negotiation skills. Mother said that she would start my training from next week. Yeah it seems that this world too was 12 months and 7 weeks in a day. Though a thing like Leap Year doesn't exist. The name mess of months and days. I would rather keep the same in my mind for my own convenience. I looked outside the window of the reading room which is in the tower and it was already night. I had just now finished reading books on dragons. The dragons in this world are at least the same I thought, they are noble and like to live in seclusion, like a hidden village nest of dragon land, how wonderful and interesting, unlike the gold digger dragon I met in the dungeon was barbaric, attacking strangers when they did nothing to him in the first place, is very rude, I was about to pick up the next title on Magitator, I had been rearing to read about them and know their significance in this word, form father's point of view, it's the highest quality naturally occurring magical lore you can find anywhere in this dungeon but might be a bit rare in the outside world. Alicia, here you are. I heard mother calling out my name as she barged into the room, without knocking. I don't mind if it's mother or father. She sounded a bit angry but had a concerned look on her face. What have you been doing here all this time? I told you to take it easy. I was just reading book. I then tried to look in other direction. Surely I knew what was about to come. 285. Continuously for one and a half day. 
Mother completed my statement. Has it been that long? Knowing more about a new magical world can never be boring. You don't need to worry. You know I can't feel fatigue, sleep or hunger. I can't even get sick now. Oh, Alicia any mother would be happy to know if their child will never get sick. But don't forget that you wanted to be in your human form by choice. You shouldn't use the authority of you title immortality if you want to live like a normal human. Having a long lifespan is fine since it allows you to travel more around the world and discover new things that you will enjoy. But you should sleep on time, eat when you are hungry and take rest when you are tired. That's when you can actually enjoy your work. Even if you like reading books, doing it non-stop would only bring monotony later. I understand. I was a bit sad, but what she said was true. If I want to retain my personality I needed to experience things. Maybe Al can have an answer to this question. Since it has the ability to create pseudo-consciousness, I can perhaps use it on myself to induce such feelings automatically. Then I will be fine. Mother then slowly hugged me. Maybe she understood the reason why I was sad and quickly came up with a solution. Okay Alicia mother will sleep with you today. I was so relieved to hear that I again replied in my unusual childish manner. Amma, she held my hand again, while we started walking towards my own room. A real room with a window and an inbuilt washroom, so I don't get lost in mansion while searching for it. Maybe she knew that I still don't. 286 know my way around to the room and probably that could be one of the reason I did not move from this place but there was that uneasy feeling still in my heart mother was suddenly making a scary smile on her face and I understood she had other ulterior motive beside as she slept while using me as a cover pillow while holding me tightly in her arms she was tall and I would say she would probably work as a model now back in my world despite her age currently her skin is so soft and warm that I would like to stay like this for as long as she wanted to hold me. Maybe she always felt so close to me that I was easily able to accept her as my mother and comfortably settle here in a single day. Without even being told or said, she understood how I felt, and this place became my home too. That at present I feared that this roof and protection would vanish if I close my eyes for too long. I was still not strong enough to become a pillar to hold the roof alone. I still wanted to live under this protection, where I didn't have to worry about what lied outside. Maybe that's what parents are for, but one day, I will have to seek that power and venture outside. 287 288 Chapter 9 Is Everything Still Fine? Carolina Scallon My mother was reincarnated into this world about 215 years ago by the goddess of fighting spirit, Nathania. She was a daughter of a human father and her mother was a high elf, though she would be one of those called half elf, but she was too similar to the humans, that only another pure elf would be able to figure out her true race. But since mother was born as a holder of the title of true hero she was respected and loved everywhere she went, she also ended up with the extra longevity of a high elf, hence she can still live a long happy life with further who is the true demon lord of the royal demon family which too has extra longevity lifespan period. For now, I and mother were now in what you would call some sort of a training ground. It was nothing special. This floor of dungeon was actually turned into a beautiful and luxurious estate. After all, it is the residence of the extra demon lord and extra hero. This place had almost everything to offer that one would need in his lifetime. 289 Farms to grow vegetables, hot springs, forests a typical sky, and a grand mansion. Magic makes see very miracle possible. That's what I had always liked about it. But in this training ground, which was a huge clear open area, surrounded by a dense forest, with overgrown top trees and covered with mountains on all the sides. Actually these were precautions and obstacles to take the blow of an attack that misfired or gets chipped away. But here mother was going to start my combat training from today. She was blessed by the goddess of fighting spirit and so can wield any weapon, except for the Principium weapons, and knows to wield not only sword but has the talent and experience to master all forms of weapons and combat techniques that exists in this world, and in this very place she promised to teach me all about fighting and combat prowess. Alicia, I have seen you fighting before, and so I have decided. Have you seen it? 
I got worried because in the little time I had spent here I had already forgotten about it, about how I used to kill those monsters, bathed all in their blood without any hesitation and that smile which appears from time to time. Even I don't know why. And then suddenly all the corpses vanish and the blood stains from my clothes get foreshadows in its white. I don't know anyone who would like to see such kind of violence, while I had grown accustomed to. I also knew that I had started liking to put up such shows for myself, regarding them as some form of entertainment. My only thoughts were since they are monsters and eat people it's better to not have them around. Problem is does this rules apply to everyone, even me? If no one wants me around then should I die, then why did I survive for so long in my previous world, wasn't it just better for me to die alongside my 290, Alicia, I want to say that you are too reckless while you are fighting, you charge straight in only relying on your strength and only watch what is in front of you and in return get hurt by your enemy's attack, even with your healing spell, I know you feel pain. So from today on I as your teacher forbid you from taking damage. What? But if she had observed me this carefully, then instead of mentioning my gruesome act, why is she asking me to take care of myself? I thought. That's when I realized that, in my mother's eyes the one who needs to be the safest is me. She would never like it if I get hurt, unless I can't avoid it. So it's fine if I kill all the monsters around as long as they are a threat. All I need to keep in my mind is never get hurt myself. Yes, mother I will keep that in mind. Good, Amu. If she keeps up with that smiling face I won't be able to focus. Caroline thoughts and feelings till date haven't changed but intensified on the contrary. So are we going to directly start with sword training? I just wanted to know how my training will proceed. No, we are going to do something even superb. I am going to teach you all forms of fighting techniques and to wield every weapon in this world. From today on we will start with your physical training to fix your posture while fighting, improve your endurance, stamina and movement flexibility. Then I will be teaching you to master wielding all the weapon except the sword for now. So I will be learning archery, martial arts, spear, pole, dagger and every weapon except swordsmanship. Ha, huh. but I eagerly wanted to use my two swords effectively, just like further and you can do. 291. I see. So, to first check your standards, why don't we have a duel between ourselves? This practice match will include only three attacks for each person and you're allowed to use your uh, full strength. Wait. Full strength? Isn't that too dangerous? Are you worried that you will hurt me? No. I know mother is stronger than me, but I don't want to fight you, if you are that reserved about it, then why don't we consider it as a teacher-pupil match? Then wouldn't that be fine? Yes, that makes totally sense, I am up for it, that went much easier than thought, but I know, from inside she had been itching to try her strength against me. Such is the influence of the blood of her clan, once you get a taste of it. These are thoughts made Caroline concerned and excited at the same time. A T the count of three we will be starting. Okay, I took my place at least 50 meter far from where mother stood. As two blue and red sheaths came into existence near my waist, I unsheathed the white and black swords at the same time. It had been almost an entire week since I held them in my hand, but now they even feel lighter than before. Maybe resting did help me, after all. I have the permission to use my full strength so that mother can gauge my abilities and use a proper teaching method. So I will give it my all. Mother is also a dual wielder, so she is a perfect fit to teach me. I saw her brandishing her two silver swords in a very flashy stance, one which I would too like to do someday. But for now, I have to fight her. Her swords both have different lengths and thickness. The biggest problem is their abilities, which is difficult. 292 for anyone to handle. And if you are not experienced then it can give you a run for your life. The thick longer blades block your attack, while the bit shorter one attacks at just the double the strength of the strike she blocked. It is much similar to my own blades, where one blade absorbs while the other blade returns it. Though I can amplify the return by adding my magic, but doubling it in an instant is no joke. And even then there is her own monstrous strength of a hero hidden underneath it. A perfect counter-attack for a novice like me, who depends on brute force and speed. 
but no special skill or style to speak of, and that's what I am here to learn. One, two, three, swash. I moved even faster than the air, thinking that it was best for me to somehow land a strike first, if she is unable to block it then I win. As I was moving I felt a sudden tingling feeling in my body but I paid no mind to it, for now I need to keep an eye on the movements of her blades. Clang, ripples in air went flying off as she blocked my attack, where I couldn't even follow the movement of her sword. In the next second, before the atmosphere could return to normal and the first clash sound could die out, another show of magnificent sparks brightly lit the blue sky. Screech, after my black sword was stopped, mother instantly launched her other blade at me, 293, I got you, but even so I had expected that much, and was already prepared for it, using my white sword, I parried it away, or so I thought, but by twist of turn or the twist of her wrist, the swords instead of being interlocked went sliding past each other, both of my hands were now far separate away from my body, in midair. I should have been taking the advantage of my short body with respect to my mother's tall figure, but the tables were completely turned. She pushed back her right hand and then thrusting it forward with a huge force, with the hilt of the sword pierced through my stomach. It would have been a life-threatening hit, if mother had used the tip of the sword, but even with the hilt, I was thrown several meters away, leaving a dust of trail in my trajectory. It was hurting a lot. A single held back attack and I still lost, even though I was at my full speed. Just that vast was the difference in our experience. Alicia, are you alright? I am fine. My self-regeneration had already healed the internal injuries I had suffered from the hit. I rose up from my fallen position and dusting my clothes saw mother lost in her thoughts. She really has no fear of death. When she dashed towards me midair using flying magic, just to check I let out a strong killing intent, and yet she did not even flinch, it's as if she know no fear, at the same time I cannot feel any blood lust from her, it's as if she becomes emotionless during fighting, a person on the battlefield with such a temperament can never be defeated in reality, even her physical strength is incomparable to any human and monster, had it not been the ability of my sword, I would be crushed into the earth, it's unfair to have such. 294 Slender small cute body and yet having possession of this terrifying strength. Training her is going to be so much fun. Caroline thought with an exhilarated expression on her face. Seeing me back in form she started explaining. So you have seen this is what is going to happen when you fight an advanced fighter. Your every match will end in failure. So what do I do mother? At this point of time I could only rely on mother's teaching. You can count on me. By having a command of all the weapons you can understand the fighting spirit and techniques the person is using. This way both your intuition and ability to see through the eyes of your opponent. Then you can make your ultimate form of sword technique and train in it. I see. I totally understand. Well I get the gist of it. By knowing all the things I would face in the battle already and preparing countermeasures my chances of winning skyrockets, but the end line explanation of mother sounds super cool at the same time, I am sure you will better understand when you will start doing it. Training is going to be extra tough, so do your best to keep up with me, Amu. I cannot wait anymore to begin. These were my thoughts. Give your all and learn everything you can. I can't wait to teach her everything, and when she gets tired I will give her a lap pillow and caress her long silky hairs how much I want. These were my mother's thoughts. 295. Killing Intent. Killing Intent is simply the user exuding pure killing intention, and having it affect their opponent, themselves, and others around them. It is conducted by turning the aura or life force of the user into your fixed desire of harming someone and specifically directing it towards the target. Particularly strong killing intent can paralyze the victim in fear, causing them to morbidly hallucinate their own deaths, or even kill them by forcing the mind to believe their death is a reality. Blades of Vindita Class, Sacred Weapon Weapon Holder, Caroline S. Callon Ashbourne, Whipper on Discretion Dual Blades of Vindaitu is a sacred weapon blessed by the gods and fairies to slay the evil god Maledictum. Crassus Blade, the thick and longer blade is to defend the wielder. 
10 use blade. The thin blade is to attack the target with double the attack strength at which IT took the defense against the attack. Special ability, can pile up damage and release IT at once. 296. After 6 months, the true hero Caroline and true demon Lord Silen were sitting on a dining table with a grim expression on their faces. Both had a look of a disappointment. They were not disappointed in their daughter, but by themselves who couldn't keep up with the tenacious training and the genius of their daughter she is. At this time of day both of them assembled here to share their collective report on their daughter's progress. It was phenomenal, beyond expectations, so to speak of. Even with the speed training and best methods she had completed two years worth in just a little less than six months and that two learning magic and fighting together. She had never lost focus of her goal and always been a good daughter and her never complaining attitude had won their hearts. She properly listened to their every request and direction. If she faced any problem she would come straight out with it, without causing any problem. She was an ideal child a parent could ask for, and there lies the problem. Screamed the true hero while the demon lord just kept his hands close to his ears. As if he is afraid of something, isn't she too go a d to be true, if she continues to stay like this I won't be able to hold my desires back, tell me Zyle. She continued, what do you want me to say, what is wrong with you? These days you look awfully pale, it's about Alicia. What about her, did she get hurt or is something bothering her, don't tell me you did something to our daughter Zyle, how could you, I knew. 297, you were a fiend. Now you cannot deny it. It was the usual wife pulling her husband's collar and give a scornful to him. Wait, don't just go thinking whatever comes in your messed up mind. Who are you calling messed up, when you are the one who did something wrong? How did it come to this? Alicia she must have taken after you. She learned every kind of magic whatever I taught to her the moment she saw it. She could not only completely copy it but change the spell to suit her requirements and increase its power. Even a simple harmless fire spell to burn a bonfire, with her infinite magic reserve becomes strong enough to burn down an entire city. Magic is too dangerous for her to use, so she relies on controlling the basic elements on her free will. If not for that then this place would have burnt down a month ago. She even learnt every language to speak in just a week. She did. Isn't that good? The list doesn't end here she creates such typical magic which even for me is difficult to understand its mechanism. She must be combining science and magic logics of this world. Her thought waves must be even stronger than yours to be able to pull that off. Don't even mention. She is of a freakish nature obsessed with learning all kinds of magic. Whether it's good or evil, she doesn't mind learning it, saying it's all for the no. It's the use which makes it bad or right. Our daughter thinks like a grown-up, that's what a researcher should be like, but isn't that how you two felt? I agree, but she has taken it too far, now she wants to learn to create life itself. According to her it's possible to create something called artificial intelligence and with magic and her powers she can give it emotions. Is, 298, that something a kid two years old should be arresting on. Isn't it the fault of the parents when she should play with toys or work on her looks? I understand, but people like her go nuts just like master over the things which interest them the most. If you love your life, then there is no stopping it. As for looks she is naturally more beautiful than anyone else in this world. The anxiety levels of both of them were rising and had crossed a boundary set up by Alicia. Just then a human-like figure walked in. With a tray in her hand, Zyland Caroline took a look at the figure that was approaching them. It looked so alive like a human, and yet it was not one. Oh, it's you Flora. You are always so busy with your work. You see this Gollum is the latest work of her. Is it normal for a kid to make such kind of things? Even my knowledge is put to shame with her hysterical ideas. SHH. If you call it that then Alicia would get sad. Oh, I am sorry Flora. You are a humanoid robot. In front of them stood a young girl with silky, smooth, short and jade blue hair. Porcelain-like skin and golden eyes she would appear to be around an age of 16 or so. She wore a white black uniform which a normal person would call a maid uniform. She had a unique clear and gentle voice and a soft touch in her fingers. And yet her actual body was made of the strongest tool. 
Magitite. Such high quality of craftsmanship and thought was put into her appearance. She was the latest human robot model and a final piece in collection. Her job was to keep the house clean the entire time and serve the people living here. 299. Though how fragile she might look she could lift huge boulders and shatter them in a single punch. She was also fit with an emergency command to eliminate any monsters in sight. Madam and Sir, your tension level is increasing, which is bad for your health. Here is your herbal tea. She gracefully like a real maid, which her job description specifies placed two cup of hot tea on table and moves to the side. Both the person referred to quickly sips the drink before it got cold and were now drowning in its sweet taste and fragrant aroma. I just can't get enough of it. She really makes the best caffeinated drinks. It really relieves tension. This maid robot worked by absorbing magical power from the surrounding and so she didn't need food to live nor rest to work properly. Just a bit of maintenance work every year, which she was programmed to do herself. Anyone would go down to the depth of hell to get a hand on such a useful and beautiful robot maid. Thank you for your compliments. Now if you will excuse me, then I will tend to my daily job. Saying this she left back to resume her work. Speaking of that she had a small consciousness of her own. A simple strong feeling to serve the family members of this house though it's not much, but this is the only feeling that is imbued in Flora's heart. Alicia had used the Gillum technology and combining with her own powers, she programmed her using an integrated chain of magic circles and using Al's assistance prepared a pseudo-consciousness that will always work to serve like a real maid under their command. 300 301, it more or less worked like a cloud networking system where Flora was directly connected to Al, which served as the source and directive of every order she received. From what Alicia has realized, that magic circles are nothing but like computer programs which one can write in a machine language and is later processed by the world magic system of this world. As long as she knows the function of each command she can make use of it creating her own magical circles, which in the eyes of Demon Lord was an impossible feat to achieve. Creating magical circles on spot, from his perspective is impossible. Well. But Alicia even then went and made it happen. Our family has grown so big after she arrived here. Well, you are right about it. It seemed that the demon lord still feeling a bit stingy. Ah uh, exclamation mark dot 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 don't tell me the demon lord has now become jealous of his own daughter. Who is the demon lord? Wait am I? Yes I am the demon lord. No one else. I am from the depth of darkness the epitome of curses and collection wraiths. However, seemingly from an outsider's perspective the way the demon lord was behaving would make him medically declare a madman. His words were stiff and yet he was curled up with his legs now folded upwards and closing his ears he had developed dark, hollow eyes. Zile, are you alright? Why are you behaving like this suddenly? Why are your eyes looking so lifeless? Did you again brainwashed yourself in the mirror? 302. No, stay back I am the demon lord. I am the ruler of darkness who hides in the shadows and rules in the shadows. Where is my crown and cape? Where are my loyal bloodthirsty subordinates? His words held strong meaning but his action and expressions spoke otherwise. It appeared to be like he was running than threatening someone. Are you in your right mind or do I need to whack you at the back of your head? Wait did I again lost myself? Jay used what were you thinking? Caroline was a bit concerned with his present mental condition but listening those words she could not help herself but keep on laughing, which only served in elevating the uncomfortable demon lord's insecurities. I knew it had no meaning. Even you are laughing now, but who told you to speak that way? It was your dear daughter, according to her I need to behave like a demon lord or I will lose my influence in this world. So she started telling me to speak in peculiar ways and made me remember lines like dash I am a man born in darkness and solitude, you will be trapped in the eternal abyss of my eyes, scream in fear and suffering while you drown in the bloody bath that my subordinates gifted me. And if I don't play along with her, she starts making a scary smiling face, just throwing around her magic aura unconsciously and destroying everything. Even I am afraid of that and I don't want the library to get turned into ruins. But now all in the room could be heard were the loud laughter of the hero. Of course, 
If the hero is threatened by the demon lord in such a pathetic and senile way, then he would surely put his position in the world into jeopardy. 303. Ha <laughs> ha Well then I wish you best of luck with your vocal training and learning how to become a demon lord by your own daughter. A few months more and you can even get a job of a jester in a king's court. No, my life is already ruined. I am self-retired now. Even though it sounds pathetic, all I am now is just this title's holder, waiting for the next person to inherit it. Piling shame upon shame just to fulfill and keep our daughter happy. Couldn't she have made simple demands of normal dolls or visit tourist places? But all she does is close herself in the room and read books. Well, I would dislike it more if you fail as a father. I guess so. So how is it on your end by the way? For some reason her smile dropped and it turned into something that could not be explained by mere words. A state of ecstasy, pain and desired world in that face together at the same time. Everything is fine. You don't need to concern yourself with it. If it's all fine then I don't think you need to turn your head away and say it. I told it it's fine as long as. Why don't you say it directly looking in my eyes? Shove it. Don't get so hyped up all of a sudden. Caroline had likely punched Zyle into his chest. But maybe she forgot to restrain herself, because her mind was wandering off somewhere else and it seems to take every time much longer than before to pull it back. If you really want to know then her weapon training is over and she has even crossed my realm. My years of hard work and training, she surpassed all of it in six months. 304. I see. You don't need to feel so sad for me. Unlike you Alicia said something to me so it's all fine. Wait what secret did she tell you? Then maybe I will be able to get back to her. You are really a fiend. Trying to find the weakness of your own daughter to trick her. I am not telling you. You know I will never do such a thing. So tell me. Don't leave Emi in the dark again like the last time. Fine. Caroline's face curled up into a big smile as she continued her narration. When I told her that she is learning way too fast and had already surpassed mom in some fields. Then she told to me in her childish playful tone that I am just that good of a teacher that she was able to learn this fast. Zyle's eyes lit up. As that statement cleared up the grey cloud over his mind. I see. She has really put much thought upon it. Even though she is less of a talker, she does have a way around with words. I am sure she will come through. But on the other hand, from Alicia's perspective it was just one of the event's titular sentences which the character has to remember to say to his master. That's all. I know. But I think she is learning too fast. Maybe we should give her a break. Or level up her teaching. Are you sure of it? 305. Of course. Recently I wanted her to get tired so I could give her a piggy ride back to home. So we decided to run and do intensive exercise non-stop continuously for three days. Wait. You used spirit magic to reinforce yourself. What about her? It actually went exact opposite. I got tired after the training and then Alicia who was still fine teleported me back to mansion. Oh how I wished I could have touched her soft gentle body and smell her feminine hairs. Even for a kid, maybe I am getting slowly seduced by her beauty. Are you sure a mother needs to talk that way? Caroline thought of it for a while dash I find it pretty endearing when she acts like a child and not always so tough. Am I just moved by the gap between her childish personality and her youthful actions? As per their conclusion because she is a reincarnate with a mature body at a young age and on top of that gaining the tilt of immortality her age mentality is set back to zero. So she sometimes act like a child would do in response in that manner nonetheless. Since the flow of time and its very sense has changed for her. She will probably remain young like that for her entire life. Not that it would matter because she can change her age looks by using gluttony skill. It had almost become like teaching a newborn kid everything but she learns and grows too fast that their brain just can't go around it. What would you know? But today Alicia told that she would be making a new dish for lunch. But hasn't she been the only one cooking all the time since she came here? But her food is just that delicious that I don't again want to eat your stupid watery, curry. 306. That's the only thing I know so don't sully its name. By the way I do agree that I don't think I could get through the day without having the taste of her food. Well, we haven't told her yet, that she has the ability to infuse life force into the food. And she does it subconsciously. That makes the food equal to the dish of gods. 
I wonder could this be the effect of cooking in the divine realm, which he told to me once. Now both of them were lost deep in thought making guesses for the probable reason. Well, we will keep that aside, for now I have decided it's time to teach her sword play. I am also going to teach her about spirit magic, oral arts and summon a soul weapon. Wait, hold you horses. Isn't soul weapon going a bit far? She needs to be good at spirit magic and also have an affinity for oral arts. She is too young for this. Even Lily did it only when she was 11 years old and that too is still too early. You are too cautions. She will be fine. She is our daughter now and I know she can do it. She is working hard so that she can go up there and do what needs to be done. Is that so? Then I will too have to teach her something new. Maybe forging legendary weapons can be next on schedule. Talking about schedule isn't it time for Lily to come back from Demon Academy at this time of year? I know she is going to love meeting her new big sister. But I think I am forgetting so nothing. Zyle's expression were now that of concern and extreme hypertension dash. Don't tell me. 307. Crack. All the glasses in the mansion came crashing down as the waves form a high magical energy clash reverberated nearby. Obviously things would have to end like this. 308. 309. Epilogue. At the summoning circle under a single white roof. White light filled the pattern and with a sudden burst of blue light a girl came into existence. She looked like a regular human girl at the age of a teenager, making many people confuse her as a harmless existence at first, but then the presence of two black curved horns towering over her head, spoke for her being a demon. With long crimson hair reaching her waist and pink eyes, for someone her age, she has been noted for having a distinctly slender yet curvaceous figure. She appeared to be in a jolly mood and had rhyming to herself. On realizing that she had crossed through the teleportation circle and cleared the barrier's identification code she looks around and then stepped down through the small flight of stairs. I have finally come back from the Demon Academy after eight months. Mother and Further would be surprised to see me back a day earlier. She looked around and found the place hasn't changed a bit yet and still her heart was pounding. She could feel a new presence here nearby. But her mother and father should be the only one living here. Could it be a monster or an intruder she had no idea unless she would see it for herself. She quietly followed the magical aura of this new person, trying her best to hide her presence and not come into the view. She had crossed halfway the forest and was now behind the bushes, while in front of her was a huge tree and under it was a young girl maybe a bit older reading a black book under its shades. She was first taken aback by her beautiful face. Her glossy white hairs, her glowing skin and the colorful magic aura that radiated from her body, but she could not allow her training to let her guard down this easily. She used her appraisal skill and was shocked to see her low level. 310. An unreasonable age, though the name, skills and other things appeared to be hazy to her. For starters in this world the higher the level, the stronger the person is. Well that's the seemingly truth spoken around and is apparently the truth. What is a weak human girl doing in my house? The girl hiding behind the bushes thought to herself. As if in response the intruder closed her book and silently stood there. She could not even feel her presence even if she is standing in front of her now. As if she knew she was here and now intentionally tries to hide her presence as if to laugh at the girl. I came out of the bushes announcing my existence, while she just turned around in response to that noise. She was smiling and the girl did not take it to her liking. For a stranger unannounced to meet at her home, which was to be kept hidden from the outside world no matter what, this matter required her immediate attention. The girl summoned her scythe, which was jet black in color with a red lining over its blade. In a blink of an eye, black wings sprouted from her back, with booms of sound leaving behind and propelling through air she lifted her weapon and with fully enhanced magical strength dropped it to the girl intruder standing in front of her. Had it been any average human, his body would have been turned and crushed like bits of paper, but the earth cracked except for the ground under the intruder's feet. Huge magic particle waves resonated in the area and traveled far and wide, telling just how powerful the attack really was. But the girl was still in midair while her scythe's blade was being politely held in the intruder's hand. 311. 312. The girl got cautious and quickly leapt back, 
while her opponent was still smiling, even though her smile seemed so pure. Now that she had seen her real strengths she could not allow her to move around freely. You are strong. She tried to voice her thoughts after her single attack while all she got in return was another question. Is that so? The intruder had an unusual sweet childish tone. At that response the girl still considered her voice and nature to be arrogant. She flipped around her scythe for some time and then took a stance stabilizing her magical flow in her hands and feet. My name is Lily Escalon Ashbourne, who are you? The intruder made an innocent cute face which made Lily's heart skip a beat, but she did not lose focus. The intruder pointing her index finger at herself said in a cheerful tone dash, Me, I am your sister. Alicia Escalon Ashbourne, 313, status window, name. Alicia Escalon Ashbourne, age, 2 year, race, human, level, 22, HP, ERRMP, ERRSP, ERR, unique skill, all seeing eyes of the gods first form, eye of investigation second form, kinetic eye third form, eye of Adrana fourth form, eye of soul fifth form, equivalent exchange sixth form, eye of being seventh form, eye of vox Duis skills, glutton elv 10 eternal poison, world severing webs, sage of advanced fire magic, sage of advanced water magic, sage of divine light, sage of advanced wood magic, sage of advanced wind magic, advanced sun magic, sage of advanced space time magic, sage of advanced ice magic, sage of advanced gravity magic. Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Advanced Lightning Magic, Sage of Advanced Earth Magic, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Barrier Magic LV9, Title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless, True Demon Lord Candidate Master Chief, 314, Status Window, Name, Lily Escalon Ashbourne, Age, 12 Year, Race, Demon, level, 1800, HP, 60,000, MP, 50,000, SP, 55,000, unique skill, Demutator, skills, fire magic LV8, water magic LV7, wind magic LV8, space time magic LV6, ice magic LV5, dark matter magic LV7, pyrokinesis umbrakinesis, abnormal status infliction, Barrier Magic LV5, Self Regeneration, Magic Immunity, Title, True Demon Lord Candidate, 315, 316, Afterward, Hello there, this is Noel Alicia, it's been only a short while since the second volume, and here you are the third one already, isn't that amazing? I still consider myself new at this and trying my best that you enjoy the journey where our character meets new people and create new bonds with them. This time I tried to tune up things a bit by adding a spicy life of a demon lord and hero. I added things as they popped in my mind, and wrote this story that I wanted to read by myself, even now. I'm still enjoying writing this story more than anything else. I'm not sure if this book betrayed your expectations or fulfilled them, but I'll be glad so long as you derived some amount of enjoyment from it. In my mind, this work of mine is meant to be a simple fun read with a slant towards comedy. The atmosphere of this book's pretty different from volume 1 and 2, and as I'm sure many of you have noticed, it's more inclined towards creating an impression of two new important characters of this series. I'm not sure if you guys liked that more or less, but as long as you enjoyed it, I'm happy. After all those two are my favorite characters in this novel, especially the true hero. 317. As much as I am, as I'm sure those of you can already tell that I am a huge fan of Aizkai genre. Potent enough that after writing the third volume I am aiming for the fourth. I hope you're all looking forward to it. Once again, I'd like to thank my readers for letting me enjoy myself all the way through. May we meet again in the next volume of when I got reincarnated as a spider with my goddess. Noel Alicia, contact me. Noel Alicia 14 at gmail.com Volume 4 Synopsis Suki has finally found a place where she belongs and is now living with her new family preparing for the future. She was acquired a new name for herself, Alicia. But with her sister's arrival Lily, 
Will things turn out to be chaotic or continue peacefully as she learns swordsmanship under her mother's guidance, her true magic attribute, the summoning of a soul weapon and creating her own aura lot 318. See you in the next volume 319.